Hello. Hello. And welcome back to We Watched a Movie. I am Mike. I am Jay. And it's been some time since we've seen your dicks. I hope you guys had a jingly jangly cock good time of a Christmas or Hanukkah or whatever you guys celebrated. Kwanzaa? Okay. <laughs> am I muted? Cool. No, no, you're not. What happened was I had the other screen on and it was playing us delayed. And I was like, why is Jay saying cockly good time twice? I was confused because my my ear set was not working correctly. How is everyone? How was how was everyone's holidays or holidays? <laughs> if you like men. Speaking of like men, people that like men in that cock. How about that uh -huh. Will Smith and that Dwayne? Dr. Dwayne, what is his name? He likes to take it right in the old asshole. According that's to not true. Assistant. That's that's heresy. That's according hearsay. to his old. And by the way, this is allegedly because I'm not trying to get sued. You by just alopecia. now heard about this? No, I heard it about it yesterday. I'm not trying to get sued by the alopecia crane right. on the beach. I'm not trying to do that. But this is the funny thing. The assistant that claims that he walked in at Will Smith during the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air filming days and having old Will Smith get his ass drilled like a fucking old old man in the middle of the Pacific said uh, he got yeah, like he's like. He's like, you know what's weird? He's like, uh, you know why I know it's true? Because they waited, they couldn't even wait nine hours to come out and say they were going to sue me for defamation. And then he's like, I'm going to be dropping proof in two days. Like, he doubled down. And then... Uh, and then oh, he the, said he was dropping proof? That's what he said. And then the other guy, this other guy that used to work with, I guess he worked in the producing music called Reggie White, not the football player, but a guy called Reggie White. I guess he helped with Tupac Shakur. He said, I've been saying it for years. He goes, Will, come out, man. I know you're gay. I know about Dwayne. Everybody knew about Dwayne. He goes, you need to stop it. He goes, Jada's controlling you because of this. You know who Dwayne is, right? Yeah, the guy that we saw. He was the uh, he was the Scream Two guy. The camera. Yeah, he's the, ca he the cameraman in Scream yeah. Two. He's like, yes, I got that on film. That'd yeah, be funny as hell. Yeah, that's what he said. He's like, you were filled with this, were you? He's like, yes, I got that on film. Uh, yeah, he wasn't. He wasn't only filming breaking coverage, but breaking asshole barriers down. According, because <laughs> according, he was the thrower. Like Will, the guy said that he walked on Will yeah, like bent yeah. over the couch, taking it up the old tailpipe. Yeah, yeah, that's allegedly, allegedly. Old that's what they say. Yeah, grab his. <laughs> that was being Jay in the back. Grab his dick and twist it. The old dick twist. <laughs> I, I don't even know what you say to that. If you're an assistant, if it is true, you walk up like, oh, I'm sorry, I'll let you finish up your pack. And, I mean, your sexual. I mean. You guys, I'll see you on set. Well, <laughs> I mean, yeah. what do you do? What do you go back to the guys and say, Will's uh, Will's not going to be able to do any sitting scenes for the next few episodes. So I'm just going to let Bad you know. Boys. Why is what that? Oh, do? I don't know. I'm just, he, he really, he, that, he go, had some accidents going on. I, I think he's got hemorrhoids. I hope it was true. And then Will comes out and he goes, yeah, I did it. So I think, you know what? If he, 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 he's he's got he say he's bisexual and fucky. I don't know why. I mean, I, maybe it's because he's like, he's got an ego and the, you know, and I don't know, maybe he thinks it's going to like ruin that. And not to mention the fact that I'm sure he has no prenup with Jada. So she's going to take 50 fucking percent of what he's got, no matter yeah. what. No matter if, if if Will got fucked by that guy or not, I guarantee you he didn't fuck him as hard as Jada in yeah. uh, in life. In well, life it wasn't just that, though. Apparently the assistant said it was something along the lines of it wasn't just the fact that he had an affair with this Dwayne guy on and off for quite a while. It wasn't just the one time thing. But also because Will was hung like a pinky, his dick was small, and they oh. said that. And then they said Jada Pinkett Smith. He said My you know, Jada feet. Pinkett Smith said he was like, listen, Jada. That's why Jada. You couldn't satisfy her, no matter what you bought her, no matter how many clothes you got her, no matter how much money you gave her. He said when when you're used to uh, go, having your vagina pounded by a fucking small baby arm like Tupac Shakur and go to a pinky toe sized dick, you're not you're never going to satisfy her. I don't know if that's true yeah. or not, but that's what the, the guy was going a little bit extreme on it. But as far as like getting fucked in the ass, it does corroborate with a lot of what other celebrities have said in the past. So I don't know, man. And not to mention the fact that apparently Will Smith bought his bought him like a fucking Rolls Royce, like like weird. Like it was just like really weirdly intimate stuff like they would. Yeah. And then they would go out. They went on a cruise together by themselves without their wives. It's like it was just weird. Like, I don't hey, that's know. That's not weird. I've been asking you to go on a cruise with me without our wives for long for a long time. Admit, and you always say yeah, no. But we admit that we fuck in the mouth with each other's yeah. wieners. That's different. <laughs> mouth, though. Never the belly mouth button. fuckers. It's Throw different. It's not you. gay if it's only in your mouth and you swallow. That's not yeah. gay. If it goes in your it's ass, tasting. totally gay. It's Stupid. culinary. Uh, and if you touch yours while they're while you're touching him, then you're you're totally gay. So you can't yeah. be doing that. Anyway, you can't eat Cheetos in a rainstorm. But yeah, I don't know. I feel bad for the guy because Will Smith's obviously. I think something like I think something's getting ready to break with him. I, I don't know. You know, I mean, if he, maybe he's gonna go the old Kevin Spacey way, like it's just gonna be too much, and he's just gonna be like, yeah, you don't fucking, I'm gay. Like Will I'm not, I'm not gonna pretend anymore. I'm not. 
Or, I mean, there's also a good chance that that whole story is just complete bullshit because some of the be. people that they, all you have to do is just say something crazy about a famous person on a podcast. I saw this fucking guy on a podcast the other day talking about Vanessa Bryant and how she spent Kobe's money doing other things than lifting up the black community. I'm like, right. what a piece of shit. This woman lost her husband and her, and her, and her daughter. And this guy saying all he also said that Eminem shouldn't be able to rap because he's white, like all sorts of this guy. I agree with that. Crazy. Fucking and he's racist. trending everywhere. All you have to do is say crazy shit. That's all you have to do well, in this world. I know. Like Joe Biden won the 2020 election. What the right. fuck? Joe Biden. <laughs> no, I will say though, at the end of the day, I, if he is gay, I don't give a fuck. I don't know. I just don't give a fuck. I don't care. I feel bad for him. Yeah. That's the only thing keeping him into a toxic relationship with Jada is the fact that he likes fucking men's dicks. And that's the only reason why he has to be strapped in this. It's got to be hell for him. No, it's got to be absolute shit. There's no, there's nothing. There, there's, there's no, there's no reason you would not come out in, in these this day and age. You know what I'm saying? I think it's because no the whole reason. idea of the Fresh Prince of Bel Air, the you know the honeys, and all about his image, and the idea that he was like a womanizer and he was like a smooth talker to women that it would hurt. Maybe he's just bi. That's okay. I think he is bi, but I mean that's what I'm saying. But even that would hurt. Like they're like, oh yeah, all the times he was talking about the honeys in his songs, he was really talking about that dick that he wanted. Hey, to men smoke. can be honeys too. I know that's what I got a thinking. sweet. You probably just don't want the ridicule. They're yeah. already going to be assholes everywhere. That's going to ridicule. <laughs> you know, you say something bad when you look over and you just expect someone's face to be looking back at you at this point. Man. I don't. My wife uh, doesn't watch my shit anymore, so I don't know. I just look at ghost. <laughs> no, I was talking about Thor. It was the dog. Oh, the I thought dog you talking about it's that. bad when you're shaming the dog. Mm. Uh, no, sometimes I look over and it's just hell as a gaping asshole. Just hey, staring back at me. Like I got this. dude, you got the, enough of this dick talk. I gotta show you guys something that's really monumental and the coolest. Oh, thing. show's over. Yeah, it's a, no listen. You gotta pull it through, guys. This will put you in a happy mood no matter fucking where you are. Watch it's only 12 seconds, but you only will need to watch it for once. Or you, know, you can repeat wait, it. Wait, all I, I just want you to know that I looked at the comments just now and I just just I just saw half of it, but it's just like Scientologists aren't gay. <laughs> <laughs> they're not they're in the, they're, they're in the alien dick that's not gay they don't even have a word for that yet uh, uh no go to on youtube just type dude i swear to god cody showed this to me to do this and i thought it was gonna be stupid but dude it's in his dick yeah, no it's the funniest shit ever dude like type in angry it's your brother man what are you talking about you're making out with your old brother i didn't know i don't know what you guys get up to in the back of my car so uh angry like spanish son. chucky and it should be if you type that in, it should be a 12 second video. <laughs> if this is it's a dub, it's so it's yeah, I got it. Okay, yeah, dude. This <laughs> dude, just listen to Chucky. It's the funniest shit ever. I'm excited dude. about this. It's the funniest shit ever. You'll have to you'll rewatch it, dude. It's so funny. Because <laughs> he tries to sound like Brad Dorif. That's what makes it so funny. Okay, here we go. Spanish Chucky. Yeah, this is it. <laughs> here we go. Look at his head, dude. Like when he goes, why is oh that my thing? god, dude, that's the funniest shit ever. I swear to god. <laughs> god. Like, it does, yeah, it just sounds like Arnold Schwarzenegger drunk at a Christmas party. Like asking for more liquor. I don't I I, think, I, I, I watched uh there was another longer version and it doesn't sound like that at all. Like the I don't know if that's the actual Spanish dub. Or someone took the Spanish dub and dubbed over that with a stupid like. It's smoke of some Marlboro Reds, and then I'm gonna do this voice acting. Do that. I've watched that like eight fucking times in a row. That shit, was, and it gets funnier the more you watch it. <laughs> yeah. Do you see his fucking yeah. dumbass carrot top red hair? Goes. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's definitely a dub, dude. There's no doubt about that. It's a dub. Hey, we are actually we are going to talk about stuff tonight. Uh, oh, there's some there's some good YouTube icons on there. I kind of want to watch some of those. But I'll save that for later. Uh, they involve men's penises. But I, oh, I will say this. Listening. Speaking of men's penises. No, tonight uh, we are going to be just talking shit, hanging out, answering your all super titties, and uh, and talking about movie news. Jeez, also, presumptuous enough, they may not be any. Well, maybe. Yeah, well, there's more than – there is more than um, – how's this song go? More than – more. There's so much to explore at Total Wine and More. <laughs> <laughs> so much more, more than I can. What is the song? What am I thinking of? More than meets the eye. I don't know. More Transformers. Than, uh, is it like Tracy Chapman or something? More, 
<laughs> so much you more like, than you saw, like, you saw like the fucking lead singer of Puddle of Butt trying to sing a Nirvana song. <laughs> <laughs> more than words can say oh. something. Shit, I don't know. Fuck. Yeah, more than words, Iron Wolf. More, more than, than words. words. Yeah, that's not Tracy Chapman. Who is it? <laughs> I don't know. It's not Tracy Chapman. Oh well, then it's like those. You, if you don't have like, anything nice to say, why don't like you? Shut up. It's 1990. <laughs> Um, no, we're going to be reviewing spoiler free. You don't have to leave if you haven't seen it. We're not going to spoil it. We're going to be reviewing Rebel Moon later, and we're, we're going to be reviewing the Iron Claw. Oh. Spoiler free later. The Claw, oh. not the Claw. Oh. Dude, it's crazy. Mira, Mira, fuck, I forgot her name. The uh, the wife, the patriarch of the family in uh, Iron Claw. Yeah, um, I'm looking up her name now. Yeah. yeah, is it patriarch? No, patriarch Patriarch's is what men do yeah. with horses. Yeah. Uh, it is. Um, um Maura Tierney. Maura mm -hmm. Tierney, the mom in uh the Iron Claw is is the mom from Liar Liar, like Fletcher. Like oh that's my god, it is one. her. Holy shit. They're both movies about claws. God you know, dear. the claw. Yeah. You know, I thought that bitch would have chilled claw. out after Liar Liar. I guess not. <laughs> now she just yeah. locks it all in and refuses to talk to her sons. What a cunt. Wow, that was yeah, that was shit. They talk to your brothers. No, seriously, like yeah, that's why I made them. That's away. why your father. That's why I let your dirty, disgusting, sweaty father lay on top of me, so I could create you a friend. <laughs> now use it. I don't want to hear your shit. Yeah, it was the same thing when he was talking to his son. He's like, "Talk to your brothers, man." I'm like, "Jesus Christ, you people suck." I will say though, uh, um, this, I'm not. Allegedly. We don't want to get into this uh, in the reviews no. early yet, but I will say the one thing about Iron Claw, fucking great ass goddamn movie, dude. That I fucking great. loved it. That's great. How many times did you cry? Uh, I never no. I did. I I tear. I'd already yeah. seen uh, the dark side of the ring, so I was already like tired. Yeah. I cried out. Mm. By I, the way, uh, they, because they left out one of the brothers, they left out Chris. Yeah, but they, the reason they did that was because he was like, there can only be so much strategy. Yeah, the, movie, the, the director literally said that he was like, uh, the audience would find it unbelievable if we kept mm -hmm. adding another death in it. They were like, this isn't real. I'm honestly thankful for it because I, I totally agree. Like at some point, I'd be like, come the fuck on, come yeah. the fuck on. How many times are we gonna do this? Um, but yeah, anyways, so yeah, that's what we're doing tonight. And uh, we're going to talk shit with you guys for a bit first. And um, does anyone want to come over and wash my car? It's dirty. Uh, and I'm going to film you. But I'll give you $19.95 and some coupons. I have a $15. No, I have a $25 gift certificate to Bed Bath & Beyond. If anybody would like to have that. In, I have a $25 gift certificate to Olive Garden. Oh, that's a good one. You can I get know. anytime, all time pasta with that. Uh, nighttime, first super chat night. Thank you, sir. And we missed you guys, by the way. Been an entire week since we streamed, uh, which feels weird in and around our holes. Nighttime says, Yo, one time I did a spitball in 2001 at my high school and it went in the teacher's ear. I got suspended for one week. You know what, nighttime? <laughs> uh, I don't believe you. That's I don't believe lie. you at all. With a mask Fake. like that, you would totally be conspicuous. There's no way you got away with Fake it. News. Or no, you didn't <laughs> you get away with it. Never mind. I just don't believe you had the balls to do it in my time. Uh, I don't even have a mouth. You spit a spitball in a fucking woman's ear, you disgusting creep. Good for you. I don't even have a mouth. How could I have spit the spitball? Look, no, there's no mouth. Maybe you, if you were a little bit smarter in school, you wouldn't have got caught. But no, mm -hmm. you had to be so obvious about it with your stupid yeah. fucking Mad Max mask. Mad Max mask. Say that three times fast. I hope you got held back. Uh, we're just kidding, buddy. Uh, you, you know what? That sounds like the kind of shit that would happen to me. Um, I never got suspended. I never got caught. I, oh, I never got suspended. You got suspended for a whole week for just a spitball? She's like, it went in her ear. Week? Damn. Yeah, it went in her ear. Her fucking brain was thinking about nothing but spitballs for a, like a week, probably. It went ear in her ear. She probably didn't ear. know what you fucking shot. You could have said, I That's shot true. a load in your ear. How do you like that? From across yeah. the room, my aim is good. <laughs> To be fair, though, I was in court one time and I saw a guy go before the judge and he spit on a cop while he, they were arresting him and they charged him with assault. Yeah, dude, it's so, assault because yeah. spit could carry diseases. If you uh, if you, uh, if you put it's assault, uh, threatening all that shit. I watch enough cop shows. Batteries when you put your hands on someone. Yeah, it's when you no, they didn't charge. They charged him with battery, dude. That's battery. Body. Well, either battery. way, no, it's because it was because there was spit and spit carries, it, and they could have given him AIDS or anything. No, so I know, like, but I think they he, they gave him. They probably gave him battery charges because he actually used a phys, something part of his body to attack someone else with it. it his spit. Yeah, it's an part extension of your bodily of, fluids. If you if you reached out your pants, shit your hand, and threw it at a cop, I have been charged with battery. Yeah, with that was in the science of the land. <laughs> with a deadly. That's, Maybe you that take the dick out and like try to swing it at a cop. Like you like, make sure you charge me with a deadly weapon. 
better. <laughs> <laughs> I really mean this. Uh, you know, nighttime. Hey, hey, you know what? I can imagine what you look like when you do that too. Because when you spit it, you know what he did? He was like, oh, watch this. It's, oh, your porn just clicked on, Jay. Either that or your mm -hmm. dick fall, fell out. <laughs> Hold on. Give me a second, guys. I'm looking at something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the guys, um, but you know what you did? When he spit that spitball, he's like, hey, watch this. And the second it went in her ear, he went, oh. Yeah, dude, <laughs> he feeling. got so scared. Yeah, it's the worst thing. Like you, you like you look like you know, like when you get caught like that in Talladega Nights. Like Will Ferrell goes, "I don't know what to do with my hands." Like, <laughs> <laughs> you're just like, I don't know what to do anymore. Everybody's like, "Yeah, the, everybody fucking rats you out, dude." There's no goddamn loyalty, none. Yeah. The one time we had a really fat T-shirt, and Jay was in the class with me. That's why I bring it up. We had this really fat teacher, and she she hated my gut. She was so mean to me. Oh, and the then one that one with, day, the, the, with the uh, living room couch where we acted out like yeah, yeah, yeah. shit. Oh yeah, that yeah, that was the one. She went like tumbling by me, and she was a real big lady. And, and she, I only did it. She was really mean. It's not because I like hate big people, but when she went by me, I was like, I went. <laughs> oh, yeah. I like did this thing, and this fucking girl told me she's like, he just called you fat, and I was like, I'm in front of her behind her back. You hurt her fucking feelings. Technically, you should go to the office. And she was like, out, get out. I was dude. That class was so fun. Like that was the same class with that one chick that got mad because Jason, I can't say his last name, but it rhymes with meal, uh, pulled out his dick and showed it to her. Like he was like, mmm, 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 because she yeah. apparently pissed him off. I don't know what it was. And then she was like, she starts, she's like freaking out and getting all mad and then she was like well, she wanted to tell this 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 fat teacher she was like let me go back and say how small his dick is in front of the whole class then i'll feel better and then the teacher was like no we're not going to keep going this she cried and got the cops involved because she wouldn't let him go she her go back and call his dick yeah. small because he waved his dinghy at her like louis ck it was funny as fuck because i mean it was but he kept doing this like i you know you can't hear that but he was like hitting the, under the table and i kicked his fucking chair out because I knew he, he said it. He goes, hey, my dick's up. I'm like, no, it's not. And I didn't believe him. And there's like the, we had like those smooth tile floors. So I knew that the chair would slide. And I kicked that fucking metal chair. <laughs> he was like, la, 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 la. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like he was a fucking Native American chief, like running into battle with a tomahawk. He's like, la, 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 la. <laughs> <laughs> that guy was I hated that guy. He threw an ice. Yeah, but he one. did have a small dick. That's true. I did. See That's, that is true. It is a fact. I can confirm. Jay Garza, and it tasted weird. Jay Garza three. Thanks, buddy. Said mm. almost 2024. Hips and nips, boys. Got to make it a sexy one or we don't eat. Happy New Year's, guys. Have a great show. Basically, that's our lives. Either yep. we do a good job or we're going to end up at the fucking Piggly Wiggly. <laughs> Looks like that. meat's back on the menu, boys. <laughs> I heard you like this extra sloppy. Oh, shit. Thanks, Jay Garza. Thank Appreciate you, it. It is almost New Year. It's a fresh start for everyone. It's going to be nice. Don't wait till the first, guys. Get started. That's what Arnold told me in his podcast. He said, oh. do not start on the first. Start now. Lead into 2024 with yeah, just, hot, sexy abs. That just was, get up and look at the sun and be like, I'm going to embrace the day and give the sun a big old hug. Yeah, fuck yeah, dude. Suck the day's dick. That's what you jingle, got. jingle. Apollo has lifted her skirt. <laughs> the day is launched. <laughs> he says the, the day is up. launched. I swear to God, that's like, like the day is launched. Apollo has lifted her skirt. <laughs> jingle, jingle. Jingle, jingle. <laughs> hey, Junior Bar, thanks, buddies. I've read an annoying but believable story that WWE created plans to keep the title on Roman Reigns until at least the Royal Rumble 2025, which mm. he would surpass Hogan for the third longest run ever. My eyes cannot stop rolling. I don't, I don't know. I don't watch uh, WWE anymore, but I don't, I, I do know who Roman Reigns is. I always felt like he was Robin. like, Robin, I Robin. Like he was an unimaginative, like, kind of a basic bitch of a champion i never really understood any appeal that guy has he looks like a, a wish.com version of aquaman i don't get it like he looks uh, like jason Momoa. Like jason Momoa wasn't really successful <laughs> i will say this i will i will say i've watched him several times I, I, give me I, before i get hate i'm just gonna say yes i respect that he got leukemia and he fought uh, you know i get that i'm not yeah. talking about as far, as far as a character though in the in the industry i think he's lackluster as fuck yeah, and it's it's weird too because it's not even his fault. Like I don't think he's that bad of a character by any means. But I agree with you; it has been way overblown. And they they try to make this guy. They will not stop trying to make Roman Reigns like bigger than, like you said, Hulk Hogan or whoever. They're gonna have every it. single pay per view event. It's him fighting someone else, and it's the same boring ass storyline. I'm the head of the table. You will recognize me, or uh, what is it? Uh, not recognize, but acknowledge me, whatever. And it's so weird. Is he talking like to a 
Is he talking to Vince McMahon or his wife? Who's he talking to? <laughs> you know, it's 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 kind of basically it's the same awkward cringe as when people put up "He is risen" signs in their storefronts during Easter. It's like that doesn't even make sense. Like that's not even like that's not even that's not yeah, those aren't what? words. He is risen. You know those like signs. Well, like that's, he is because, risen. Well, that's what Easter is about, though. It's not the Easter Bunny and chocolate. Right, candy. but just say he has risen. He is the risen one. I think like, it's whatever. Just, not, just like it's, he. Yeah, I don't it's know. Dumb. Yeah, he's okay, risen. It makes sense. I think it's because um, oh, he has. Ri- I don't. In there a play on like because he's a. I don't know. Like he's a living it's, God. There's a word. It's the new James. It's the James new James version. I don't fucking know. Yeah. Well, someone should have proofread that bitch. And also like, it's like thou a art thee risen? thing. Thou yeah. art the risen. Art <laughs> yeah, not. Exactly. Thy be risen. I, it makes me unreasonably angry every time I see it, but no. And also his, his super move, the Superman punch. <laughs> he literally jumps up the air. He's on a it's terrible. So it's not his fault. I think he is well, a good character, come, but he is not what they're trying to make him. How come they have something like that and they had something really cool with the fiend and they let that flush, flush down the toilet? What with what? The fiend. When they had the fiend and they, they flushed yeah, it down the fucking they toilet. Fired him. They, they had a good him. thing going and then they, they decided to fuck that over. Why do you do that? Yeah. I don't like it at all. I, I don't I don't enjoy it one bit. Um I I agree with you, Adrian. That sucks. It sucks that I moved to strike. Christopher Sampson. Fly me to the moon like that. Hey, Chris. You know, kid kid came out, uh, so I'm not going to say the B word. Alex Scrampston, I wish you guys a very happy new year. I would like to see a movie about Michael Myers' parents starting another family in a different town and having problems reading about Michael's adventures in Haddonfield. God bless. You tie it. It's an omen. That's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah, it's like the omen storyline. It becomes the omen. Oh my god, is it our seed that's cursed? Maybe it is. And then the kid starts acting weird, and then you get like a weird Damien thing that's going on, and then he buys a Michael Myers. Mm-hmm. New Michael mm-hmm. Myers is born, young, fresh. Yeah, it would be like no, we, that's not having right. problems reading about Michael's a bit. Yeah, like they would be living with like some kind of guilt that they didn't like I don't know, suffocate the bitch in his crib. I or like you know, why you know they left and they didn't maybe try to get him more help or more intensive care. I don't, you know what I mean? Yeah. That would be an interesting uh, byline to it. Cause you don't really know anything about Michael's parents or how they were feeling about this. Or, you know, if there was massive guilt for birthing this little shit demon into the world that went on this killing spree. So yeah, that would be a very, like if a new Halloween movies comes out, like, and they had like a little 10 or 15 minutes of exploration with the parents. I, I mean, they did that with Rob zombie, but that was like some trailer trash bullshit. So I didn't care about it. But like the actual like supernatural Michael that we I would like to know about, <laughs> like what kind of fucking drugs did you all take before you fucked, and how many times did you play with the Ouija board that night? Because I yeah. want to know. You can see that shit in Satan's goo. There's no doubt yeah. in my mind. Satan. What if it turns out there was nothing wrong with the kid, but it's an A24 film, and since everybody looked at the kid like he was gonna do a mass murder spree, it sunk into him with emotions, and then he became a killer because of his parents. A24 films, and then come. Some something with cum. There's got to be cum. Sounds like some woke ass shit. Take it back home and fucking put a label on. Come and knock on a door. Come. I know. There's gonna. It's gonna be interesting what they're gonna do with it. But yeah, that's actually. Yeah. That's a good. Uh, I wouldn't want to watch a whole movie about it, but. I'm interested minutes, in that 25 idea. Five minutes of it, pretty good. It's not. It's ninety percent more interesting than 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 sixty percent of the scripts or the ideas I've heard for sure, man. Love you, Chris. Mister Klops. He's Klump. He might be dead. No, 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 no. My mother had this Rosie O'Donnell doll from like 1999. And one time we ran out of toilet paper and I wiped with the Rosie doll. <laughs> yeah, man. That's where her face, like, what a shit face. It's fine. You did nothing wrong. I'm proud of you. Good for you. Good for you. Mr. You got it. And what was that in your hand? And then you're going to you, go you, spreading it. I mean, you're going to, you're going to, I mean, you're not going to not use Rosie O'Donnell's face on a doll to wipe your ass when you see it. I mean, you're not going to not do that. <laughs> not good not. for you. You're not, you're not gonna not get Randy Jackson's Jackson. autograph on a katana sword. I mean, <laughs> it's the same thing. I bet that's it. I don't know why, yo, but I believe I don't know why. Well, what it was just I was like, I didn't even know they made Rosie O'Donnell fucking dolls. <laughs> and then I didn't know people bought them. Like, they did make them. That's a true story. I don't know. I, I believe him. Crimson Black. <laughs> it sounds like the metal band about to start next oh, week. Man. Crimson Black. Yeah. Hey, gays, uh, love the claw is the law tonight. Love you. Yeah, Crimson Black. You know what? How you doing? Thank you. you you're like that like, You're like that one cool kid that has a band in high school, and your band's name is Crimson Black, and you even have, like, T-shirts exactly in the same color, and me and Mike are coming to school, and you're like, hey, gays, <laughs> you fucked each other in the ass today? Or what? You're like, hey, Todd, how you doing? <laughs> and we walk hey, back. Todd. We walk into the school. It's like, that guy's such an asshole. Can't wait to see my fucking wedgie Sam and, like, blow his fuck, dick out. Fuck what? Todd and his stupid band. Thanks, yeah, he's probably like, yeah, you're like a hot dude. You're a hot boy. 
It's a hot boy. Greg Harris. That's a hot dude. Hi, I have... Greg. I've been inside of Greg. What's up, dudes? You want to, you know, what grinds my gears. These rednecks I work with showing me fake movie posters thinking they are real. Oh, they're trying. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, I, there's nothing yeah. about my posters or me that's real at all. <laughs> I was fake. <laughs> no, uh, yeah, but I know what you mean that there are people that will try to pass off like, because look, look, look at the sheen, look at the cloth, look at the trademark. Look, it's totally legit. And it's obviously a fucking fake. It's like made out of like, you know, cardboard box, you know, whatever they make cardboard boxes out of. And they're like, look, and they put like some kind of gloss sheen on it to make it. Yeah. Like there are people that put a lot of effort to make it look like an authentic, like original movie poster. And you're like, why do you do that shit? Just say you got that fucking shit at a flea market for four dollars because you like the movie. I literally, dude, I was at like I was I went I went to the mall Christmas shopping and I I was uh trying to find something for my brother in law, uh, because he's in the Marines and they have uh they have he has a like a dorm type situation where they can put up. So he wanted posters. They had a sick ass Texas chainsaw massacre poster at Spencer's, but I got it. And the line was like 32 people long. And the girl, the one girl working was hitting her bong in the back. So I was like, I'm never getting that. But I found another one at FYE. That was a jaws poster. And this is the, the girl. Or the bong. What do you mean? Huh? <laughs> you, said, you said the girl in the back was hitting the bong. I was like, I'm never getting that. She must have been way out of your league. <laughs> no, the poster. I'm never going to. Uh, no, yeah, I know. The, poster, I know. The, way, yeah. but the way the sentence sounded. <laughs> I'm going to have that. I'm never getting that. Um, no, uh, what's the FYE? They had a Jaws poster. Obviously, they were sold out of it. So I bought it online. But the only company that had one that could ship it here before Christmas, uh, it was like double the price. It was $20 instead of 10 Long story short, I ordered it. It got here. It was this fucking big. Uh, it was dude, this that, fucking tall. That's what it was happened. that like meshy material. Yeah, I got. I, I, I thought not this year. Last year, I ordered uh, April a, a screen poster, and I thought it was you know, for Christmas. And I thought it was going to be a regular size screen poster. Like I, And it was like that bullshit thing. Like yeah. they give you the, you know, at premieres, if you went to a Regal and they give you like those little tiny, yeah. What the, I was so like, what the fucking, do. is this like a declaration of independence scroll? I thought I was going to get a fucking poster. <laughs> yes. like, yeah. And I, but it's like, and I was, but I was like, dumb uh, though. Yeah. But I went on Amazon. I got the dimensions wrong because I'm not smart and I don't understand uh, dimensions because yeah, I fell out on geometry. Fault. And I was like, mm -hmm. dimensions? What's that bullshit? I thought we were talking about what the fucking size of the poster was, not goddamn physics. I'm not talking about parallel <laughs> yeah. dimensions. <laughs> a poster is a poster. Just sit poster on the poster, and I'll buy the poster. I just want to get these ice skates home so I can skate in them. And you're when the fuck do we get ice cream? <laughs> huh? Grease fold. Born in lust, turned to dust. Born in sin. Come on in. Chris, a.k.a. Kanye, is that you? <laughs> and then the next post, I, it's from earlier, but the very next post was, More than words. <laughs> the funny, one of the funniest it. things that I, and I think he's fucking turd anyway. Uh, Jimmy Fallon, I don't think he's that funny at all. Is uh, he seems like a he's, fake human being. Yeah, he's like, no, he's totally he's more fake than Pinocchio's dick. But I like when he did the Jack Black uh, more than words parody, fucking good. That was some funny ass shit right there. And Jack Black yeah. dead on hit those lyrics, like dead on hit it. Jack Black's the best dude. Jack Black is the uh, dude. That guy can sing. It's so underrated his his mm -hmm. abilities. Um, What's his friend's name? Uh, Kyle. Gas. Yeah, he's good I too. Guess. I like Kyle too. They both. Good. We don't mind sucking on toes. <clears throat> Jared W says math is for liberals. You're goddamn right it is, and it's not allowed right. in, in the southern states. I don't want okay? no part of it. We eyeball our shit. <laughs> no part. Hey, I eyeballed it, man. Yeah, that's all we need to do. Fucking Joe Biden changing the dimensions of posters. Lee the Machine Bowers, which is a great name. I want to go see you wrestle in the Big Locks parking lot after school. If possible. Lee. Oh, yeah. That does, are you a wrestler? He's got to be a wrestler. He's got to yeah, be a wrestler. He probably drives that shit down the fucking ramp. This old boy. <laughs> <laughs> he also owns his own John the Deere. Machine. I can just feel it. She thinks my track sexy. Uh, hey, sexy fellas. Happy holidays. My 37th birthday. Hey, just all passed. right, man. What encouragements should I do for 2024 Chalice and Loomis? Love your sexiness. We're going to put that together and we're going to make it into English. And I think what he's trying to say is my, my 37th birthday just, just came and went, Jim. And uh, what should I do for the rest of the year from Chalice and Loomis? Something like that. Thank you, Leave the Machine Bowers. Uh, maybe you should start with keeping your job and saving your money instead of throwing it away on the internet. Like we're goddamn strippers on a pole, you dirty, disgusting freak. And second off, Leave the Machine Bowers, make sure that whatever job you have, you ask for a raise because you did a good job and you deserve it. Mm. Not because you think you deserve it, you little prick. Because you did a good job. Okay. And third, 
and most importantly, stay away from the coochie poochies mm. while you're making that money. Because what's going to happen is they're going to drag you down and they're going to suck you dry. Okay, they're going to suck you dry like you are driving a diesel truck on the highway. It will be nothing left except misery and tears and no money in the bank. So yeah. leave the machine uh. bows. I wish you good luck in 2024. Keep your job if you have a job. If you don't have a job, what the fuck are you doing? Get a job. Have a good one, Lee. What you want to do is you want to change your wrestling name to uh, The Doctor. All right? You're going to be The Doctor starting in 2024. You're going to get up on that turnbuckle. All right? You're going to do a little wiggle for the ladies. Uh, you're going to take a shot of a boiler maker, and you're going to chug it with one of those Mexican restaurant-sized beers. You're going to drop down on your enemy, and then you're going to claim that you can't feel your legs. And when you can't feel your legs, you're going to go to the hospital, and then you're going to ask to take a nap with the nurse. And when you take a nap with the nurse, you want to make sure you ask her to get you a six-pack of Miller High Life. All right? And then you want to call your wife on the payphone. And tell her that you're not going to see the kids for two to three weeks. And then you're you're going to, uh, there, there, someone at the hospital's dad's going to die. And then they're going to have a really hot daughter. And then uh, you're going to go investigate it together. And then when she says, do you want to stay the night? You know what to do. It's a stupid question, Miss Grumpridge. And that's how you wrestle in the mm -hmm. 90s with uh, too, Thank too, you, Lee. too hot, too cool. Too that cool was very school. nice of you, Lee. We appreciate Jim it. Jim John Jones. Come on over. Come on over, baby. I think you had a stroke somewhere in between. <laughs> I did. I did. And that's what that's what Dr. Chow, not me, guys. That's not what I would do. That's what Dr. Chalice would do. Mm. Not me. I don't womenize. You have strokes women all the time. You just dogs. stroke it out. You stroke your dick and stroke it out. That's yeah. You Thank you so much for that, Lee. Really appreciate that, my friend. Uh, Brandon Ferg, a son says sub guys that chucky video always cracks me up <laughs> yeah, that's about it, yeah. you know about it do you <laughs> yeah. you know about that yeah, you're treasure. the one you're the one uh it reminds me of when i was a kid my grandpa told me chucky oh i was thinking of the chucky video that we did now i see what you're talking about reminds me yeah. when i was a kid my grandpa told me chucky yeah. was on tv and it was no, there's no Spanish. way there's, dude, i swear to god there's no fucking way you could find that shit's funny or, or scary there's no fucking way <laughs> like he's like blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Dude, I mean, it's not, it literally is the, I, like, I've, I watched it like 12 times a day in a fucking row. Like, it, it never got old. It's like the Indian thriller. The first time I found the Indian thriller, hum, dum, chum, dum, ha, ha. <laughs> Golly, ma, ha. It was the first, it's the same thing, yeah. It was funny, too, because back in the day, we used to turn the, well, we told this story before, but we used to turn down the, the volume of, of certain uh, uh, of movies or TV or whatever we were watching. And if we had a song on the radio, we would try to match the lips. To whatever they were saying in the TV, it was funny as shit. It's, it kind of reminded me of that too. And I don't know what it was that, if that was real, that dude was trying to go for like whatever the version of an Academy Award is for Spain, for voiceovers because for Spanish because that shit was so. He was trying his best to do a Brad Dorif impression as a Spanish man, and it was fucking coming off terrible. It was awful. But I think it. I feel. I still feel like that was like somebody that dubbed. The, the actual Spanish dub, because if you actually go on YouTube and look at the Spanish dub, he doesn't sound like that. The the Chucky doll. So I think I just think it was some guy that was fucking around. He was like, what if the guy actually tried to sound like Brad Dorf, which is funny as fuck. Yeah, I'm sure the Spanish dub was actually way better. But that was pretty. But it's funny. not. It's still bad. I mean, the actual it's still bad, but it's it, but it's weird because Chucky's got more of a higher pitched, like oh mother of a deal. <laughs> it, it doesn't work. I bet no difference. All right. Winning eighty eight. Hey. Says, I feel like the Carpenter storyline was over with the killing of the rest of the family. Don't know, just me. I want to see one with Sid and Mark's story. Maybe Stu returning. Uh, oh, he's I, on the screen. Yeah, uh, yeah, and I totally, I'm totally good with that, man. Like, if they, the, the best thing that Scream, that the, the best thing they have going for a message franchise is that Scream Six felt like the end of, uh, th felt like the end of a story. You could walk away from that, that mask on that wet street. And uh, they walk away and everything's hunky-dory. They're so lucky that happened. Because if they left it on a cliffhanger, franchise would be totally in big big dick trouble. I don't think it's in that much trouble as much as others <clears> think, <throat> think it is. But, yeah, I agree with you. I, I think it's funny. Is, uh, I, watched the, I watched one of those, um, and I was actually shocked to see her. They had a Scream reunion with, like, Neff Campbell. Like, almost all of them made it out, except for uh, the guy that did the voice for Scream. And then... Uh, the cameraman didn't show up or, or obviously Courtney Cox because she's bigger than all of them. But the funny thing is, is they were all there and Stu actually was asked at some point about the, or not Stu, uh, Matthew Lillard was asked about Stu coming back. And this was like maybe two months ago. And he's like, 
yeah, man, seriously, everybody keeps talking about it. there's people that want me to say, like, whatever, you know, he's, talking, he's like, I don't think it's happening at all, ever. Mm -hmm. He's like, because I have no phone calls, none, and I never probably will. So it's probably never going to happen. I mean, if they Shut wanted up. him, they would have already got him. And Shut he was a big mouth. proponent for it for a while, but he did say, I thought he was going to mention like other people like that's talked about it, but he was just like, yeah, there's so many people on the internet that talk about it. Yeah, and he, he, rec it. he recently, uh, just, just really recently was like, they kind of set up the springboard for the character to come back with six. He was like, but... I'll be honest with you. He was like, I don't need to come back to do the character. He was basically saying like, I appreciate it, but that was over 20 years ago. So he was like, he I was don't jealous of Skeet Ulrich. He wanted <laughs> to do a Skeet Ulrich. And then Skeet Ulrich was the one that made fun of him when they were talking that one guy. And he was like, you know, yeah. you had a TV drop on your head. You're dead. You're yeah. dead. Yeah. But that's not true. And they were just friends kidding around. No. Right. Shut up. It's not. Shut you hit him with the phone, mouth. you dick. You the phone, by the way, dick. apparently he really did hit him with the phone. That was real. That actually yeah. happened. Yeah, and they're still friends to this day. That's why I'm gonna hit you with my dick, and then we'll I'll still catch you friends. with my mouth and then eat it. Oh no! Stop <laughs> doing dick. that. What came out? Something is gonna come out soon. Asian Yabara, can't wait for this Iron Claw review. Hope the film sets a trend of great wrestling biopics oh, yeah. and originals. Shows as well. Maybe a CWCW film. Oh we. Man, yeah. yeah, I I I feel the exact same way. Uh, I thought it like it's not on the same gritty level of like something like the Mickey Rourke, the wrestler, or anything like that, but it is really well done. And, and you can tell that the, the director and the writers gave a shit about the story, which really matters when you're making a story like this. This, the, the, the biggest thing I can take away from this movie though is that it should have been a, a mini series on Netflix. It, it deserved, it deserved like eight episodes or an HBO Max or something. I think it was so good, and Zach Efron was so incredible in that role. It should have definitely been more than two hours. But anyway, regardless, we're not, I'm not going to spoil it here. But, uh, yeah, we, we might get, um, if things go according to plan, that Chris Hemsworth, Hulk Hogan, Hulkamania is supposed to come out this year. That's going to mm -hmm. be fucking epic if they ever – because, that I mean, I would love – yeah, I would love to see, you know, the heroes of the past of wrestling get a biopic. Because like a lot of those guys, man, they had tragic lives, but they were, like, incredible comp uh, competitors and athletes, and they, they kept going. They kept Dude, trying. It's so funny that you mentioned that because when I walked out of the theater for the Iron Claw, one of the things I thought to myself was, you know, it'd be crazy if if wrestling, because there's so many stories, like you're talking about Dark Side of the Ring, all these yeah. years and all these stories for all these biopics that you could do. Uh, it'd be crazy if if wrestling became the new thing as far as movies go, like it, it like almost like superhero movies, but also almost like action movies used to be yeah. like, you know what I'm saying? If they started to tell all these stories, it was like, all right, now I want to see Macho Man's story. Now yeah. I want to see Hulk Hogan's story. I would now say I see this. They deserve it. Those, those guys yeah. never got, they, they always, and I'm not saying they didn't make a lot of money. Of course they did back in their heyday and they were doing well, but they were never making the amount of money they probably should have been making. And they were always kind of mocked because they never were considered athletes on the same level as like basketball players or football players, but they gave their bodies the same way and yeah. for entertainment. And they got mocked all the time relentlessly and said, Oh, it's fake. So I definitely think those guys deserve to have like a Renaissance of some kind, because I feel so sorry for some of these dudes. Like you remember those scenes in the wrestler when the, it's like out of a fucking flea market or whatever. And they're all sitting there yeah. and they're all broken bodies and they're trying to sign autographs for like mm -hmm. nothing money. I fucking feel so bad for those kind of guys. Like, you know, but here's the other thing. You know what one story I wanted I, I was do one story I would love 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 to see uh, like a biopic in a wrestling tradition like in a wrestling way like this shoot it in the way that they did with the Michael Fassbender Jobs Vince McMahon how Vince McMahon became oh, yeah. Vince McMahon and shoot it like Jobs like shoot that it like that dude's slicker and snake butt oil though I don't think he'd ever let somebody mm, get the rights to a story no he might well, he's done he's he done I mean, to hear it. he's probably not going to let them do every little dirty rotten thing that he ever did but you know all the uh, allegations that were against him but yeah I mean, I'd have to be on just the general sure. like if he got yeah and you get like someone like uh what's his name that directed um social social network David Fincher David Fincher, Fincher to do yeah. uh, uh like a story based on McMahon I think it'd fucking blow up dude that'd be a huge fucking movie. Uh, yeah, hundred percent, dude. That's that's what I'm saying. Like, there's, so, it's not just that, but like, store wrestler stories are so much more interesting <clears throat> than than like sporting icon stories, like, and all this shit. Because there's all this drinking, there's a bunch of booze, and there's a bunch of drugs. Yeah, the rock and roll. There's stories. steroids. There's women. There's kfab. There's the infighting behind the scenes. There's the the merging of the things. There's no more dramatic real life dramatics in any other sport than there is in wrestling with these people. They have except the most for, uh, interesting for, uh, fucking. Ice. Ice skating with Tanya Harding and Nick yeah, Jerry. definitely. That's but these these people, 
to have the most interesting stories. And you go to ECW, there's stories to tell. In 25 years, we could be sitting here bitching about, oh my God, now they're doing a fucking gold dust movie. I'm uh, a WWE fatigue, wrestling biopic fatigue. But the truth is, is that the wrestling stories that there are to tell could actually, in a weird way, bring back that old like action movie, but they could also just become their own genre. That is there a bad wrestling movie? Uh, no, other than no, no there, Bard, which I, I would think, argue is still well, funny. I think, what, I think what happens is is the reason why they're so well received and they're so well done is because they are rare. You don't yeah. because these wrestlers, back to the old school wrestlers, they won't give up the rights to tell their story because they still hold on to the loyalty of keeping secrets behind the curtain. They don't want to tell Maybe. all and shit like that. I feel like it's a loyalty thing. It's not to the no, brand. Not I mean, they're telling it to fucking YouTube. Some of them, and some of them don't. So, but I mean, I don't think they so, want to make a movie about it and expose other people that they don't want to expose. Because if Chris, you make the a Crispin Wall story, fuck. <clears throat> That would be. That's why I don't think that's ever. Oh. Like, maybe it happened. Maybe it won't. And if it does, it'll be, it'll be like made for like a. Which, I, dude, one thousand fucking percent. These are the type of movies that belong and they deserve to be on stuff like HBO Max and and a but where you can have eight or nine episodes and tell the fucking story. Yeah. Forty five minutes an episode. Just give it to us like that because again, while this movie is good, The Iron Claw, I want it more. After the movie was over, it was only two hours and five minutes, and I was like, "Where the fuck? Like, where the fuck more is it? Like, because it, there's points of it where it's like, you're like, I know the story because I, you know, I watched the Dark Side of the Ring, and you know, in preparation again, I'd already seen it before, but it's like, God, there's so much more depth that they could have gone to, and they just don't yeah. have the time. They didn't have the yeah. budget. Yeah, and it still felt kind of long for how it was with all that shit happened. I mean, it was two hours, twelve minutes, something like that. It was like, it was over two hours still, but like, and the guy that yeah, played Harry looked like fucking Alex Winter, dude, buffed up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like Alex great casting too they did with that we'll talk yeah. about that when we get to it though mike barton said the batman 2 is gonna have hush clayface scarecrow and professor puig Ooh, professor puig one, is like a slasher villain maybe it could be a yeah dude have you ever heard of that uh the professor uh, pig? no he's not, fucking, not he's puig. fucking scary dude is it pig or puig no pig is it like, pig? He's a, like yeah is he, he has like no wait what is like a pig mask but his whole i think his whole thing so is definitely shit. pig he was in arkham knight well, they did show him in our, he's like, he kidnaps people and he does like experimentations on them and like fucks them. Like he does like unnecessary surgery and makes them pliable to his will. Like, and he, he's a fucking nasty dude. And it, like, he is, he's like exactly a serial killer. Like he's like, a, um, um, uh, what's the guy that the night, the, um, in the seventies that the night stalker, the night stalker. Yeah. Richard whatever it is. Not exactly like Ramirez, but kind of like an, like a weird, disgusting serial killer. I like that. Yeah. That's cool. I know. And you're right. If, if Profe like they can make a whole movie with professor, like I think that professor pig should have been the villain for Robert Patton's the Batman in the same vibe in the same way. They were already doing seven with the stylization, yeah. having a guy like that. in it would have been amazing. That sounds awesome, dude. I, mm -hmm. I'd be, I'm into that. I, I like that. They're going to with, with more unknown villains for sure. If that's the case, Ed boy movies. What's up, dude? Hey boys. Jay saw Godzilla last week. Solid film. Mm -hmm. Hollywood needs to take a look how it handles stories and characters. 100%. <clears throat> well, there's a movie that we're going to review tonight that I agree wholeheartedly with because I uh, enjoyed it to a, uh, a little bit, but as far as like character development, nah, it ain't for mm -hmm. me, dog. <laughs> it yeah, ain't dude. for me, dog. When they can make that fucking Godzilla minus one movie for less than $15 million, everyone should, every single fucking studio, there should be some Ari Gold motherfucker after, after Godzilla one, minus one came out. There should be an Ari Gold motherfucker in every boardroom and every studio screaming in the face of their employees going, what the fuck is this? Well, I think, lobster. I think you, you mentioned it before, like a, a year or two years ago. I don't remember, but it was something like, well, nobody wants to go to see a Godzilla movie for the character story or the story. They just want to see the monsters fight on screen. And they changed that. Yeah. So, actually, I, mean, I mean, that's true. I mean, there's a lot of people. They don't give a fuck if there's a story around, you know, Godzilla vi fighting a swamp monster from the butt fuck of the earth. That was 25,000 mm -hmm. years. They just want to see the fight. They don't care how it happened. They don't care about the characters involved. They just want to see those monsters fight like a Power Ranger show. Yeah. And what's crazy is Godzilla minus one not only had the best Godzilla like Power Ranger show going on with the effects mm -hmm. and stuff, but they also made you care about the characters. Uh, and, and they did it for cheaper than anybody's doing anything. Right I, now. It's a fucking I, I've movie, always liked dude. this. Like, I, I like the 2018 Godzilla and I liked, I liked the stories they were trying to do. But to be fair, the criticism they got where they were like, well, they need to just speed it up. I want to see Godzilla. I don't want to have to wait 55 minutes for some yeah. exposition to occur. Why oh, all this? Uh, th these characters I don't care about. You know why? Because it's weak writing anyway. 
and it makes the audience not give a shit about the earlier yeah. characters. So and it, that's dude, in, in minus one, when Godzilla shows up, you're you're going fuck. Godzilla's scary, and also I'm really concerned about the people on the ground. It's a total game changer. It's fucking awesome. Well, I'm really concerned um, about your commitment to Sparkle Nation. Sparkle Motion. Whatever. Ah, Mr. Clubs, let's celebrate my 200th super chat. This is it. Hey, <laughs> hey, all right. Uh, I don't know if that's Clumps. true, but we celebrate you. Oh shit! By the way, I forgot. I gotta say, I a shout out to Zach, which is uh, my uh, my nephew Wyatt's friend. He wanted. He apparently watched the you show. Do? Which is, you're way too fucking young to be watching. Don't this shit. watch this. I know. I don't know. Like he, like he literally like texted today when my nephew was over and was like, "Is your uncle?" Jay from we he watches the show, but anyway, Zach, we're going to jail now. Listen, definitely going to jail. Um, <clears throat> yeah, you shouldn't be watching this, but if you all watch this, I got one piece of advice for you. If you cheat in class, make sure you don't get caught, but and you'll go far. That's it. If you cheat on a test, just don't get caught. That's it. Or your wife. Well, yeah, that's a big one. That, that'll be much later. Later in life. Save that one for later. Ed Boy Movie says, Mike, how you doing, dude? Also, you seen Iron Claw? Also, any other athletes you think? A film would do so. We had one for you. It's like a stocking. He had one for you. He had one for me. Also, any other yeah, athletes? Mike, answer it. Ed a boy. film would do justice if done right. You haven't seen Godzilla. What do you want from me? Yeah, we did see Iron Claw. We're going to review it later, my good man. Um, what Maybe other I athletes? Did, yeah, you don't know. You don't know, dude. I swear to God, the Brett Favre story, Ed boy, is right fucking there. Dennis Quaid was basically Brett Favre in any given Sunday. The Brett Favre story is crazy. It sucks that it would end with him literally stealing welfare funds. That was disappointing. But up until that point, I was like, Brett Favre would have the greatest movie of all time um, with all the shit that he went through and the pill addiction and like everything. That dude had a crazy fucking life. But yeah, there's a ton. If I thought about it, I could give you probably 20, 30 scripts like by next Saturday with good sports stories that they just ignore for some reason. Just, they're going to do a Tom Brady one in a story. Greatest quarterback of all time. The Tom man Brady. in the arena. Tom Brady. <laughs> Oh, Tom Brady, a lot of hot women, number one of all time. Yeah. My favorite quarterback of ever. That's the end of the script. It's over. <laughs> My favorite quarterback, not ever. Uh, no, Tampa I, I, really, bit, I don't like you're, that. Dude, no, you're a, t you're a Tom Brady apologist. You've been for years. I don't know why. I don't know what no, you're I like, I No, because I just like watching spin. you like struggle when you try to compare uh, mm -hmm. fucking Aaron Rodgers and LeBron James and think they're not exactly the same person outside of the fucking team. They're both I don't love everything about Aaron Rodgers. I never have. Aaron but I'm saying, but you, they, you hate LeBron James for the same shit yeah. that Aaron Rodgers does. No, Le Aaron Rodgers has never come out and been like, I'm the greatest quarterback of all time. He acts like it, he deserves the biggest paycheck of the NFL, but why? I mean, so you wouldn't accept the money if they gave it to you? Do you, LeBron James, doesn't accept move to another team to get a fucking championship ring? LeBron James has never won his own championship. <laughs> I know, but, you, but I'm saying like he wants to go to another team to win. They're totally different. They're not okay. the same at all. Aaron Rodgers didn't <laughs> yeah, leave the Packers they're, they're to, fucking to join. buddies. Aaron Rodgers didn't leave the Packers to join a super team who could he do all his work. He got kicked off, yeah. He left because he, he got kicked, kicked off. off. He got traded because he, he asked to be traded. <laughs> he asked hey, to be I, traded. Hey, and he went to the Jets. This is LeBron exploding go. offer. This no, is dude. exploding offer, dude. LeBron wouldn't go to the Jets. <laughs> LeBron would have went to the 49ers, and you fucking know it, and I fucking know dude, it. He would have went to the most stacked roster possible, and we all fucking know it. Yeah, but you can't LeBron, deny his talent. My point being, his talent is fucking obvious, and so is Rogers. But sure, nobody said he's not talented. But if you put if you put Jordan or Kobe's brain inside of LeBron, if you put Aaron Rodgers' brain inside of LeBron James, he'd have twelve fucking titles, and he wouldn't have a losing record in the NBA Finals. Yeah, but if you put an the airplane has engine a in a losing car, record in the NBA Finals. It, 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 I mean, you're kidding me. You're kidding if you me. put an airplane engine in a car, it might fly. I mean, I don't care. Like, it doesn't matter. You're never going to do it. Dick a butt, it might I'm come. saying that they're, 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 they're both immensely talented, but they're both assholes off the field and the court. I disagree that uh, <laughs> that's, that Aaron Rodgers is a total asshole. Oh, wow. But okay. Who would ever want a dirty, broken finger I'm actually not. Like, if you were going to ask me any sports, I would actually would love not to see any kind of NFL or NBA I think that the another sports movie would just like the we were talking about the wrestling thing. That's where the spotlight needs to be on, something like that, where you don't get to hear those stories anymore. You hear a fucking every other week of a of you know like they do like an NFL or an NBA story or something. Dude, if you guys want some, speaking of that question, if you want some motivation, there's this Kobe Bryant movie. I think it's on like Paramount or some shit. It's called Muse, where it's Kobe uh, yeah, uh, it, yeah. before the tragedy and everything happened, just talking about his life and how he used to go out, like his mindset when he would go on the basketball. Had me fucking pumped up, dude. Mm -hmm. I was I was putting holes in walls around my house. Not really, but like I, I wanted to. Uh, fucking awesome. TV production says, hey, guys, Kobe's better than LeBron every day, twice on Sundays. Hey, guys, are y'all going to be <laughs> yeah. at Scarefest? 
next year. Far, far, so far. <laughs> I'll bring the product and we can party. Uh, are you, what are you talking about? What what product? We don't do drugs. You can get addicted, TB. And now oh, we I have thought, your face. Now about, we know. I'm going to call the cops. I think he meant condoms. That's fine. Oh. With extra lube on the end. We oh. Need that. Sorry. You guys had a conversation beforehand. Uh, favorite John C. Riley movie? Mine is Walk Hard. Ooh. Uh, I mean, I'll John be cheap and just say Step Brothers. I'll be cheap. That's fucking good. You know what I'll say? I'll say the uh, the best John C. Riley performance I ever saw, and he's been in some great stuff, TB. Tom Brady. He's been in some great stuff. <laughs> to work the um, most, probably. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, uh, the Lakers, uh, ironically, Warriors just, the Lakers, uh, fuck, what was the name of that? Winning Time on HBO. Oh, yeah. He, he plays, uh, not Jerry Buss, um, Fuck! No, maybe it is Jay Buss. He plays the guy who owned the Lakers for a long time, and he's fucking awesome in it. You gotta watch that. John he C. Riley's underrated actor, by the way. He was a bad guy in something too that he did really good in. Like before he did the comedy shit, he was like a pretty good back. What the fuck was he that? He was in uh he was in Gangs in New York. Yeah, oh Marvel. yeah. That's what he was like a yeah, he was a fucking betrayer. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. Uh, the, the chat saying Boogie Nights, The Perfect Storm, The River Wild. He was in a lot of stories about, yeah, water. he's a good, he's a good character actor, man. Very versatile in the band. Dude, I, haven't seen the River, I haven't seen The River Wild in ages. I gotta watch that. shit. Yeah, I just gotta sure. go down. To, I, I just gotta go down to Natural Park and or Natural Bridge and look at it. <laughs> you got <pretty> well. <laughs> Natural Bridge. Uh, we're not confirmed for Scarefest this year. We gotta work some stuff out first. Um, but we'll let yeah, you guys know was, as soon as possible. No, and it's not like, dude, last year was a fucking shit show. Like what happened with that? It was pretty bad. We gotta work around some a couple things, but hopefully we'll be there. Hopefully, uh, we have been every year for the past six years or so, so we'll see. Um, Austin up on the daily, our Wolverine film, a Wolverine film by Tarantino with the thinnest margins before X and a soundtrack containing but not limited to corn. Okay, a Wolverine film directed by Tarantino mm -hmm. with the thinnest margins before X. And a soundtrack containing but not limited to Corn, Drowning Pool, Slipknot, Johnny Cash, Godsmack, ACDC, Disturbed, and Eminem. What I, feel like you hit, I feel like you should be working for the studio and pitching the fucking soundtrack. That sounds like a hot ass soundtrack. Oh, and expensive as fuck. What do you think we're making? A James <laughs> Cameron movie? I can't afford it. What the fuck? No, Christmas uh, yeah, just that, happened. I could only imagine how much all that shit would cost. Like, holy fuck, dude. But uh, yeah, as far as a Tarantino film, working on a Wolverine movie be incredible i i mean but it, i don't know does it fit yeah it would work but would i want it i don't know i mean i think tarantino is an incredible like he's one of the best directors of all time but would i want him working on a wolverine movie i mean he deals with a lot of uh uh there's a lot of dialogue in his movies and wolverine and logan it just doesn't seem like it would fit as far as action sequences it would be awesome what if he wrote the script and someone like um i don't know Robert Rodriguez directed it. I mean, it could work that way. Like, Dust Till Dawn, it's like Robert Rodriguez directed Dust Till Dawn and Tarantino worked on the script with him. It would work yeah, it makes way. It makes absolutely no sense to me that Tarantino would do a Wolverine movie. That being said, I would watch the living dick off of that. Like, I'm into it. Like, But I, I would never think Tarantino... I said the other day, we were talking about this, Austin, on Twitter, I think Zack Snyder, after watching Rebel Moon, uh, it just got me thinking. Zack Snyder doing a, a, a Weapon, uh, Weapon X wolverine movie i think would be fucking dope as shit um, yeah man i gotta be honest uh, yeah well we'll get to the the review yeah, of the we'll actual talk. movie but the thing about Zack snyder is Zack snyder i love him to death dude i think he's so good and i think he would work in the context of logan only because <clears throat> i think the best shit that's produced by Zack snyder is when he works in a confine when he works within like a like a, a parameter you know what i mean listen what's some of his best movies 300 watchmen batman versus superman man of steel they're all DC properties or based on comic books. It's he's not. It's not an original movie. I don't. Th but I. I think yes. Action like he's one of the best like guys that he's better than Michael Bay on do using slow mo and, and fucking blowing shit up like a hundred percent. And I do like Zack Snyder a lot. I love him. But you know what's weird is that I I don't get the I, like I could criticize some shit from him, but I don't get the the fucking straight up visceral hate that he's getting on uh, Reddit. Uh, I went on Reddit just to, after I watched the movie just to see what other people thought about it. And it was I knew it was going to be vile. And it's right away. They were like, yes, yeah, again, crazy. the greatest trailer, uh, the greatest cinematic trailer maker in history uh, gets to direct his own movie. I'm like, what are you fucking yeah. talking about, dude? They're the same people that hated BBS. They're the same people that had, hated Man of Steel. They're the same yeah. people that hated 300 and Dawn of the Dead. 
They don't like his stylization. So they're saying he's a great at making film trailers, but he's not great at directing shit. I'm like, it's, I don't know what it's... fucking crack pipe you borrowed from your mom to smoke, but that's not true at all. <laughs> I totally agree. It's, it's the hate against him is absolutely ridiculous. But hey, I love I love it, Austin. I love your soundtrack. I would watch that fucking movie in a heartbeat. Jay, I'm gonna read this one to you, and then I gotta fuck Pete. My dick hurts. It hurts. I'm gonna I'm in a bad way. I'm not Hold feeling great second. in my cock regions. Oh, you son of a bitch! Now I'm just gonna pee in my pants and pretend it's your mouth. Oh, he just went there. It's okay. The peeing in my pants, pretending it's you, is off. Okay, we're good now. Hey, uh, but for first, Azteca Aguilar 04 says, Mike, play the If Chucky Was Puerto Rican video. So that's uh, what we're going to do first. Is it bad? Is it bad, though? Uh, I don't think so. It's on YouTube. We can't, we can't play any racist shit. <laughs> it can't be no, like racist I think it's, shit. I think it's the same. I think it's the same idea. Okay. Uh, here we go. Mira, gringa, puta, te he dicho mil veces que yo no hablo inglés, puñeta. Ah, no, puta, ahí, me cago en tu madre, tu madre de cara de dona dentro pa' mi cojones, me cago en tu... Oh yeah, that's dude. Good. That's what I'm talking about. That's some gravy shit right there, dude. You know what? That's that's as badass that as good. Mark. Remember Mark Anthony the fucking substitute? That's how it was. <laughs> like, like he, he's trying to be all badass and shit. He was all skinny and like had his fucking tats. Mark Anthony. Oh shit. Did Mike? Are you real? Are we still live? Oh my god. Hey, am I still live? Can you guys see me? Oh, is Mike gone? Yeah, Mike. <laughs> Mike choked himself out. Yeah, dude. He's into that kink ass shit right now for show. Oh, Stacy, I'm alive. Okay, thank God. I thought it was just me. I was like, oh my God. Run to the bathroom, Jay. No, I can't. I don't want to because he might come back in. I can't. It's that iron claw. Fuck yeah, dude. Mike is gone. He's gone, though. Yeah, <laughs> dude, that fucking Puerto Rican one was fucking great, dude. Like, I again, it just reminds me of that Puerto Rican, uh, not Puerto Rican. That reminds me of that Mark Anthony thing in the uh, in the substitute. And he was like, "Why the fuck is that the bad guy? That dude, holy shit, that guy looks like a strong wind would pull blow him out of his like fake ass sneakers." I got I got to wait for a text. I don't know what's going on. Maybe he might quit right now. Bye, Mike. Marlon enough said, "Yeah, for show." Uh, Mike's into that freaky shit for show. He is, yeah. Yeah, Mike had to go, apparently. It was bad. It, he was leaking out of his wiener hole, and he was like, I got to end this shit right now. So, By the way, man, I got to be honest with you. There he is! Uh, you goddamn turd! My Did internet. you go pee while you were out? No, my internet went out. I was trying to fix it. Oh. Um, okay, so, but it did reset everything, so give me a second here to figure out where we were. I'm glad it came back. I got scared for a second there. <laughs> I got Mike real scared. <laughs> you had to check the Dunkin'. You got them Dunkin' Donut squirts. Quick little yeah, fart, actually, all of a sudden it was all over. Give me a sec. Give me a sec because I got to figure out where we were because it just it just booted all my fucking shit out. So I got to figure out where we were in the chat. Um, uh, hang on the, one sec. The Azteca Aguila 04. Um, that was that was uh, you got it. I'm getting, I, I hold on. Um, oh, holy shit. Fuck, dude. Jacob, uh, Mike's new No. Holy shit. I I can find it. It's just it just takes a second. I, it, well, not obviously it doesn't. Uh, okay, it's eight twenty four. It was eight twenty four p.m. Okay. All right. I'll be right back then. Okay. I'll just read the next. Okay. I'll go from eight twenty four. For a second, I thought we got copywritten from the Puerto Rican Chucky thing. No, I thought I, I thought I was. <laughs> no, I, 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 <laughs> the Raza. Oh, don't mess with the Raza. <laughs> okay, so uh Wild Willie, thank you so much, sir. Says fantasy football champ week. I'm due to lose, but okay, you know what? Wild Willie, you're a wild guy and you got a Willie that's probably huge. But I'm gonna let Mike answer that because I'm not into the fantasy football at oh. So I'll let Mike answer that. That's on 8 30 p.m. But thank you, Wild Willie. Mercutio 80 says, Hey guys, my 43rd birthday was on Monday. Happy belated, man. I have Mark Wahlberg and Slender Man wish me a late happy birthday. Thanks for the last for show. We will. I'll let Mike come back and we will get to that. So that's 8 30, 8 31. Mercutio, happy yet. I'm going to be turning fucking 4 0 in uh, February. It sucks, but it's going to be okay. Jacob! 
do. Thank you so much. What a nice thing. It says, happy holidays. Thank you guys for everything this year. It's been hard, but you guys have always been a constant source of happiness and laughter throughout all the hard times. Thank you both, and I wish 2024 is a better year. Love you guys a lot. Yeah, man, appreciate that. Really, uh, what an awesome, generous thing. Uh, we hope so, too. I always hope every year is a better year than last. And, yeah, um, yeah, that's the hope, man. That's the dream that, you know, this will be a good year. I think it will be, and I hope it's a great year for you as well. Thank you. So generous of you, man. I really appreciate you. Thank you. Um, Mike's Movie Talk says, what's your top three scenes in The Shining? Um well, I because I'm gonna be cheap, dude. Uh, okay, so my one of my favorite scenes in The Shining is uh, when Wendy creeps into uh, the workspace of Jack and she finally sees what he's been typing and all in the all work and no play, you know, and and then different in the way that he's you know different uh, ways he's typed it uh, margins, and then that creepy ass music and he's creeping up behind her like a fart in the night. That was awesome. The elevators, obviously, the blood coming out was incredible. Um, and the twins, it never bothered me. It, like, it was a cool shot. It, don't get me wrong, and it was great. But I always loved – one of the other scenes iconic for me is when um, uh, Jack is – and it's fucking terrifying, dude. When Jack is making out with that rotting old bitch hoe from the tub, and then he looks in the mirror, and his and, and you see her old, like, pimply back, and it's all gross and detached you know, decaying and he likes like, and he's stuck, eh, 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 you know, like the meth head at seven 11 asking for a quarter. And then, uh, Danny's like, Ooh, like, you know, the, like that shit was fucking like, that scared me. It wasn't necessarily her. It was just the way the music kicked up and the intensity of that scene and the cut to Danny going, Ooh, blah, blah. Whew, that'd be it. <laughs> That's my three. I know. Check Cup also says, hey, man, thank you so much. Uh, plus, saw Iron Claw and found myself crying at the end. Uh, I saw the Dark Side of the Ring episode of the Vet Erics when it dropped, but seeing it portrayed on screen messed me up. Efron was great. Yeah, dude, 100%. I agree. Um, I think the Dark Side of the Ring got me a little bit more, and I was ready for it because I had actually just watched the Dark Side of the Ring before, so it wasn't as much of an emotional impact, but the, the acting was so incredible, and the portrayals were so good. Absolutely. You can't help but feel, like, heartbroken, especially at the end. The end was... The end was just fucking awful. But yeah, it was awful in, in that, not in a good way. It was awful. Like it was in a good way that they did such a great job of, of storytelling and, and doing justice to the Von Erich story. But yeah, dude, I agree. It was such a great movie. And it was weird because I didn't even know the Von Erichs was is a name I'd heard when I was because I I grew up uh in, and started watching WWF back in the late 80s, early 90s is when I was really hardcore hardcore into it. And then I came back like late 90s with the WCW NWO. Wasn't much into Raw, but um, I had even back then I've heard of the Von Erics, but I didn't know exactly who they were. But after hearing their story and then seeing this movie, man, what a what a crazy, amazing, heartbreaking story from a, from a wrestling um, traditional legendary family like that. But yeah, man, thank you. Uh, Melissa Petrina says, "Hey guys, miss you all so much. Hey, thank you. I had a baby boy. Hey, congratulations." Last week, Dr. Dr. Louis give a shout out to Baby Chase. Yes, uh, Baby Chase. One thing that is the most important when you're five years old, you need a job. You need to chase a job. See, they named you appropriately. Chase down employment. Don't let others go in your place and hand you things. You think you're bet you're not. Okay, welcome to the real world. Like that song. I don't know. Uh, don't go crying to your mama. This here, the real world. I don't know who's saying that. That one girl from Panorama. <laughs> anyway, Chase. Chase your dreams and employment. And uh, go easy on your mom and your dad. Okay? Don't be an asshole. Good luck to you. That's the best I can give you, Melissa. But congratulations. That's so fucking awesome. So That's so cool. It's, it's so close to the new year, too. Uh, is that good luck? I don't know. Um, Maverick Media says, what did you boys get from Santa Claus this year? Um, <clears throat> I got a restraining order and divorce papers. <laughs> no, <I'm kidding. laughs> no, I got, um, uh, April got me, I got, um, a PlayStation 5 controller. Uh, and I, I didn't want her to get her because I mean, they're so fucking expensive. I think the PlayStation 5 controllers are amazing. The DualSense, all that stuff. I think it's the best controller that's ever been released. I mean, I know. I'm an Xbox fanboy, but I gotta be honest, and I gotta I gotta tell the truth when I gotta tell the truth. And the PlayStation Five DualSense controller is absolutely, without a doubt, the best controller on the market. 
but it's so expensive. It's 70 fucking dollars, which is, I mean, it's $10 more than the Xbox controller, but I found it was on sale. So she got it for like 50. Thank God. Um, and, um, uh, I got like, uh, she got me like a couple of, I think she got me a sweater and I think that's it. I, <laughs> things like, I didn't really want anything. I always feel weird, uh, when people buy me, yeah, I don't, you know what I mean? Like for Christmas and stuff, but I didn't, I didn't get like anything like super duper big. It was like the main, the, the biggest thing for me was the PlayStation. Like I got an extra PlayStation five controller, but she fucked the color up because she got aqua. I can't, you can't hear you. I, it was funny. I, I, I'm, I'm joking though. It's not like a big deal. She asked me, I said, how dare she? Well, no. Yeah. She's like, do you like blue though? Right. I'm like, yeah, I like blue, I like Royal blue. <laughs> Royal blue. She got me aqua, which is fine. I didn't care. I just, I'm glad that she didn't spend like 70 or 75 fucking dollars on a controller, which I was telling them, by the way, Without a doubt, the PlayStation 5 controller is the best controller on the market compared to the Xbox, Nintendo. The touch screen. The, the dual skin. No, it's not even, it's just the dual, like the way it like reacts. It's so fucking good. They, they're ergo, ergo, ergodynamic. I can't really, by the way, there is a uh, thing up here. I didn't answer it because I'm not. 830 Wild Willie, it's about fantasy football. And then Mercutio wants a thing from Mark Wahlberg and Slender Man for his late happy birthday. So it's uh, 830 Wild Willie was a question about uh, fantasy football. But I still be back. Okay. Hang on, hang on, don't go yet, don't go yet, don't go yet, because I got, I, I don't, I don't have the, my screen's not. Okay, so eight, okay, eight thirty. While Willie says, um, fantasy football champ week. I'm due to lose, but had a hell of a season and so much fun. Keep two rounders, Donnie Darko, Zodiac, Carlito, Carlito's way. You guys rock. So he wants to know, keep two of these rounders, Donnie Darko, Zodiac, Carlito's way, and you guys rock. I didn't answer his question, but I was, he was talking about fantasy football, so, um, I yeah. Know if it was, but if I had to keep uh, two of those, I'll answer real quick. I pick uh, rounders. And uh, Zodiac. I mean, uh, Rounders and... Uh, I'll pick Rounders and Zodiac. That was actually going to be my two as well. Yeah, Rounders and Zodiac. Yeah, for sure. I, Rounders. Didn't Donnie Darko? Uh, oh, I, I didn't hear Donnie Darko. You said it too quick. Rounders and... Donnie, Donnie Darko. Said, Rounders, Dan. Donnie Darko, Zodiac, Carlito's Way. Yeah, Rounders and Donnie Darko is what I'm going to go with, but it hurts my balls. Deeply did not include Zodiac in that because that movie is fucking amazing. But yeah, dude, I'm in the same boat. I'm... It, I'm actually, it was funny because I'm in a money league with some people uh, mm -hmm. in fantasy football and my buddy was giving me shit about it, volleyball. He was like, when we drafted, he was like, he's like, yeah, it said that you had the worst draft of everybody. Cause like Yahoo will like say who had the best draft. And oh. like Yahoo said that I had the worst draft. It gave me the worst draft grade. Wear it with a and, badge of honor. Yeah. But I'm in the championship uh, next week. I've been picked to lose the past three games. And I was, my, my quarterback got hurt week one. I was using Jake Browning, the Cincinnati back and quarterback, still in the championship, picked to lose again. We'll see what fucking happens. I can't wait to see who wins the Patreon leagues too. By the way, it's gonna be fun. I can't well, wait. if Mike, if you'd been quicker on the on the pick, you could have got John Mo uh, uh, Joe Montano for your yeah, quarterback. John, Joe, the Joe Law and Order. Or Joe Montano, that that boy fresh out of Kansas City. <laughs> Joe Montano. <laughs> Joe Montano. Uh, Mercutio <laughs> eighty. By the way, uh, if you can't read this one, so you can remember it. His 43rd birthday, I got to go pee real bad, but his 43rd okay. birthday was on Monday, and he wants Mark Wahlberg and Slitterman to wish him a happy late birthday. So um, that's – and then I after that, I had left off at um, – where, where can you see anything? The, the Mine stops. I got Jacob at 8.32 p.m., so I'm close. You got Jacob? Okay, I got Jacob. I think I left off at uh, – okay, I, I got – I'm at um, – okay, I'm after – I'm after uh, Daniel Flores at 8.43. Uh, 840. Oh, you're you're going the other direction. Uh, uh, the last one I have is 8:32 p.m. with Jacob. Yeah, I read those. What the fuck? I'm going to. I, I read the ones that. So I read Jacobs. I read more uh, Mike's movie talk. Jacob also had another uh, very generous uh, super chat. Then Melissa Petrina had a baby boy. By the way, um, congrats, and was, Melissa. And, and then um, the last one I left off at was, uh, and then also answer Maverick Media. I didn't get to, to Daniel Flores, and that's at 8.43 p.m. Okay, okay. I'm actually with you there. Okay, so uh, Marcuccio is what's I read his that one. birthday? Okay, uh, it's 43rd. Okay, all right. Got all you. Right. Got you. We're good. We're good. Um, let's see here. Hey, Mercutio, so I heard it was your 43rd birthday. You're a little bit older than me, and that's okay. Because you need to get in the fucking you need to get in the gym, you need to work out, you need to push some weights up and down, left and right, all around. I have a golf, I have a golf club at my house. Not just a golf club, but I have a whole golf course at my house because I've done a lot of fucking movies. Have you heard that one movie I got coming out? It's it's basically a straight up ripoff of of uh John Wick, 
my whole family says that I, I didn't know that you were a hitman, Dad. And I'm like, yeah, I'm a fucking hitman. I was a hitman for this whole time. And then now, now I'm a big hitman and nobody believes me. My whole family doesn't believe me. But then I can't because I at 43 years old, you can still be a hitman too. You can go outside if there's a Puerto Rican buying a bunch of bunch of bush light. You can go out there and you can hit him. You 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 could you could put his head on the street corner, you could bash it open. If you're Mark Wahlberg, nobody cares. Because you could outrun the wind. You could outrun the wind, Marcusio. Happy birthday, Marcusio. Say say hi to your mother for me. Say hi to your mother. Pain and game. I can't hear anything in my left ear right now, and it's really weird. But you know, I hope you have a happy birthday, Marcusio, for Mark Wahlberg. And Donnie, too. Donnie's not here right now. He's working at Wahlburgers because we only have two locations open anymore because that's none of your fucking business, Marcusio. If you want, I'll give you a job at I'll give you a job at Wahlburgers for your birthday. I'll give you a line cook job. It'll be great. Uh happy birthday, Marcusio. I hope you have a great fucking day, man. I hope you have a great life. I hope you have a whole great year. It's almost the new year and anything could happen. We could all get laid. It's possible. It's fucking possible. Daniel Flores. I'm my I apologize for the confusion here, guys, because when the internet went out, it fucked up all the super chats. So I don't, I don't know exactly what's going on. So I can't pull up on the screen for a second. But Daniel Flores said, wife, let me have poker night with the boys on Saturday. Fuck yeah. What beer should I get? Daniel, you're never going to please all the bros with the beer choices. All right. Never. So what you do is you just buy the light stuff. You buy the the domestic. And if if they don't like it, then you just bust their balls for, for being fancy little bitches who can't drink light beer that's all you got to do plus it saves you some money my friend it saves you some money indeed um but yeah hey dude poker night with the boys i want one of those i don't know enough people to play poker i have a neighbor who plays poker with some guys i never got invited that's okay that's fine it doesn't hurt that bad uh but yeah most people i hang out with don't play poker and i fucking love poker and then when you hang out with family, I'm like, let's do it for money. And they're like, no, we don't want to do it for money. And I'm like, it's not fun unless we do it for money. Like five bucks, 10 bucks. Come on. And they're like, no, you're a degenerate gambler. I'm like, no, I'm not. Dad, leave me alone. But hey, dude, I want a poker night. Does anybody want to come over and have a fucking poker night? Because that sounds awesome. I'm jealous of you. Congratulations, my friend. Lee, the machine. Bowers says, love you guys. And I got the name, the machine from Dave McRae. And Jay, did you get the Soto Kino figure from NECA? I got an extra one. I can send you, Loomis. What's your secret for Asian tea? I will ask Jay that when he gets back, my good man. Um, but the machine, yeah, is the name that other people do use. That's true. But I'm sure it fits you better because you're hot. What? Daniel Flores. How many Packers fans does it take to change the light bulb? Three. One to actually change the light bulb and two to talk about how good the old one was. <laughs> <laughs> that's fucking perfect that's actually perfect you know what i actually hate packers fans no offense to anybody here is a packers fan i am a packers fan but goddamn do they get on my nerves they're like no 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 it's better than winning a super bowl you don't want to win a super bowl with a great quarterback what you want to do is you want to draft backup quarterbacks because it makes you feel superior to everybody else and you know we're better than the bears and vikings and that's all you need Packers fans get on my fucking nerves and they lick the front office's ass, even though they continuously fuck up. And then when a player's here for 20 years and they do awesome stuff for it, it's like, no, fuck them. They're wrong. I like the front office suit. So yeah, fuck Packers fans, except for you. If you're here and you're a Packers fan, don't tell my dad, Christian Diaz. Thanks buddy. Love you's long time. Jump scare movies, suggestions. Wreck has one of the greatest jump scares of all time. Paranormal Act, Paranormal Act City movies, pretty good at jump scares from time to time uh exorcist three great jump scare in that one for sure and um when evil lurks or where evil lurks i can't remember the fucking exact name of it there's some it was... great jump scares in that one. Oh, oh, o'reilly's auto farts yeah. um i'm still trying to figure out the situation i got going on my super chat shay but there was one for you lee the machine bowers says jay did you get the soto kino figure from neca i have an extra one i can send you Oh no, that's okay, man. I didn't get it. Um, that's all right. I, I don't have any room left at all. I can't. I don't. I can't even buy anything anymore. First off, they're mighty expensive. But um, no, I. It's cool. I don't. don't very generous of you, but I literally don't have any more room. Stick it up your ass, sea bass. Yeah, I can How put about it up that? there. I'll put it in the cold storage. <laughs> he also says, um, Loomis, what's your secret for Asian tea? And it's his, it's his, it's his fifth super on a live stream. So hey, there's another. Hey, all right, man. Keep that Thanks, up. Buddy. We love it. Thank you. Uh, what's my secret for what? Or what's the secret for, for what? A what's Loomis's secret for Asian tea? If you if you, if you knew the secret of Asian tea, then I put a bullet in your head. Shut up, <laughs> idiot. <laughs> um. 
Excusey. Oh, Excuse uh, potatoes. Oh, I was going to ask you, did you play uh, the Ro- that RoboCop yet? I have not yet. I have not because our dishwasher broke. I think and I had RoboCop it. broke City for Christmas present. Yes, and I'm very excited about it, and I was looking forward to play it, but uh, our dishwasher broke, and then we had trouble hanging one at uh, MJ's new TV, and I've been putting together children's furniture, and there's a lot going on, so I haven't had a chance to, but I'm very fucking excited to do it. I've been Tell looking to like- do those things. God damn. <laughs> I know. Get in there and do what you're told. I'm playing a um, video game. Damn. And when's Meatloaf, Mom? <laughs> <laughs> Michael Parton said, I wish we could have seen James Cameron's Spider-Man. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, it, they kept a lot of elements from James Cameron because they, the idea that the, uh, the, the, which is genius, by the, the webs come out of his wrists. So that way they didn't have to worry about, you know, him making the mechanical web shooters. Regard, I mean, I know that's more comic accurate, but it's also genius as fuck too. The, you know, but yeah, it would have been, because they, they would also cast, uh, it would they, you wouldn't have sequels though. Because they they would have cast Leonardo DiCaprio as Peter Parker, and he never would have come back for sequels. He's too big. Yeah, that's true. Um, and so I think I'm caught up on here, guys. If we get to the end of this, and because of the snafu we have with the internet, if we miss someone's super chat, please, uh, I will put my email down here. And please you send can me sue a suit. Yeah, <laughs> class, class action lawsuit. Suicide with jg wentworth uh i'll put my email there if we did not hit your super chat because of whatever happened email it to me and 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 we will do it uh but i believe that we are here at gary at 8 55 p.m who says i would have done the dark universe like the classic movies but i would have had nudity gore made it black and white like werewolf by night was yeah that would have worked Uh, i'd have been all right with that um it would have been more interesting than what they i think were doing, well yeah and sure. i think the worst one of the worst things they did was put all their eggs in one basket with tom cruise scientology and the mummy that was stupid because that movie was fucking dog shit i mean it was a fun like special effects you know extravaganza but it was like it was a dumbass movie and that was like supposed to be the launch point why not that well you know what they're doing nosferatu that's coming out that's what they should have started with have it like a creepy, like really like take it seriously, gothic horror story, and then use that as a launch point for the dark universe. Because again, I think Nosferatu is the truest version of Dracula. Yeah, and dude, there's this thing like that's going on right now, and I think it's between Universal and Blumhouse where they just put out these movies that are, you know, a lot of the times they're PG-13. If they can make a PG-13, they will. But they're just putting out these standard fly-by-night, like, as safe and PC as possible, not pushing the needle, just aiming for the box office and the box office only horror movies. And, yeah, like, The Invisible Man was good. That was a good movie. Good and I think that the new uh, Wolfman movie will be good. But I'm with you, like... I want to see people make movies for the sake of making a really great movie, not like the perfect fucking formula for a box office movie. And it feels like when it comes to Universal, when it comes to Plumhouse, that's what they're doing these days. So I love your idea. I love where your head's out. Let's focus on the film, not how much it can make us, even though I know that's the idea. But if the film's good enough, it's going to make double what it would have made, just like the Joker did with uh, DC, right? So I'm with you. By the way, I'm sorry I took my cap off, and I know I look like a creature feature that would be featured in Dark I think Universe. Your hair looks nice. Listen, the thing is, I, do, I don't know what it is. Like, like, maybe my head's too fat because these fucking hats, like, give me when I'm drinking my soda, and I'm and like, I have a hat on. It squeezes my fucking head, and it, I get a That's headache. Weird. I got I a headache. Mine's loose as shit. Like, well, you know, it's funny. I, I my brother was over today, and I. I need a haircut, obviously. He's like, dude, you look like fucking Egon walked because <laughs> I because I had my like I tried to poof my hair up today and I and like it's too long, so it doesn't and he's like, You, you look like Egon. And I, was like, yeah, <laughs> I think I it looks know. nice though. No, he's like, good. he's like, Did you take a shower? I'm like, Yeah, dude. He's like, Do you blow dry your hair? And I'm like, No, it's gel and fucking hairspray, you asshole. He thinks I just stand there with that fucking hairspray or, 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 or like a blow dryer and like have it poof up like that. I was like, No, <laughs> you know, dude. If I had John Travolta hair from Saturday Night Fever, trust me, I'd be fucking using that blow dryer, but it's not that good. Dude, I've been going to Grey Clips like every few weeks, and what I'll tell them, I was like, just cut the sides. I don't want you touching the fucking top Grey Clips. Just cut the sides. Like, do a one on the sides, cut that shit super short, and then when it's time, I'm trying to grow this out. You get a one on the sides? Cut it, though. I get a one on the sides, and then I I have to blend it in. I just got a one on the sides. Yeah, no, it's nice. But like the guy I told today, normally they just leave it alone. This guy today cut the fucking top. I was like, dude, I've been growing that out for fucking months. And he just cut it because he wasn't listening. But well, don't do that. Yeah, I don't know. If I get a one on sides and say don't touch the top, my shit's going to look fucking awful. So I shouldn't do I look like fucking Nicolas Cage in that fucking uh, that movie where he's a vampire. Yeah. No, <laughs> it's like well, it a, works because I have a short beard, though. Like, uh, Well, you, you know, know, speaking of beards, uh, I'm trying to let this shit grow out. I, I, I do want to try 
to get a big one, a fat one. Oh, you gonna do the Duck fucking, Dynasty beard? Well, like no, like an Obi One. I'm not like, not that long. Like like right out to here. Like you know, like a, yeah. a decent, like a fat fucking beard. But April was like, Fuck. Do it. no, she was like, no. I don't like it either, Jay. No, she was like, no. And I was like, well, it's the same thing with you. Like, you're not allowed to grab a mustachio, which I think you'd look good in if you had mustachio. That's but true. she was like, but she don't want me to, like, dude, I can, like, already fluff it out. Like, I already, yeah. already could. And then she's like, I don't like it. So I was like, fuck. I keep, I keep I like shaving my so shit. I can't fucking not do it. <laughs> <laughs> I keep shaving my shit super short because it's going to, it gives me motivation to fucking lose weight. Because, like, I got. <laughs> like fat baby chin. So that's like everybody. when I see myself with a short beard, like that's just skin, dude. That's just skin. Everybody does. Yeah. Everybody's gonna have that. But it gives me unless you're fucking I mean. unless you're gonna go for are you trying to go for the Jarrett Leto Dallas Buyers Club I, fucking weight loss? No, I, where it's no, just like I just don't. I don't have a strong chin, you know. So my my baby fat gets strapped in. But like, yeah, God, it's a great time. I wasn't um, you know, like I wasn't like okay like I want to get like dude. I looked at like we I watched Rebel Moon. And I like Charlie Hunnam's beard. I do. I like that beard. I want it that length. Charlie Hunnam's beard. I never liked Charlie Hunnam. I never. I never well, I'm not just saying his beard. Him. I'm not saying Charlie yeah. Hunnam himself, but I'm saying like Charlie Hunnam's beard. I do like that. And if I'm gonna shave my head because my fucking receding hairline is getting worse and worse, I'd be like shave my head, have a big fat fucking bushy ass beard. Do that. You can go for that. I'm not yeah. sure I would enjoy it personally because I when we kiss, I don't like it when your beard tickles me. I'll but tickle your penis that's... hole with it. It's fine. <laughs> Maybe it'll tickle my penis. I like it a little more. <laughs> Ski bank the bump god who just sounds like somebody you want to party with. Does he not? He bumps. Thanks, buddy. My uncle, who was recently released from prison, as they all are, uh, just walked by the stream and said, them boys got purdy mouths. I'm not sure what he means. What do you all think? He, well, he wants to use our mouths as glory holes, and I'm all for it. <laughs> <laughs> Send us his uh, grinder profile, and we'll see what happens. You never know. You never know. Well, yeah, we, if we ever, uh, I'm sure we'll go to jail at some point. What's his name? And, like, send us his inmate number so he can have some protection. We'll have some protection <laughs> in there. <laughs> oh, shit, fuck. It's like, um, have, if he's, like, in some other state prison, like, listen, I really, really, really want to transfer to this prison. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, Ski Bank's uncle, how you doing? Yeah, how, how you doing? doing? Uh, Adrian Barr, is the Patreon Fantasy League uh, a paid one? Is it on Yahoo? Yes, it is not a paid one. If you're on if you're on any tier of our Patreon, you can join the Fantasy Football League. Uh, there are four of them currently. Uh, by next year, hopefully, we'll you know maybe even have five or six. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't have to pay to join it. If there's no winnings, it's just for bragging rights and uh, make it a trophy made for the winner. Who knows? Uh, oh no, that's for something else. Uh, but uh, yeah, no, no, it's not, and it now is I, on Yahoo. I have a fantasy league for cr uh, cricket. Uh, we're Prop still waiting on a member to join besides me, but uh, we're hopeful. We're hopeful. Cricket fantasy, a uh, fantasy league cricket. Yeah. Cricket. Do you cricket think that people do that? Like, I don't know. I'm not trying to like, you know what I mean? Like cricket's such a weird sport. I mean, it's so foreign to us because we're Americans, but like, is there fantasy? Do you think there's fantasy leagues for cricket? You know what I mean? Like people are like mm. super fucking hyped about cricket. They're like, I don't think so, damn, but I could man. be wrong. You can bet on cricket. Got to know what a there's gotta be, well. There's got to be a fantasy league for soccer, right? Because it's so fucking lore in, in um, Europe. It's got to have. You got to have like the same, like everyone's all yeah, hardcore. Like they're bringing sure beer and is. popcorn and like fucking pizza over for a fantasy league for soccer. Like for yeah. me personally, that'd be like watching golf. I'd be like, what the? I, I think it's boring, but I'm sure. Just, I'm sure there is something like cricket or polo. You know what I mean? Yeah, polo. I would play polo. You don't know. It looks fun. I'm just saying, but is there a fantasy? Are polo. people showing up and like telling their wives lies? Like, no, I'm going to the office and they're actually going. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going scared. to the fantasy polo. <laughs> it's even more embarrassing. <laughs> Tristan Littles. I like your name. I like everything about you. I don't know why. I just do. It says, hey, guys. Been a minute since I was last able to check out a live stream live. I love your fucking faces. Hey, Mike. I'm a Cowboys fan. LOL. If you could take one of our players and add them to Green Bay, who? Ooh, that's a good question. Troy Aikman. Um, your general manager is who I would like to replace ours with. No, um, Michael Irvin, Emmett Smith. I'm gonna go ahead and go CD Lamb. Uh, I was thinking Micah Parsons, but defense is where Green Bay is where defensive players apparently go to die. So I'm gonna take I'm gonna take CD Lamb. See what he can do over here. I like yeah, Cody. It. It makes me you know, it's funny. Uh, my Cody, my brother asked me who I was pulling for in the playoffs. Buffalo's in the playoffs, aren't they? Uh, not not 100. They, they could card? fuck that up. Uh, it's it's not official yet. We got. Two I'll, weeks I'll go for we'll Buffalo see. if uh, if Buffalo gets it because he's like, well, Detroit's in it, and so is Miami. But I don't like I like I don't mind if Detroit wins because they never won one. But there's something about Miami I just don't give a fuck. Like I don't care. I would probably go for Detroit if they got into like a Super Bowl situation. Like I would go for them for that. 
Detroit has a shot for sure. Uh, the Bills get on my nerves because like their fans act like they've won 12 fucking Super Bowls and they've actually won zero. So I used to root yeah. for them because, but like where they've been great regular season wise, their fans are, uh, they can be not all, but they can be pretty obnoxious. Uh, it's like, you haven't even won anything yet. Come on. I, I like the Buffs. Like I, mean, really. I mean, they bent what they went to the Super Bowl like four times in a row and lost every single time. They're yeah. like that kid in problem child. When he was like, oh, do you even know you're talking to that fat kid when he was talking to uh, when he was talking in problem child? He's like, well, no shit. You've been here since the 70s. <laughs> they're like the kid that get held back like every year. And then yeah. they're like, yeah, I bet I've been I'm 25 years old in the third grade. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Adrian Ybarra says, Loomis, can Michael pop fireworks to bring in 2024? The only thing he could pop into his brain is a goddamn bullet if he suicides himself. That's it. Shut up. No fireworks for him. Only fireworks will be set off. Is if he dies, then I will celebrate and have fireworks. Roman candles. They'll be pretty. But not prettier than him dying. <laughs> By the way, guys. They'll be pretty, but not prettier than him dying. <laughs> By the way, I was going to, uh, this isn't uh, related to that, but do I got, you uh, You like, did you play Grand Theft Auto? Uh, I'm not like the new Vice one. City. Uh, okay, but you one? play, but you I've... play, you understand how Grand Theft Auto works. I dickled around with it a touch, yeah. Dude. I hated this game when it came out because it was like there were so many bugs and it fucking sucked. But now I've I've dumped like 43 hours into it over the holiday. And Cyberpunk, oh, Cyberpunk, Cyberpunk 2077. Dude, fuck yeah, dude. It's su- like, dude, the, the, this dude, CD Projekt Red are the guys responsible for making The Witcher 3. It sucked at launch because they overpromised it. It's the one with Keanu Reeves. It's like, wake the fuck up, samurai. We have a city to burn. Like yeah, that yeah, trailer. Yeah. They... They overprompt. They, it was so many bugs launched. It was so fucking bad. And I remember playing it. I was like, I don't get this. It's so there's fucking bugs. And I quit playing it. And then I went back. They fixed it. Dude, they spent a hundred and twenty five fucking million dollars to turn that game around post launch. Yeah, just to yeah, fix the bugs it. and shit. Games and it's fuck, great. Dude. But no, I mean, I was I got I get to give my hat off to them just for the fact that you don't hear that in, like EA. It's in the ass. Would never fucking do that. They were like, oh, yeah, yeah. we'll cut our oh, fucking no. losses and move on. No, Fuck that's you. true. That's true. Yeah, and, and, and I, I actually, my daughter bought me um, last year, I believe it was, or, or for a birthday or Father's Day or something. She bought me that game, Cyberpunk. It's fucking good, to dude. play To play together, and then we turned it on, and it was like, oh, you can you can actually, like, change your dick shape and whatever. Yeah, and that's, like, oh, yeah. so we shouldn't, this is not a game for us to play together. Yeah, so you we shouldn't, it's, it not a, it's not a father-daughter game. That's not no, it. no. So we but, returned the it, I never played it. But the new thing... You can leave the shorts on if you go and I, I I didn't. I want to see that. I want to make my dick yeah. realistic so it was small. Was, but I was I, go back I, to I, it, it was small and fat. But I wanted to make it. But yeah, you could turn Coke that can. option off. But dude, they did a great fucking job of like turning. And like that's so rare though. The fact that they literally spent a hundred and twenty five million dollars because all the consumers that were hyped about that game that went out and spent seventy dollars, sometimes one hundred and fifty dollars to buy that game, and they were like, "You just gave me a broken fucking product." They like went out and made it right. That's good. Good on them, man. That's like, yeah. I, you know what? You know what? It could be the like a class action lawsuit. Like, remember back in the day when Xbox 360 released and it was like over a 50 percent failure rate for off the production line with the Red Ring of Death, and they were yeah. facing a cat like a like a class action lawsuit, and they didn't do diddly dick about it for like four or five mm-hmm. years, yeah. or three years. It's EA style. EA sucks fucking ass, dude. Uh, continuously makes shit fucking games because they're the only ones who own the license to it. So I respect that as well. Um, my fucking mouse isn't working. But it's a good uh, Colton Milaiki says, what do you think the chances are that Spyglass reverses some of their decisions, i.e. admit they fucked up or sell to another studio? And in, in the case of Scream 7, oh. I think you're dealing with a CEO or like whoever at the top who so deeply is invested in this Israeli-Palestine uh, situation that there's no chance, in my opinion, they're going to backtrack. Any of the shit that you've heard about they've begged Melissa to come back or whatever, I find it very, very hard to believe. Um, I think that, but I think there's no way they reverse their decisions, in my opinion. There's very low chance that they sell to another studio because, and I mentioned this uh, in one of the updates of videos I did, it's just like sports. When you have a player who's acting up and who's fucking up and doing shit, saying he wants to get traded, that, that player's value immediately goes down. So when the team goes to trade that player, they're not going to get what they should get out of that player. And I think that's the Scream franchise right now. If Spygoss went to sell Scream, which, by the way, is, it's got to be caught up in a bunch of red tape because it's also owned by Paramount. If they went to sell Scream, 
whoever's buying it's going to go why mm -hmm. would i pay full price you've got all these situations going on jen is not coming back melissa's fired nev you didn't pay they're going to fucking fleece them so i doubt there's any chance in hell it gets sold to another studio personally that's just my opinion but it could well, happen I, well there i mean i think these these studios understand that as far like there's always something going on in social media where there's an it's an ebb and flow of, of one fucking movement after another movement and they're gonna be like, we'll ride it the fuck out. Like, you know, in a year or two years, that fuck it. We'll make we're still release it. It's You're an absolute flow. Right. There's always a fucking movement. There's always something that's going on that people are like really are, oh yeah. And then you know, they forget that, oh yeah, the Kardashians like fucking live stream is coming up. Oh yeah, I forgot about what even I was protesting. 100 <laughs> percent dude. Yeah. That's what America yeah. is. I mean, I'm not saying that you know we don't have like good intentions, but come on, guys, the attention span is as short as my dick. It's not there. Yeah. 100 percent dude and i i completely agree with you and spy glass i fucking bet you a hundred dollars right now that spy glass is laughing at this shit like they're not laughing because yeah it's 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 fucked up with the cast and stuff like that but as far as the internet backlash yeah, and the yeah. boycotting and stuff like that what's going on on twitter and shit it's not real life spy glass knows for a fact they're sitting back going we're gonna wait four months and you guys will be angry at robert downey jr or somebody else or mel yeah. gibson or something will be the hot Remember topic. when you get tropic will thunder it? and he's a racist you guys <laughs> yeah. will do that We'll announce that Nev's coming back and you guys will not give a flying fuck about Melissa Barrera anymore. And I guarantee that's no. what Spyglass is banking on. They know there's a, ch in my mind, they may already have a fucking signed agreement with Nev Campbell and with God knows who else to come yeah. back. And they're like, let's give it a couple months. Let everybody calm down. Good, They'll forget all about it. The internet is not real fucking life. I bet yeah. it stays with Spyglass and I well, bet they put a movie out within smart. two years. They're being smart, dude. At least they're not doubling down. They're not saying a fucking thing, which is good for them. Yeah. Like, just shut your mouth and let it pass you. That's it. Yeah. Like it, like the plagues of Egypt. Put that fucking red thing on your door so the, the death angel don't take your baby. <laughs> like, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it was that in the was Bible. Deep. Egyptian. Oh. <laughs> yeah, fiction Egyptian. can be fun uh, no uh, or uh uh what was the um um never mind i fucking forgot what i was gonna say don't worry about me come see about me yes indeed child of the corn good person have met him face to face good kisser says what's good fellas i enjoyed rebel moon thought it was good mm -hmm. shit just rewatched a bunch of batman animated series three favorite villains and one runner-up from the Batman animated series, okay. Well, number one, well, I number one's gonna be ice, uh, not ice, Fucking Mr. number Freeze. one's gonna be Mr. Freeze. I okay. think the character that they gave the the the, the compassion and, and and the and the way that he was written in the animated series is exactly the Mr. Freeze that we should have in a live action film. Uh, and, and they also did an incredible job in the Arkham games with Mr. Freeze because again, he is truly a sympathetic character, you can understand his motivations for doing what he's doing. He's doing it for the love of his life is Nora. And, and, and he's like, he's not a bad guy. He's just really twisted by the motivations to save her life. Um, so he's great. I think Mr. Freeze is an incredible character from the series. I loved, um, I, I always liked, um, and I know people Dick? were gonna be like, yeah, I love Dick. Uh, especially mm -hmm. like the juice from the day. Yeah. Um, I'll come Matt out Hatter. Yes. Yeah, so it tastes like Turkey. Uh, Matt Hatter, uh, is really good. I like Matt. I like the I like the animated series Mad Hatter. Um, Mad Hatter itself as a character is is kind of, yeah. but the character that they did in animated was great. And, and my third one is, uh, you know, um, I, I think he was written pretty well as um, Scarecrow in the animated series. I feel mm -hmm. like the Scarecrow, not the uh, Killian Murphy one. He's great. I think it, Nolan did as much with what you could with Scarecrow. But the way they, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, you know what, Child of the Corn, I'm gonna revise. It's, it's going to be Clayface. My third is Clayface. The idea, the vanity of somebody, like the, 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 your whole existence is built on, you know, what you look like and how, you, how you're perceived by the world. And then when that's taken from you, that the psychosis sets in and you have nothing else to do except blame everybody else for, for something mm. that you did because you took this experimental shit and fucked your face uh, up. He's a tragic uh, character as well. And, and the fact that he's an, you know what I mean. So it's those three characters. I, I like the, I like the villains where there's a, uh, there's a tragic element to him. Matt Hatter, notwithstanding, I like the villains that there's a tragic uh, backstory that you can actually sympathize with and be like, I get it, but you're still doing evil. You know what I mean? Yeah, uh, I would go with the almost the exact same thing. I would, I would, I would go Mr. Freeze number one, Joker number two, and then I would probably go Scare, Scarecrow after that. Oh but to yeah, be fair, well, I don't remember. There's a lot I don't remember very much. Runner else. up, uh, runner up would be, um, as far as, as far as written. In the animated Harley Quinn, uh, Harley Quinn, Harley Sorry. Quinn is a is great. 
uh, the way that she was written. Oh yeah. Formed by in the animated series, uh, which is actually her birthplace. She was so popular in the animated series that DC made a comic book and then she became popularized and canon in the actual yeah. main DC universe. So, but it's Harley Quinn. Uh, the runner yeah. up is Harley Quinn. Uh, animated series is fucking badass though. Uh, Ski bank the book. God said, Jay, I'm trying Midnight Suns on PS5, and I loved oh. it to start. Sweet turn based action. But now I'm sitting poolside <laughs> with Blade, having a deep convo yeah. about our feelings, and I can't even screw them after. What the fuck? I don't know what the fuck that uh, means. Romance, you know? Romances are, are uh, there. Um, there's no romances, which actually is strange. And you know why that happened for is because um, the studio that made by the way midnight suns is an incredible game i really wish it sold more because i would love to see a sequel to it or some dlc because the fucking ending is such a cock tease but uh the reason why that happened is is because everybody the reason why they didn't uh, include the romance uh feature in the game and it definitely des it deserved it because there's so much fucking heavy flirting it's like you're walking into like a, an orgy like it's just like it's pumped in the air like you could flirt with blade you could fuck yeah dude you could fuck like there's so much fucking like flirtations everywhere but the reason why they didn't do it is because they uh, Marvel actually told them no, the studio, because they didn't want um, they didn't want like some kind of canonized version. Like they're like, oh, if you want to pretend that you're having a relationship with your character to the, with this other character, for sure. Uh, but we can't really make it where you do because of the canon of the Marvel Universe. They Marvel Universe is extremely strict on how they want their characters in a game to perform, you know, to act. So they don't want, you know, you can't just like romance and steal Peter Parker Spider-Man away from Mary Jane and suck his dick in the closet somewhere. Because then it'd be like, what? You know, like, do like, all I'm not saying it's, you know, but that's how Marvel is. Like, so it was the light. They, they didn't want their characters being put in situations where it would be uh, awkward or uncomfortable. Yeah. I don't know. You know what I mean? So, but yeah, yes, but you're yeah. absolutely right. Yeah, you you can pretend in your head that you fucked him in the pool late at night. <laughs> yeah, I like that. That makes you got his hot really vampire hard. juices all up in you. <laughs> night time says if Matthew Lillard's in Scream Seven, I'll forgive them. And you know what? That's that's I I know I know you're kidding around or whatever. But like honestly, all I have to do is pull a rabbit out of their hat. No one's gonna give a fuck. That's just the truth. The, the 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 average moviegoer who's not on Twitter, who doesn't follow Scream 7 religiously, who doesn't follow Scream religiously, all they have to worry about is does what they saw in Scream 6 connect with Scream 7? Will that be harder to do without Melissa Barrera, without Jenna Ortega? Absolutely. But if they can somehow tie it in using the other characters, it's going to be fucking fine for Spyglass. It just is. And they know that. They fucking know that. Just like if you brought Stu back, which they should do, they should fucking do it. <laughs> Um, and they will. And James I think I think if Def Campbell gets announced for Scream Seven, it's gonna it'll 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 overshadow any controversy that's going on there. I I, I just one hundred percent. Totes agree. Totes agree. As long as it's written correctly, it's gonna be just fine. Tristan Littles, nah, your dick's huge. Says if you guys could build your own, if you're over eighteen, if you guys could build your own universe with the class, he looks like he's this, over. In his profile pic, he looks like he's standing at an art like exhibit. These circus midgets could not handle their booze. If you guys could build your old universe with the classic slashers, Michael, Jason, Freddy, Leatherface, Ghostface, which portrayal of each would you choose based on the individual's performance? Oh, that's a loaded question, man. Um, well, like, I guess, I guess the, the, you know, time would make no difference. Like, it doesn't matter their age. Like, you just pick anybody. You know what I mean? Like, um, as far as Michael goes, I mean, I, I think the best that played him um, is... Um, I don't. I, I really don't want to say that because I mean, people are gonna be like, "Are you? Are you fucking there?" I I did like. Are the, you high? I did like the Tyler Main version of Rob's. Uh, you know, I I did like the intimidation and the way that he was and the how big he fucking was, because you could play around with the supernatural idea for sure. Um, you know, but he's so big, like you're like it makes sense if he's not supernatural, but he's taking bullets like left and right and he's fucking people up. So I I'm gonna just I'm gonna go with Tyler Main. I mean, I know it's sacrilege. But I would take Tyler Romains, um, Michael, Jason. I'm gonna take Kane Hodder, <clears throat> Freddie, obviously Robert England, because there's nobody. There's been nobody else, unfortunately. There's been nobody else, so you really can't pick anybody else. Leatherface, um, the guy uh, that they used in 2003. Mm -hmm. I don't remember his name. That guy was awesome. I think he would be a good one. And then Jim Berlinsky, something like that. Yeah, They're, and then goes. Uh, and as far as Jason goes, uh, 2009 Jason. I would use him. I, I loved him. Um, Oh, no, I'm sorry. I already said Kane Reboot. Hodder. I'll, I'll still get Kane Hodder. Um, okay. Yeah, I'll still go with Kane Hodder. Ghostface is uh, the, the guy that played him in the first one. 
I mean, that's it. Yeah, uh, I would I would actually go the ghost face from six because I do think that that was the most um, it was the most tactical ghost face you'd see. And that's why you saw in the trailers. It was like, I'm something different, you know, like where it was a cop for most of it. Um, I, w- I would go ghost face for the six for Michael. I would go just to not do the same thing that Jay went. I would either go the original or I would maybe go Halloween six, although he was a little pudgy in that one a little bit. I like it though. He so was I'd fucking, probably go that, that hallway scene. He's fucking badass. Yeah, he was badass. I, I would probably in the end go with the original, by the way, uh, at the end of the day, uh, Jason, I would go with, um, with the universe. I, I would go with part 3d. Uh, I would go with Jason. I'm you with- Derek Nears. Uh, I do love Derek Mears, but like, no, the traps in 3D, the fucking, I love, that's my, one of my favorite looks for sure. Uh, Freddie, uh, like Jay said, there's nowhere else you really can go. Jack Arrow Haley, go. say it, because you want to go, be different. Jack Arrow Haley, say <laughs> yeah. it. I want to be contrarian. Uh, no, I have seven minutes to play. Uh, yeah, pretty much very close to the same thing as Jay. Uh, Kenneth Young, damn you, Jay, you're breaking my heart here. Screw the Bills, let's go Dolphins, love you still. Hey, dude, I fucking like the hey, Dolphins. Kenneth, Their listen. coach is a badass. If there's a steady paycheck in it, I'll cheer on who have you say. <laughs> no, man. Listen, I, like it's not that I hate the Dolphins. I don't. But there's something about the Dolphins. I, I don't know what it is, man. I mean, yeah, does Dan Marino deserve a Super Bowl? Fuck yeah. That, I mean, he 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 definitely is one of the quarterbacks that deserve it. Does he deserve it the most? I would say Jim Kelly probably deserves it the most. I mean, you go to Super Bowl three times, four times in a fucking row and lose. That guy That's deserves it. It was it's his not fault. his fault. It was his fucking. It was Thurman Dan, Thomas's fault. You put Dan Marino in the Super Bowl three times. He's winning one of those. It was fights. Ray fucking Finkel. Laces out. <laughs> I asked. Uh, no, laces out, Dan. Maybe it's like maybe it's what that is, Kenneth. Is because I watched Ace Ventura so many times, and I got I thought Dan Marino was an asshole. He's like, that's none of your damn business, Dan, and I'll take it that you stay out of my business. <laughs> Isotoners. Ah, uh, you no, just dude, cost uh, me twenty five grand, Polly. Dude, if you get a chance to look up stuff on Mike McDaniel, the Dolphins coach, the guy's fucking hilarious. The first time he got hired as their coach, he showed up on the Pat McAfee show. Dude looked baked as fuck. He was just there like, yeah, I Probably just was. coach players. Yeah, I will say, I will say though, but the Dolphins, they got great colors. The Dolphins got great colors. That that aqua with white, that's good. That's good. I, like I, that. I do like their colors too. Yeah, as well. But like, no, dude, there was a video the other day where Dan Marino was there on the sidelines as like a like honor to honor dan marino or whatever he does, he does announcing doesn't he uh no no he did inside the nfl for a while yeah, that's what but, I thought, that, yeah. that was, but dude it's funny as fuck the dolphins coach uh mike mcdaniel was standing behind him they caught him vaping on the sideline by the way dude they they put he had his play sheet up he was like <sighs> but uh he seems like a cool ass dude but dan he was marino? standing behind dan marino no uh mike mcdaniel oh my okay they they were announced they were talking to Dan Marino or they were like put him up on jumbotron or whatever and Mike McDaniel McDaniel was behind him going hey Dan fuck your records Dan we're coming for those records Dan fuck you <laughs> you know he was saying that shit I love that guy so much dude makes you listen, want to root for the for the hey, Dolphins actually I, I will tell you this listen Kenneth if 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 the Dolphins get to a Super Bowl or the I just said that I said if Detroit got to a Super Bowl or the Dolphins I'll pull for them I don't yeah. want to I don't want Dolphins the same shot. Old. Well, I don't want the same old, same old team to win. You know what I mean? So if, yeah. if the Dolphins get there or or the Lions get there, I will definitely cheer either one of them on. I don't I, I don't think the Bills are gonna even you know, Mike was like, Oh, they're not even a, they're not even a they're they're going for a wild card, so they might not even get yeah. in. Uh my Super Bowl picks, by the way, I'm calling it right now. It's uh Dolphins 49ers. That is my Super Bowl choice of 2020. If I don't I say if happening. I don't stay on camera the fucking Eagles, then I won't have sex for a week. So it'll be the Eagles. <laughs> <laughs> April is a, she's from Pennsylvania, so she's like, oh, yeah, the they are not playing well. They're not doing good. Well, I think they didn't give up. Like, they're like, hey, guys, take it easy now. Just take it easy. It's not a championship game. We were already locked in for a bye week. We I think they're in way worse trouble than that, dude. They're in deep Well, they beat the, well, they didn't beat the fuck out of the Giants because when the, they played the Giants, they beat them 33 to, uh, what, 28 and I was, or 25. And I was like, it's the yeah. Giants, dude. The Giants suck this year. You guys barely came on like i don't know what you guys you let them run the score up on you and then they lost the seahawks but the seahawks are desperate because they have to win out yeah so it's gonna and i need the seahawks to lose to the to the steelers next week so green bay can get in grant ferguson jay now that you got a ps5 i recommend days gone it's an open world zombie survival rpg sucks that sony won't green light a sequel it's so under it yeah man well listen brandon i was married to an ex-ho that was like a zombie when she drank alcohol and I've already yeah, lived days true. gone. It was called wasting my life with such a fucking slut whore of King mountain. So I don't want to no, I know what you're talking about days gone. Um, 
And as far as like uh, it won't greenlight a sequel, I, I did it sell well because I, I thought it didn't sell very well. I don't know. That's I feel I thought that's why I didn't get a sequel to it. But I like the the zombie games. I, I do think they're cool. But yeah, I like right now I'm only waiting on Spider Man 2's new game plus and the DLC for because they're gonna have Carnage as a DLC, which is gonna be fucking awesome. Cletus, nice to meet you, Horny. Cletus. Possibly. Brian Max says, if you had to narrow down your favorite horror movies to a top three, what would it be? Why don't you shut up, Brian? Why are you going to be so hard on me, Why don't you return up the Mac once again? Um, Uh, There it is. Top three (laughs) horror movies of all time? Yeah. Fuck, dude. I don't know. Like, uh, We probably had multiple videos on that, but like right on the spot, right here, sitting on my lap, asking me for smoke, looking deep in my eyes. I will tell you, Brian, top three I can't tell you, Brian, because I don't fucking know. There's too many. I mean, obviously, gonna, the, the go-to is going to be Halloween, but everybody's going, well, you're fanboys. I'm obviously, you're going to go, well, I mean, you're half of your fanboys. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, top three top, horror movies that you can watch on a deserted island. You can only have yeah. three horror movies. Yeah. What would they be? Off the, off the cup, my number one's going to be Scream. My number two is going to be Halloween. My number three, and this is where it gets twisted. Uh, that's where it gets hard, because that's where... Fuck, um, that's where my heart burns too. <laughs> oh golly, my. yeah, no, I know. I say it's not the third one. It's the third one that's gonna uh, that's gonna fuck me. It's not the first two. Fuck. It's gonna be um. Oh, you do ah, yeah, that's the first time Mike had someone come in his mouth. That's the same one. <laughs> it's so sour. I didn't know you had. I didn't know you had sour balls before you fucking came. Why is it so sour? <laughs> Mike had a warhead. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna say the Exorcist. That's a good one. Uh, I would say uh, okay. Well, it's gonna be Halloween, obviously. Nightmare on Elm Street. Because by the way, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna assume that you're allowed to watch the entire series if you're if you you know. No, he said top three horror movies. Okay, so it's gonna be Halloween. Fuck! Everybody's gonna get mad about this. Halloween mm-hmm. four. Halloween four. Uh, number two is gonna be. Uh, oh. Ah, uh, 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 fuck, dude. Why do I do this? I don't know. Not really do do? Fuck. And then my third is. Gonna, <laughs> I know. I was like, "What the fuck is going on?" And my third. I like it. Is, I like it. My third is going to be um, scream. Fuck you. It's definitely scream. Fuck you and the host you wrote in on. Uh, Just say pumpkin head. Be, no, and my third one's going to be uh, uh, pumpkin head. <laughs> you can I'm like a little my wizard in your ear. asshole. I love pumpkin head, dude. <laughs> That's a good choice, man. That's a good fucking yeah, choice. Yeah, man. Tough that old woman dude. scares the shit out of me. Tough question. Tough question. It hurts I'm me in the dead. beans. I did steal that, by the way. I stole the exorcist from that. Sounded scary. I, I looked over the chat and I saw it. And I was like, that's actually. But yeah, but I wouldn't want to watch that shit. It's too scary. That I actually probably it. would be my top three. Nothing's going to top the exorcist in three. So it is probably I stole it's that. Probably, it's probably up there. Yeah, for sure. Uh, thank you. That sounds scary. I appreciate you for your contributions to tonight's show. Nighttime said Tyler Maine in the Halloween 2018 mask and jumpsuit. Ooh, yeah, dude. I, I'm I, look. look Ooh, uh, that's hot. James Hugh Courtney did a great job. I mean, there's no doubt about that. But yeah, if you get Tyler, the, the body size of that guy, and just the way that, just the way the intimidating yeah, way that he looked. I mean, fuck, dude. Yeah. I mean, I I think under the under the Blumhouse uh, logo directing him, I think he would have been. Uh, you know, way better than what we got with yeah. Halloween two with Rob Zombie. I have lice in my beard, director. But anyway, hundred yeah. percent. I got PJ. I got paid. No it's fucking not, way, dude. You went away. first last time. So you go first all the time. Back. back. I, okay. Well, we're, we're taking turns. I'll, I'll rock paper scissors you if you want to, but otherwise I'm just going. There's a delay on the goddamn cameras. You want to rock paper scissors? Because I'll do it. I mean, if you want to make it, pick a number. I'll do I'm, that I'm thinking you. one to ten. That doesn't work because it's your brain, <laughs> stupid head. I know. I was, I was like, you seven. big butthole. Like, oh, shit, it was seven. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can go pee first. You go. Go ahead. All right. I'll be right back. I'll be go ahead. Back. I didn't mean it. Why are you going? Are you serious? What <laughs> <No. laughs> is like ahead, the guy's like, I'm going to hold the door open for you. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Bam. Bitch went down. Sid, super bitch. Oh, golly. I did, I did have to, I actually did have to pee, though. That sucks. Um, when Jay gets back. Then I will pee. But then when I get back, we will review Rebel Moon and we will review the Iron Claw. We will bring it to you, the Iron Claw. Um, I would do it. Yeah, make a poll, see who goes first. You know, we piss our pants before we actually got the results in on that. You guys, come on, D Mitch. What'd you get? These guys get the kiddos for Christmas. Uh, I'm glad you asked. 
because that was part of the reason I didn't play the Robocop game is because we got a lot of furniture um, and there was, I put together a desk and put together and I got my wife a shelf and I had to put together another shelf. There was a lot of putting shit together. So I was actually, there was a lot of putting shit together and I'm not good with my hands uh, or putting things together at all. So it was a struggle. It was a deep, deep struggle. But uh, yeah, uh, blink tickets. We did get our kids blink tickets. The littlest one cried, like lost her mind, cried. It was like viral internet crying shit when she opened up the tickets because uh, she's never been to a concert. She's eight. Don't worry. We're going to bring earmuffs. She loves blink as much as I do. So that's going to be super exciting um, for her. Uh, can't fucking wait for that. What was your all's favorite Christmas present you got or gave? Uh, let me know that. That's what I want to know. Um, Brian Max said, what do you guys think of the Resident Evil games? I fell off after the fourth one. Jay loves them. Uh, he played them long time, hard into the night. We used to go over Jay's house and we had like just a PS2 and just watch him play uh, just for fun, just hanging out. Uh, but yeah, dude, I've always just been, a, I love the first few. I played the shit out of Nemesis on PlayStation. Um, and then I, I just, I'm not a puzzle dude. The puzzles always threw me off. I always had a love for him, but I never loved him enough to go through all the fucking trials and tribulations of him after the first few. So I stopped after nemesis. I do believe Uh ski bank. The butt God said Lamar will go into the playoffs with the one seed and MVP. But according to Michael J, he's going to try that in a small town and lose to Miami. Love y'all fins up. Try that in a small town. <laughs> uh I do think the Ravens are legit. Get that guy some receivers. And I'm not talking about old ass fucking OBJ. Get that motherfucker a goddamn Calvin Johnson. Get Lamar Jackson a fucking AJ Brown. Get him someone legit as fuck. And watch that dude take MVP and win the Super Bowl. Because he's that fucking good. But they're always dicking him around with the receivers. Uh, I, I believe that. The guy's fun as fuck to watch play. Bar! wonderful fucking human being says mike i love your leave the world behind review great discussion there one of the most thought-provoking artistic films i've seen in a while and i'm with you like is it a horror film i don't know like so i, I was torn on including that with all that stuff but i really enjoyed leave the world behind i thought it was the thoughtful side of a post-apocalyptic or a, an apocalyptic movie and i like how they slow drawed out like the events almost like cabin the woods did not cabin the woods um the M. Night Shyamalan film a cabin in the woods. I think that's the name of the movie. I don't know. I've had a few surveys, but yeah, no, I really enjoy leave the world behind. Great. I love Ethan Hawke. Julie Roberts is great in that movie. Marsha Hanna Ali was great in that movie. Great acting. If they didn't tie into all the political stuff, I think people would have enjoyed that a whole lot more. You know what I mean? That was a decent movie. The end upset people, but I thought it was an ode to fucking physical media and, and like art as a salve. You know what I'm saying? So I thought that was really cool how they did that. Because trust me, think about this. Like, how crazy is it to think the end of the world? When the end of the world comes, we always think MREs, food, canned goods, water, all that shit, the most important, obviously. But if you're stuck in a bunker or in a basement, how important is that giant stack of fucking DVDs and that DVD player going to be to you? You know what I'm saying? Like, when it comes to just like going crazy and having nothing to watch or to do for 24 hours a day. Our physical media is going to fucking matter. And I thought what that movie said about that was really fucking cool. And I thought it gave weight and like importance to the art and the shit that we watch and listen to in a cool way. So I really enjoyed that. I think the movies, I think that aspect of the movie is super fucking underrated. You know, I do. I fucking do. JT Customs got a PS5 and a No Way Home battle, Final Battle set. Damn, JT, that's fucking awesome. Good for you, dude. Good for you. Zay Flowers is legit Wild Willy, but the dude pisses me off because I had him in a game I needed him for, and the motherfucker, they didn't throw the ball to him once. So now I'm like sketchy as shit. He's on my bench in my pay league, and I'm torn. Is it him or Tyler Lockett? I don't know who to start. I'm, I'm, it's going to cost me my season or win it either way at the end of the day, my good man. Um, oh, me. Uh... Tristan, hey Mike, have you seen Enemy with Jake Gyllenhaal? What'd you think? I did see that one. I think I reviewed it. I think it was one of those movies that I reviewed when I was working third shift uh, and doing the channel at the same time. And it's funny, you guys. I used to, when I was in my cubicle, 
and I worked third shift. Nobody was in the building, so I could I would bring my camera and view it. And I used to print out the movie posters and poke them on. You could see them. I think I may have done that back then. But Enemy with Jake Gyllenhaal, I thought it was good, man. I love Jake Gyllenhaal. I think he's one of the best actors out there. I think that movie was a fucking trip. It's definitely a movie that's fun to talk about afterwards to try to figure it out. But there's also this aspect of why don't you stop trying to be so fucking high flutin and just make a goddamn regular movie that pisses I love you Maggie. off a little bit too. <laughs> but uh good movie nonetheless i just i wish they would play it a little bit more straightforward i think it could have been a better film but it's still good still good tristan jack yeah, i gotta pee now <laughs> okay. shut up okay dick you fucking dick where are you at nowhere i finished <laughs> oh you're done mouth so we is live okay <sighs> okay good let me get down here into the live sections so we can talk. Fuck! Okay, there we go. Good stuff. All right, guys. Anyway, let's talk about things. How are you guys doing? You guys doing good? Doing sexy? All right, good. How are we on breadsticks? <clears throat> hey, Thunderwolf. You, yeah, dude. I will tell you what. I've been addicted to cyberpunk. Incredible, and str so strange because I never thought that game when I first I, I remember buying it at launch and thought it I was like what a fucking failure of a game like overhyped over sensationalized everything about it and then playing it now so good so fucking good dude Will Arwine says Jay Hogan movie is dead for reals is it really hey Barb uh, I thought it was still I thought it was uh, going still. What the fuck is going on? Chris Hemsworth ate all that turkey to get in lean protein shape. Bullshit. Tristan Little says, Jay, why didn't you want to talk? Why didn't you want to see talk to me? I it's not, I did not want to see it. I just didn't get around to go see it because I was fucking lazy asshole, I guess. But I, I mean, it's I mean, is there a strength? I mean, I watch it. I don't give a shit. You know what we could do one day? We could do a comment. I've never seen it. We could do a commentary on it. That'd be fun because I've never seen that shit. That shit looks scary though. Uh, what's up, Curse? What's up, Merlin? Uh, Will says the rights got sold to another studio. Oh, okay. So it's not like it's not a, it's not like officially dead though, right? So they're gonna they could possibly still make it. Oh, they shelled it. Fuck, dude, that sucks, asshole. Um, Merlin says, uh, "What's the best toy you ever got?" Um, uh, actually, um, hold on, I'll show it to you guys. My favorite. This is my favorite. My absolute favorite thing. Oh, hold on one second. Now, it's a little, damn, it's dusty. Fuck, shit. <laughs> uh, hold on. Um, I guess it adds to the flavor. Um, I, I I bought this. I Egon Spangler is my favorite Ghostbuster of all time. Okay. Uh, this was made by, I think it's Hasbro, Hasbro Pulse. I got this like a couple of years ago. It's the um, Egon Spangler fucking headphones. It's the Egon Spangler um, uh, Neutrona one that they, they showcased in um, uh, Afterlife. Uh, you got the wood. I, I don't, I'm not a fan of the wooden grip. It's cool, but they got the tape. And then, dude, it's always, I've always wanted one. It makes sounds. And you got to like fucking like activate, like there's certain buttons on it. And then you go, what was the? Oh, you gotta, you gotta, fucking shit. Oh, what? And then, that, it's so fucking hot, dude. That shit's hot. And then you can, see, you see, you see? And then there's a, you can, you can switch to, uh, how do you do that? Is it that button? No. I don't know. There's a way you can switch to like where it makes like the slime blower sounds and like for, how the fuck? Dude, how cool is that though? How badass is that? Look at that shit. Yeah, we ooh, we both have oh, and then it goes off on its own. Like see if you don't fuck with it. Yeah. <laughs> it's my favorite. 
uh that was how much was it it was uh i think it was 100 it was a hundred something. I don't remember. I got it at launch. It, like right now, if you go on eBay, it's probably like four or five hundred dollars, probably. But it's a, it's a cool fucking dude. It's it's so bad. I love this. This is my favorite one. My absolute favorite. And then they uh, Hasbro Pulse actually they were coming out with a the, a proton pack, um, and I'm I think it was it was way more than I wanted to spend, so I didn't get that. But yeah, it was an Egon Spangler thing and Harold Ramis as far as like. You know his portrayal of ego. I mean, uh, Sean says poo poo or pee pee. Like, what do I enjoy more? It would be a poo poo. A pee pee is fun and it's exciting in its own way and it does relieve the bladder. But a poo poo is just incredibly yeah, engrossing, and you can catch up on like news stories and things like that. Uh, <laughs> Danny Rolling Ghostface says, "What do you call it when Mrs. Claus wears tight pants?" A Mrs. <laughs> yeah, dude, fucking show that shit off. Merlin, I said, "Is it better than the Spirit Halloween one?" I didn't get the Spirit of Halloween one, so I don't know. I can't do a comparison on it, but um, it's. I mean, it, they did a lot of work for it. I mean, they they put a lot of time and effort into it, so maybe. Uh, Zeke TV says, do you think Ghostbusters 2 is underrated? Absolutely do. I never got the hate for Ghostbusters 2 at all. Like, I don't understand. Like, I remember, like, as a kid, I always thought Ghostbusters 2 was a real, I mean, it wasn't as good as the first Ghostbusters. A absolutely no way in shape or form was it. But was it, uh, did it have a, a great follow? -up? Yeah. I mean, I, like, if to me, Ghostbusters 1 is a 10 and then Ghostbusters 2 at probably a 9 or 9 5. And, and, and plus, I like, and I know it's blasphemous, blasphemous. Okay, blasphemous uh, to say, but I think the Bobby Brown on her own is is cooler is a cooler theme than the Ray Parker Jr. Even though the Ray Parker Jr. Ghostbuster song is absolutely without a doubt iconic in every shape or form, but the 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 Bobby Brown on her own is there's something about it that's so cool that I, I just love that version better. But yeah, Ghostbuster Two is totally underrated, a hundred fucking percent, dude. Hundred fucking percent. Jay, are you excited about the new GTA trailer? Yeah, I, I just hope to be alive <laughs> when the game finally comes out. I know it's I, they put a release date on it, but I don't know. You know, there's always like setbacks and things like that. And I, I did watch the trailer, the the, the uh, I didn't, no gameplay, but the actual cinematic trailer. I liked it, um, but I am excited to see what the actual gameplay is going to be. Action says, uh, Jay, do you have CDs or cassettes? I mean, both. Like, I actually found an old. I I like. Um, Two three weeks ago, I I was like going through some old stuff, and I found I had a Rocky Four on cassette. Pretty good shit right there. But uh, I also have a Rocky Four CD. I I have both. Tomo Gato says, "Jay, someone sold the source code for GTA. You can't make this up." Oh, they did. Holy shit! <laughs> there's so many. There's so many fucking crazy shits going on with with like games anymore. Like. The Insomniac thing was fucking crazy. And now the GTA 5 source co code. Oh, my God. Yeah, dude. Those those leakers are fucking crazy, man. Uh, did you get the Super Chats while I was good? No, I didn't know where we were. Okay. Um, I got the one where uh, I got... Um, oh, shit. No, I missed it. Okay, I missed it, too. I got, the, uh, I got Tristan Little. Okay. Um, and then so, Daniel Torres says top three Sandler movies of all time. Yeah, sorry guys. I, I was, no, they wanted, they wanted to show off my favorite toys. So I was showing them the Egon Spangler Dutrana one. Oh. Did I ever show you this? Yeah, no, I've seen this. Oh, okay. it's fucking dope. Yeah. I sometimes wear it in the bedroom them. with me and Mike fuck with grease, but, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's I was like, I'm going to bust that ass. Uh, I've no, uh, it. top three Sandler movies. Uh, it will be, uh, Billy Madison, happy Gilmore. And the last one will be click. Oh, click the one other click. Uh, Billy Madison, Happy Gilmore as well, and then I would say, oh God, I want to cheat so bad and look up Adam Sandler films, but I can't. Uh, Zohan, Zohan there. was really good too. Don't mess with Zohan. Zohan was great. Um, I will throw in a dramatic performance by him, and I will say, um, Uncut Gems because he was really. Fun I thought you were gonna say movie. Spanglish. Spanglish was good too. Uh, yeah, I never saw Spanglish, but Uncut Gems was fucking dope as shit. It's like I'm a gum. <laughs> You know, that was a great movie. I, I I never and like people like that love Little Nicky. I don't know. I question things when you say that. Like my wife loves Qu Little Nicky. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. What the I'm fuck are you of, doing? Not a fan of Little Nicky. Um, Waterboy's good I, though. Yeah, I I'm not a fan of Waterboy that much either myself personally. Um, Medulla oblongata. Austin. 
says, my brother Dylan wants to know if either of you know the correlation between Willy Wonka and Snowpiercer. Apparently Wonka did it. Uh, I did. I know. No, I know oh yeah. Do Snowpiercer. We, we reviewed that. Uh, the one with uh, Chris uh, Evans, I think. Yeah. Yeah. There is, there was like a weird uh, theory going around about the snow, like about that movie tying into Willy Wonka. Um, I can't remember the exact details of it, but um, it was, I, I remember being intrigued by, it, but I just don't remember anything about it, but I don't know. It could be, I mean, do Willy Wonka is like truly to me, I think what you should do is if you're going to like the Gene Wilder, Willy Wonka movie is forever the best Willy Wonka movie. It just is. But if you're going to remake yep. Willy Wonka, what you should do, just go just have your balls and dick on display and say fuck you hollywood and just make a horror movie yeah. make a horror movie and make willy wonka the psychotic uh guy that runs the chocolate factory and like grabs people and makes chocolate out of their buttholes <laughs> i don't know and then sells it to the public yeah. and he's like a cannibal just do yeah. that like because willy wonka is essentially a horror movie yeah uh, i i agree with that wholeheartedly i don't understand the point of doing the new wonka it was fun actually and this leads us to our next thing on uh christmas day uh went with uh with kate's family um and her brother's in for the marines or whatever we went on christmas day to see a movie which was cool uh dude uh, uh me and a couple of them went to go see iron claw and a couple of them went to go see wonka mm. uh, i have to replace my battery before it dies so um i'll be back in one second i have to just switch my battery out. well don't leave us hanging here my, uh, I, God, so smelly, smelly dicks. You want to see my butthole? Wonka makes people into candy bars. Yeah, dude, that's what I'm talking about. Like, make it a fucking horror movie, dude. Insane. Uh, epic movie that they did. I don't know. Uh, you, you know what, Michael? I swear to God, guys, like, I think he would be a good... What if they cast Crispin Glover as Willy Wonka in a horror movie version of it? Like, like now. That. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I as that shit. I, like Crispin Glover, like, not like when he was young. Yeah, of course, Crispin Glover is a great actor, but like, as he is now, where he's kind of weird, I either have Crispin Glover as Willy Wonka in a horror version of the movie or the story, or go fucking nuts, dude. Go crazy. Go ahead and have your dick unrolled and let it be seen by the, the Americas. Uh, have a uh, Jeff Goldblum. Yeah, something like Walker. that would be fun. I'm into that. I'm into that idea. Yeah, dude. 100. Or Nicholas Cage, like dude. It. Let that motherfucker dance. Yeah, dude. <laughs> but yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in. I'm in, dude. Ski bake the pop god. Have you ever heard of one of them nasty poos when you have to completely undress and uncomfortably sweat your life away <laughs> while you wreck your yeah, sphincter? Dude. Yeah, dude. I, I I've yeah. had those like where they've been so painful, dude. Like, well, you're sitting there and you have like your underwear and your pants like at your ankles, and then you just like. You, you like unconsciously even do it. You like start stepping out of it and pulling off everything. And you're just, uh, and then finally you pull your shirt off and you're just sitting there, your fat body in the reflection of the mirror that's sitting by you. And you're just yeah. shitting because it just hurts and you just want to get it out. And it's like, it's yeah. like, it's like, I feel like it's the same feeling that you would have giving birth to an alien, like a chest burster, but it's coming <laughs> from your butthole. Like, you know how the bad, like now that would hurt. The closest thing I ever had to that was when we ate that Pocky chip on air and then Jay left and the night was over and then I woke up at 3 a.m. and I was like, oh, oh yeah. God. <laughs> that was and I ran to the bathroom and, and I, I stripped down butt naked and I was holding a trash can, butt naked, shitting and <laughs> about to throw up. And I thought I was going to actually die. Like I actually thought about like calling my wife out of her room. to be Like, you know why that makes me laugh? Is because it reminded me of Rocky four when he's like, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not even thinking of Rocky five when he's like dying in the shower. He's like, Adrian, you gotta get it. <laughs> <laughs> After he gets his ass beat What's by, your Ivan, socks? by Ivan Drago, and he's like, "Yeah, oh, get Adrian, Polly, get Adrian." Yeah, it that's was like I, that, dude. That's why I like made me laugh because I could just <laughs> think you said it, thinking of shit. You're like, I gotta call, my, I gotta go to the hospital. I gotta go dude, hospital. Was, like, I'm butt naked. Like, what if I, what if I collapse on the toilet like this? Yeah, it was like that. It was that. It was that kind of like detrimental moments in my life. Daniel Flores, can you tell my wife how much I love her in Arnold Schwarzenegger's voice, please? Thanks. I'm terrible at the Arnold voice. Do you want to give it a go? No, I, I'd rather not. <laughs> what the I fuck say, I mean, we don't have any soundboards here. <laughs> <laughs> I say, I say, I say, fuck, I'm going to try, dude. Uh, he loves you very much, Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like fucking Matt Albert. <laughs> yeah. Jamie yeah. loves Dream you. Up. I'm not a cybernetic organism, but Daniel's love for you is. <laughs> I can't. I got. I've never you, been able to do oral you dude, as much like, I fucking love them. I know. No, it's not bad, but you do sound like one of those guys, like you know, with those HBO, like <laughs> you know, it's like with that one shit with uh, Ben Affleck when he was on steroids. 
You sound like the guy that was talking in steroids at that HBO. You're not really Arnold, but you're supposed to be Arnold, like a poor parody of it. And it's like some fucking German guy that can barely speak English. Yeah. I, 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 I was trying to love another woman. And he said, put that cooking down. Yeah, I, I can't do it at all. It's terrible. Get to the chopper. Oh. I can't, get to the chopper. I can't do it. I'm sorry for I was elected to lead, not to read. Um, Tim with the big dick. Hey, Tim, man. Swing, swing, swing from the tables of Tim's dick is bigger than Courtney Love. Hi, sure. boys. So, Rebel hey, Moon, man. what was I watching? A Star Wars prequel that me and my sister stood in line for for hours in 1999, a 300 side story. But I want to see the extended cut so fucking bad. Hope you guys in the chat. Hey, awesome. thanks, Thank Tim. you. Yeah, Tim. You're, you're actually absolutely right, dude. Uh, and I actually, um, I, I never normally do this at all. Uh, I, I made notes for the movie because I was so, there were so many tropes that they were trying to implement into the movie that I'm like, I was fucking, if you, I was, I was trying to keep up. I'm like, so first it was like Star Wars, then there was D&D, then there was fucking Lord of the Rings. Like, and I feel like at two hours and five minutes, like it was just too short of time. Like he was trying to mash all of this shit in there. Like mm. when they would go planet to planet to recruit people, it was like a fucking side quest in an RPG, like in Skyrim. Yeah. It took two seconds. Are you like, I want you to talk about rebellion fight? Okay, I'm gonna go <laughs> kill this spider lady. I'll well, be on your team. Let's let's let Tim. Uh, may angels lead you in. Let's let Tim, since he was so generous as he always is, lead us into the actual review for Rebel Moon. So this is our review of Zack Snyder's Rebel Moon, brought to you by the good man that is Tim. Not good, Tim. Um, I hope you had a good ho holiday, man. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, okay, so uh, it's not okay, it's not too much. <laughs> it's not too much. Uh, I will, I mean, here's the thing it was not it. too much. It it's was not, not too much. It's not <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, here's, here's what I think it's definitely not a 25% rotten that rotten to me. The critics gave it, it's not that bad. Agreed. It's a solid, like, I, I actually agree with the user score. On uh, Rotten Tomatoes, which is at like a 66% fresh, which probably puts it, in my opinion, about like a 6.0 to a 6.5 movie. And that's probably where I'm going to fall. I'm probably going to give it a 6.5. It's visually great. I think it's, I mean, it's got all the, you know, everything Zack Snyder that makes Zack Snyder Zack Snyder. It's got the slow-mo. It's got the cool shots. It's got the the great, you know, cinematography. It looks great. It It, it is severely lacking in a lot of character development a lot of like i mean you, some of these charlie hunnam shows up for like five seconds and the motherfucker gets like a, a bullet and he's like oh okay it was nice to see you jack sparrow not jack sparrow like because <laughs> like it, like listen by like, the way you guys don't have to leave this is spoiler free you don't have to leave we're gonna yeah i'm not gonna tell you what happens but i i will yeah. say here's the here's what i this is literally as i was watching it i wrote this note down just so like and this is not a spoiler this is literally the beginning of the movie just to you know it the set you in into the movie like as the setting king and queen of I mother I like men uh, yeah and and love and men since 76 <laughs> I want to stop for dick Peanut but butter, that was that was all in the beginning of the, but here's this king and queen yeah. of mother world die conquered planets whisper of revolution a senator declares himself a regent orders a brutal commander to the outskirts of the mother world's conquered territories or planets to crush any mention of rebellion. And then I put in parentheses, essentially star Wars, the empire fighting against the rebellion. Yeah. It's literally the same fucking story, except there's more like of a D and D aspect to it, you know, King and queen. And there's a little bit of magic going on, but uh, you know, look, like Cora, she's, she's hot. Okay. She's pretty, I like that girl. She's pretty hot. Cora is a farm girl that gets caught up in this rebellion. She's very much like a Luke Skywalker in Tatooine. She's on a fucking planet. She's a farm girl. The, I the planet's it, literally in yeah, the back, just yeah, like it. I thought it was, and then I thought I was like, oh, we're at least in the solar, we're in our solar system. I was like, that's fucking Jupiter. And it turns mm -hmm. out you're in like, you're in the, the you know, the Clothiath fucking system. I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> I thought the mother world was Earth. I was like, okay, so it's going to be grounded in that, and it's not. Uh, and then um, Adderall. Here's the cool thing. Admiral, Admiral. Atticus, who's the main bad guy in this, he's the commander of Buster the... Screen. Huh? But screen, Ed Screen, Ed Screen. Yeah, okay. he's great. He looks like he Killian Murphy's brother. Uh, he does. But it's the haircut. Yeah, dude. Well, he is, I liked him a lot. And the thing about him, though, he reminded me, there's a scene, and again, I don't want to spoil it for you guys. Like, the beginning of this movie is very good. Very, very good. Because they set up, like, in a glorious bastards kind of moment. When Atticus comes down from the, in, the dreadnought, and he's he's talking to the villagers uh and i can't remember the the, the leader the father of the village he look, he's the guy from uh he's yellow jacket from ant-man 
he looks like Obadiah Stane. So I couldn't remember who he was. <laughs> yeah, he does. But, uh, yeah, but uh, <clears throat> he reminded me, dude, so much of um, in the very beginning of um, Inglorious Bastard with Christoph Waltz. He had the same kind yeah, of menacing dude, that's attitude. Yeah, the exact same fucking thing yeah, I thought I was going to say. Yeah, it's the same kind yeah. of menacing attitude. You didn't know when he was going to snap and that calm before the storm. And it was, he was, dude, that guy is a fucking great actor. But yeah, but dude, it's so cool. Like this movie goes. <clears throat> This movie goes like from an extreme awesome point. It's like, oh man, it's so cool. It's so original. I love where I'm at. I mean, there's a lot, there's some tropes going on that's familiar, but we'll see where it goes. Because then you get, because when you get in that glorious bastards film, like, man, this is going to get deep. And then it just, and then it just like immediately buckle up your dicks or a roller coaster ride's about to happen. And then yeah. it just, boom, it like it, it, it charges as fast as it can to get to the finish. Like, yeah. like immediately. Dude, I don't know, that- man. I have the exact exact same feeling. I, I started Rebel Moon and I'm sitting here and I'm watching it. And I've seen all the all, all the critic stuff and I maintain everything I said about that, even though I, I wasn't a huge the hugest fan of the movie. But like the opening of the movie, the first thing you get is, oh my god, this is so fucking Star Wars. Like this mm-hmm. is so Star Wars. You can see that this is a script he wrote for Star Wars, but yeah. then decided to use it for his own thing. So that sets the tone. But it's like Vanilla Ice saying that he's like, I didn't lift that music. My goes ding 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 ding. ding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, which I'm fine yeah. with. I'm fine yeah. with that's that right, cool. Yeah, that's let's your see inspiration. Zach's... That's cool. Yeah, let's see Zack Snyder's version of this. Because if it was an original Star Wars story, it would be basically the same thing, yeah. right? But um that opening, dude, because they're all they're all these like sort of I don't want to call them poor, but like these these people, very simple life people who yeah. are living off the crops and the land, and they're on their planet when that ship comes in. And the ship comes from the sky, and it's like the Death Star. Basically, it's literally the Death Star. Yeah, starts Star Star, floating Star in their atmosphere. Yeah. yeah, starts floating in their atmosphere. You're like, that looks dope as shit. This mm-hmm. story is cool as fuck. I like these people. I like these actors. I like the ship coming in. And when Ed Screen comes in, and by the way, I thought Ed Screen was sort of had the same problem that Joel Kinnaman had as RoboCop, whereas in in Deadpool, whereas he so- kind of seemed like sort of like, oh, is that him? This- is that is that age? Is that same dude yeah ajax same bad guy yeah same, You're same bad guy. For the detergent <laughs> yeah exactly oh, it, i didn't it, know that yeah in deadpool i thought he was a good bad guy but i also thought he suffered from joel kinnaman syndrome which he seemed sort of like almost ghetto in a way like this dude you'd run into an isap when you were in middle school uh yeah. had that thing and Ooh, this goodness though yeah, and this, he's so much, this is the best Ed, Ed, Ed screen you, you've ever seen. He was so good, and I thought the exact same thing you did, dude. When he lands, and it's so awkward and uncomfortable, and the sexual tension, not sexual, but like angry You could angry just cut tension. that shit with a dildo. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, it dude. was crazy, and when he's talking to them, and then he gives his, it's literally, like you said, it's Christoph Waltz in the opening to and Glorious Bastards, mm-hmm. the way he's talking to these people. Scary. And I'm like, oh my god, we're about to watch a fucking masterpiece. I thought this it was going to be like a that. great yeah. Zack Snyder film. And then there's an action scene that happens when a character decides to do the right thing because a bunch of the uh, the bad guys are going to do something bad. And there's an action scene that happens, and that was dope as shit. And then they introduce this robot, who I guess you would say is the R2-D2 C-3PO of the thing. Yeah. And that voice by Anthony fucking Hopkins, Amazing. by the way. Yeah. Amazing voice actor. And that robot story is so fucking cool. I way love better. what they're doing with the robot. I love what they're doing with the bad guy. I love what they're doing with this planet. And then... The movie decides to do this journey thing. We're like, well, basically, we're gonna go recruit our team to help us. Yeah, it's, and well, then the movie just fucking nosedives. Well, it's not. Well, it, yeah, because it, it's it feels like it's trying to rush to the end as quick as it can get there without mm-hmm. worrying about much development. It wants to show a lot of visuals, which, by the way, they look great. It, visually, it looks great, uh, and a lot of times it's stunning. Uh, the way yeah. that he shoots uh, these scenes, they're great. Love it. But yeah, it looks amazing. But. Like it's so like it's faster than me in the bed with my wife, it, like it just it's, it's, like, it's in and out. That's how that was too long. No, no, was no dude. Long. Like when they go to the planet and recruit, it's like five seconds. It's like a, a, like in an RPG, like in Skyrim right. or some shit like that. You're like, oh, you got to go here and recruit the wizard, and you got to do one little quest, <laughs> and then you're and then the wizard won't even question about what's going on or what you're there for. I'm like, yeah, uh, I'll join. I'll uh, join. Dude, I- I would 100% agree with you because, like, there were scenes where like, they go up to something. There's like, there's no way you're going to get him on your side. He goes, okay, I'll do it. And they're like, all right, on to the next well, one. Like, um, but, like, he, but it still took so fucking long well, like, because, to get yeah, to because, that point. Well, listen, Mike, subspace travel it takes a while, okay? Okay, we don't all have light speed. <laughs> but, no, I also uh, – King Titus, which is played uh, – the black guy that plays him is the same guy from Gladiator. He goes, not yet. No, I love that fucking guy, dude. That guy yeah. is so good. He has got so many shit lines in this movie. They are mm-hmm. shit lines. 
and that's another that generally speaking uh it wasn't like after um the uh, uh um was this, not titus um atticus leaves and then the there's a there's a pretty gnarly moment that happens in the movie i, I don't want to give that away but when they go there they they have to go to a cantina and it's very much like most Eisley from star wars exactly yeah. i mean there's aliens they got to get information Dude, there's like a han solo dinner? that they meet which is Ch Ch uh, charlie uh hunnam um uh, the thing about that, that dude the bartender the bartender how dope was that bartender i know i love no, I, I think it was that great was cool. what, the thing is i like i then i was like all right there's they're obviously borrowing heavily from star wars obviously yeah but there was also the inglorious bastards tie into it then i was like okay maybe it's more like the, the the roman empire back in the day when you had the roman emperor and then you had these territories spread out and 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 the town was kind of like a roman empire town and it was cool i mean i i was really enjoying it like the, the first 45 minutes the movie 50 minutes i maybe 35 45 minutes it was good i really enjoyed what i was watching Same. but then again like it was like i don't know what's not I, I don't know it has to be that he was just shoving so much like cum in your mouth at once and you couldn't breathe and you <laughs> couldn't it swallow it all at once it, no it was it was really just an over the top amount like why didn't you just here my brother actually agreed he came he watched the same thing uh he came over day when we talked about it and i and he is agreeing Take the first part of the movie and use that first, the two hours that you have and use that for character development, character mm -hmm. creation, you know, not character, character development, character relationships, deepen that a little bit more. And then in the second part that comes out later this year, then you can have all the, the crazy visual um, over the top shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like this was just getting there and getting done with it as quick as I, as it could. And, um, yeah, dude, I like, listen, um, yeah, I, I literally put it down. The last thing I put down was like entire recruiting of fighters by Cora and Gunner is like a D and D campaign set in space. Yeah. Like if you had a din dungeon master, it was like, all right, we're gonna have a fucking D and D campaign set in space. Uh, you got to go to this planet and get the wizard, or you got to go here and get the swordswoman. Yeah, <laughs> or it's like it's like it's like in Halloween Kills when Tommy just goes to a gas station. He's like, Michael Myers is here. If you yeah. want to fight him, get in my van. And two <laughs> like, things. It's like I that. I don't like Gunner. I think Gunner's a big fucking pussy. I don't like him at all. I think he's a he's a waste of space in the and I mean, you know, maybe he grows in the second part of the movie. I didn't like him at all. Um, mm -hmm. I just didn't like that. Yeah, I'm just a simple farmer. Like he gets tired after a while. And then, yeah. you know, I would have I like much that actor though. He's from Yellowstone. Yeah, he's great. He's no, he's actor. a great actor. I just didn't like his character. I would have much rather they have done uh, they had just taken him out and had Gunner uh not Gunner, um Charlie Hunnam be that guy. Like that makes more sense. Like Charlie Hunnam yeah. is like a fucking out there. I do things for myself, Jack Sparrow type of guy. Like and just or you know what? Be even fucking crazier. And have the POV from the robot that we only got to meet for a minute. Love Imagine the, the movie only replacing the, the. It's the robot's journey. Yeah, I would have fucking loved to watch that. Anthony Hopkins vo voicing that. Yeah, robot. Yeah, a better the, version of Chappie. Dude, I experienced the same exact movie you did. I was so the first 30, 40 minutes, I was like, this movie's gonna be fucking classic. I don't know what people are talking about. And then they went on this journey to recruit people to help the resistance yeah. or whatever. And I just completely uh it just got really boring to me at that point. And there's some cool stuff. They literally rip off how to train your dragon mm -hmm. by a thousand. And at first, when I saw that creature, I was like, That's no. some Disney ass shit, yeah. Yeah, but then when they did the whole like flying scene, I was like, Jesus Christ, like, you know that, come that, on. That, let's go. That, that, Let's get I, to it already. This Fuck. is coming from a guy that loves John Carter. I fucking like John Carter. Yeah. And if this movie got corny when that the, the Griffin thing on that fucking planet, that was fucking corny as shit, dude. Like yeah. when he was like, I, I can I both of you and me on shackles. Yeah. And I yeah. Like nah, it didn't oh, work. Like, fucking Lord, And then they dude. did that over dramatic thing when he was riding yeah. it. Like, and then also and then the final battle takes place, and it looks cool, like it all looks cool or whatever. But this movie suffers as much as any other movie suffers from um part one syndrome it really does suffer from it because like we know that you're just setting up the stuff for the actual war for the actual stuff to take place uh so all that being said the movie really runs into a wall when they go on their journey um it's cool visuals cool characters i will i will honestly say that like some of the characters they created uh whether it's in the bar with the bartender and the way they looked and the feeling the characters have no depth right way cooler than what star wars current star wars is doing with oh, when yeah. they try to create oh, yeah. new characters that, yeah. so he had the right idea and he could have created better visuals and, and characters than star wars does as of late but 
the story just didn't have enough like driving it and it felt like a part one that was trying to get to a part two so the stakes yep. just felt really nulled because you know that we're going to part two immediately and it was too long probably could have cut 30 40 minutes out of this movie and it would have been on fire like it would have been really great yep. um but well, at the end of the day Zack snyder's fucking visuals so good they notch. would be perfect they would the, the Zack Snyder visuals would be perfect for a, a Star Wars film. Uh, the fight scenes were great. The action scenes were amazing. It just didn't have enough fucking new to really stand out. It, it felt like it was doing something we've seen a thousand movies do. You know, you know, what, you know what, at the end of the day, what it reminded me of, especially at the end of the film, uh, when they have the final climactic battle, uh, the whole thing, and I was like, "What?" And I and I was watching, and I was like, "What is this reminding of? What is it that's like itching my brain and my ball sack?" And I realized what it was. This is essentially Rogue One from Wish.com. Got Rogue it. One, yeah. and Rogue One is the same type. I mean, Rogue One literally has a swordsman that's blind. They go and get a swordswoman from a. You know, there's, it's it's literally the same movie. Not exactly, but there's a lot. I mean, I feel like it's more heavily inspired by Rogue One than it is even the original Star Wars movie. But and Rogue you know, One had boring ass parts too. Yeah, I did, but Rogue One was so good. And I mean, I could see why. I mean, of course, I mean, I'm not blaming. I mean, I love Snyder, dude. Don't get me fucking wrong. Like, I love Snyder. I think Snyder is a, a very underappreciated director, and I think he gets shit on for no good reason a lot of the times. Agreed. But in this instance, I think, yeah, he made some blunders, and I think that he showed his hand a bit too much where his inspirations were coming from. And that, you know, it is what it is. I mean, it happens. But yeah. I, I think that I, I am going to watch the second part of the film, and I will Me say too. overall, I will say overall, I liked the movie. I won't ever watch the movie again. That's right. the feeling I got. I watch, I, I got my feel. I'm done. I don't want to watch it again. And I won't ever. Mm -hmm. When I watch the second part, I'm done with it. Because I think there's yeah. a lot of mistakes that happen. But now, if you were to ask me, do I still think that Zack Snyder would have done amazing with the Star Wars? Fuck yeah, dude. If yeah. he had been given the license and the money that mm -hmm. Disney, Lucasfilms, all that would have given him, I think he would have created an incredible Star Wars story. An incredible yeah. Star Wars story. Because I think that the best that's not, and I said this earlier in the in, in the in the podcast or in the in the in the stream here, Zack Snyder works the best in a parameter. His, some of his best movies have always been in parameters. BVS, in our opinion, Man of Steel, 300, Watchmen, all the Dawn of the Dead. Those are movies that are that are in a already an established universe. They're rules. They're things that he has to work within, and he does a great mm -hmm. job. So if he worked in a Star Wars universe, I think it would have been incredible. This is an original piece of proper, like an original thing for him. And he also wrote this, by the way, with the guy that did Army of Darkness, the writing. So... Mm -hmm. Yeah, my hat my hat's off to him to try to do something original in a space movie because it's like yeah. everything's been done. But yeah. man, there, there's some of this stuff that was just like real, like you got here, you got from point A to point B to show off a cool visual. Yeah, and it's and my rating for this is a six uh, out of ten. It's right there with you. Like I enjoyed it for what it was. I fucking love the first forty minutes really struggled to get through the second half and by the third act i was like that's cool i like i could watch it's just like the superman zod fight at the end of man of steel i could yeah. watch it like it's enjoying enjoyable to watch uh although there was that was a lot better but like uh i can enjoy it because the visuals are so good and that's underrated like nobody else knows how to make visuals the way Zack snyder does Great, the yeah. way he does it that's underrated uh i feel like the movie is unfairly shit on uh, I feel like yeah. the critics are absolutely insane the way they, they dunk on this movie and shit on it. Is it perfect? No. Is it great? No. But it's enjoyable. Um, it's enjoyable. It's an enjoyable movie. And also, I think that there are a th I cannot wait to see. I will watch it again. The only reason I will watch it again is because I want to see the R-rated cut. Because there are, as we all know. Oh, yeah. I understand. Yeah. Th there's an R-rated cut of this movie, the decision what, of which yeah. I completely fucking disagree with. I cannot believe that Snyder and Netflix agreed to go, hey, let's make two versions of this movie and do an R-rated cut and like play on that it's Snyder cut it's thing. More money so they can release it later. That's insane to me why they would do that. But that being said, there are a fucking thousand moments in this movie where someone will kill someone or there's a fight scene happening where you can see I there know. was a scene left out. And like yeah. when you I feel like when you go back and you add that that the violence to those fight scenes yeah, dude. and you add the stuff to the sex scenes and all that, the movie is no doubt it's going to be better as an R-rated film. So just release that fucking first. It's on dude, Netflix. What the, the fuck are we doing? At the very beginning of the movie, 
in the barn. And again, we're not going to spoil this movie for you guys at all. But there's the the the, the fight sequence that takes place that takes place in the barn. There's so much heavy editing going on just to keep it from being yeah. too overlaid so with blood. And I'm like, dude, the visuals were already there. Just give me what I want, you tit monster. I want to suck your tit. But it's like, no, 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 no. It we doesn't want to be it's stuff. Fucking kinda. Netflix, dude. What are you? What are you it's yeah. a service. You guys are acting yeah. like this is a PBS fucking production. Like, yeah. I don't know. But yeah, at the end of the day, it's an enjoyable movie. It's, it is not the worst movie I've ever seen in my life. I mean, absolutely not. I don't, these critics, man, they just, they have a boner for hating Zack Snyder. I don't understand it, but they do. Mm. Um, it, is it, is it going to win any awards anytime soon? Fuck no. Is it forgettable? Fuck yes. I think it's totally, I mean, it is one of those movies that you will probably forget about in two years. You will forget that it even exists. Yeah. But, and it, it, it does it match up with Zack Snyder's original um, zombie movie. Fuck no. That zombie movie that he did was fucking incredible. Yeah. You know, that was, and that was an original movie. Don't yeah. get me wrong. Was it? No. The R rated cuts, no doubt, going to be better. I and I, I, it might, that one might have been based on comic. I don't want to say it wrong. I don't know. But it's I also think this, dude, I also think the sequel is going to be so much better. No, the sequel is like, going to be great. But the problem is, the problem, here's, here's, I, again, I'm not a director. I wouldn't know what the fuck to do. I'd be lost as shit. Uh, but if you have a movie, you're going to have two parts to it. And the first part of the movie is going to be two hours and something minutes long, right? I would at least like if I can't do anything else, I'd be like, I want the audience to give a fuck about these characters. So I would focus a lot. I would hyper focus on developing those characters, those yeah. relationships and write those lines. to where we, you know, so where people gave a shit. And then when you get to the second part and then you have all the high flying visuals, then it's all like, OK, now it matters. Now it means something. I just feel like he was trying to get so quickly to point A to B to show off visuals that he lost a lot in translation. Yeah. And, and, I and equally, and equally, I thought the whole second half was boring too. Because yeah, it was, it was well, like, it, oh my god, we have to go recruit, and we know what you're it doing. Was always, so, it, in a way, I see why they rushed it, but like, dude, I think I, the story I, just needed more interesting. I think I think those recruitment scenes needed more interesting stories to back. It them needed up. more development time. It needed more time in the oven, uh, as far as yeah. the, the plot ideas to cook. And I will say yeah. also, um, I do. I was like, when I was watching, I was like, dude, this would be so fucking cool. When I was like, getting that Inglorious Bastards vibe, I'm like, if they go with that the entire fucking movie, the entire fucking time, mm-hmm. where it's like mm-hmm. that Inglorious ba- Bastards vibe, the opening so fucking good in dude. fucking space, and you have the hyper violence with it, yeah. wee. And the that's main chick's great. The main chick's great. I know. Yeah, it, awesome. well, it shows, that's how you write a strong female character that's not like a Mary Sue. She's got yeah. fucking training. From a military family that may, yeah. you know, like, and that's all revealed later on. I'm not going to reveal everything, but that's why she's like very uh, competent with a pistol. And she but, kicked ass. And she was great. And, and she's hot too. And she's also, she retains her femininity. She doesn't like, yeah. like, fuck men. You know what I mean? Fuck men. I like yeah. dildos. Uh, I like that. I like Who that doesn't? prosthetic shit. Who uh, doesn't? But no, but, no, but the end of the day, um, man, Zack Snyder, I, I, it's only, after this movie, they said, "Do you th- do you still think that Zack Snyder should be in charge of DCEU?" Fuck yes, I do, one thousand percent. His storytelling is still there. The visuals are still there. He still knows how to tell the story. I, this particular instance in this movie, I think that there was a lot of mistakes, and and then the there, there you go, the interference with Netflix. I think Netflix fucked with it, and then. Well, and, that, and to be fair, it seems like he agreed to that, which was a mistake. Well, that's not true, Mike. Okay, he was under duress. He was drinking <laughs> bourbon. Hey, nobody's perfect. Nobody's perfect, and 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 this is a class. I, I I think the the truth is is that Zack Snyder is a great fucking filmmaker, and yeah. there's not a single filmmaker out there who doesn't have a couple missteps. And I feel like Part One, for whatever reasons, was sort of a misstep. Still, because of how good he is as a filmmaker and the visuals and the the badassery that he provides, three hundred style, sneaky, sneaky, all that. It's mm-hmm. still a watchable movie at the end of the day, and still a six and a six point well, five. I get, I, I get six five. I, I mean, it's fine. You can round it either one, six five, six zero. Oh, but yeah. I, I just feel like, man, there was. I guess that this movie is like, there was so much potential to be great. There was so much. Um. There's so many characters and actors in these characters that could have been developed further and been really cool. And I, I feel yeah. like I feel like part one is a missed opportunity. That's what I'll say. I feel like part one is a missed opportunity to do something really different and then prove those critic assholes wrong at Rotten Tomatoes, yeah. those suck dick assholes that say, of course they follow from every trope and every sci-fi fantasy and still fall flat <laughs> as they eat their fucking popcorn with their fat fucking 
Anyway. <laughs> I also think that if this movie came out 15 years ago, it would have been way better. But we've just seen this so many times. Well, this I also idea at, so many times. If this this movie, if this was a Star Wars movie, is better than anything that has been produced from fair. fucking Lucasfilm for a while. If fair. that if That's it was a star, if this was a Star Wars movie, it'd be the best thing yeah. since Rogue One. That's One thousand fucking percent. So that is our rating of Rebel Moon. I do look forward to part two. Uh, if do you want to take a quick PP break before we no, do Iron we'll Claw, we'll do I will yeah. catch us up on Super Chutes, Super Chutes, because we don't give a fuck. Hanging out with your grandma, playing Foursquare, not Foursquare, Connect Four. I was at a bar the other day and they they had games. People, we we played the uh, Oregon Trail game. They have an Oregon Trail card game. And me and my wife sat around, had a couple of brewskis, playing that game. Blast. Had a great time. But some people came over, and they had Connect Four. And I was like, I want that fucking Connect Four. I haven't played Connect Four since I was a little kid. With my grandma. And I kept staring at them. But they just kept not playing their own Connect Four, even though I wanted to play it. And that was bullshit. But whatever. Fuck those people. I hope they're watching tonight. You guys bogarted the connect four. Rootin' Tootin' Texas Tootin' said, I got some mustard on my back fat. Come get it, Jay. It's Dijon, if that makes a difference. You think I need a new alternator? <laughs> Listen, man, uh, anytime you end up at a party and you end up with Dijon mustard on your back, it means that you definitely got had. Uh, someone had their way with you. They had to wear it with your butthole. Uh, if you reach into the fridge and you pull out the Dijon instead of the regular and it's not for a fancy dish as a mixer. Dijon mustard by itself is disgusting. You should be ashamed of yourself. And uh, I'm ashamed of you. So do better next time with the mustard selections. Barb! Hey, guys. Any plans to hit Whorehound in March slash Cincinnati? Eli Roth and Mike Flanagan will be in the house. Um, it's in March? That's a possibility. That is possible. Since he's not far from us, uh, not 100% sure if we're going to do Scarefest this year. Uh, we, we're not going to have a booth there, more than likely, but uh, there's a possibility we do come and hang out and see the sights. I would like to. It sounds like a good time to me. Anything can happen, Barb. Anything can happen. Thank you. You're the fucking coolest. It was nice to meet you, and uh, maybe we'll meet you there. Who knows? Who knows what will happen? Anything can happen. Anything can happen. Um, But, yeah, I, Jay's 100% right. And by the way, let me tell this story, by the way. So Christmas Day. Going to see a Christmas Day movie was really cool for me. I was really excited. And the true, the true story is the day before, we were hanging out with family. We were all drinking, uh, watching football. And someone was like, we should go see a movie tomorrow. And I was like, fuck, yeah. I have to go see these movies. And I would love to go to the movie. So we go. And we split it up into factions. Some people go see Wonka. I'm not seeing Wonka. I, I think that I, I can't imagine why the fuck they would make another Wonka movie. But... Me and some of the dudes and, uh, you know, my 14 year old go see uh, the Iron Claw. So I'm super pumped. No, we're going to do the review for it. And I won't talk about the review before Jay gets back. But the funniest fucking thing happened. Assigned seats, tiny theater uh, for Iron Claw, right? You buy your assigned fucking seats because they are assigned fucking seats. That's the reason they're fucking assigned. We buy the seats. We have four of them. E, one, two, three, and four. I purposefully go in the aisle first. And as I go into the aisle, I noticed there's a person in E5. There's only like six or seven tickets sold for this whole theater. The, the rows behind us are filled up. The rows in front of us are completely empty. And there's a gentleman sitting in row fucking E5. We're one, two, three, four. There's a gentleman si sitting in E5. Okay. When I bought the tickets, there wasn't a gentleman sitting in E5. We go in. I sit down. I go to sit down. This motherfucker has his phone in my seat. No problem. No problem. I look at him. I say, I say, uh, excuse me, sir. Uh, my seat's here. Your phone's in my seat. He goes, oh, picks up his phone. I sit down. A 14-year-old sits next to me. Someone sits next to her. We fill out the seats, right? Maybe there's maybe 10 seats to each row to give you guys an idea. This dude's sitting right in the middle. And again, when we bought the tickets, his seat was not there. I asked him to move his phone. He says, fine. I sit down. They sit down. I'm turning around. I'm trying to get my daughter set up with her popcorn, trying to get her shit going on. And I hear out of the back of my perif, I hear this motherfucker go, oh, fuck, the whole theater's empty. I don't know why you had to sit here. Sorry, I didn't think anybody was going to be there. I turned around. <laughs> that's, <laughs> I, I, that's, that's what I heard in my perif. The whole theater's empty. I don't know why you're sitting here. Again, assigned seats. You buy the fucking tickets, you sit in the fucking seats. Last what'd you, what'd you, I bought, what'd you go see? 
uh, Iron Claw. I'm talking about Iron, oh, Iron Claw. Claw. I'm not talking about the movie yet, but just the experience. Last theater, last time I went with MJ to see a movie, we sat, we went to go to our seats and someone was sitting in our seats. So I said, okay. We sat in the seats behind him. And then I had to sit there worried for 15 goddamn minutes that someone was going to come into our seats and I was going to have to move them. Because when you buy the assigned seats, sit in your fucking assigned seats, you fucking ingrates. Who'd you go Anyways, with? Anyways, uh, Kate's family. Uh, oh, okay. we, we all went. They would see Wonka. We would see Iron Claw. But this motherfucker had, a, you know, I sat down and I hear in my perif again, whole theater's empty, which don't get me wrong. If I'm in a fucking assigned seatless thing and, yeah. and i sit in the theater and he's sitting in the perfect spot because i know what i'm doing when i fucking buy tickets for a movie we had the right spot it, it, if i go into a theater and i'm sitting in the perfect spot and the theater's empty and someone just willy-nilly sits next to me i'm annoyed too that's not the case these are assigned fucking seats you <laughs> yeah. bought the tickets all right Maybe if the movie's you boring the... you can blow me <laughs> yeah you bought the fucking tickets you know where you were sitting i had mm. the tickets and there was no person sitting there when i bought the fucking tickets okay so anyways i sit there he bought the tickets after me and i know this or he bought tickets somewhere else and decided well the theater's empty while the previews are still on i'm just gonna sit here in the middle even though i could have bought that ticket and didn't anyway i sit down i'm getting my daughter situated getting her popcorn situated getting the thing so that while the movie's playing on the screen we're not digging around going blah, 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 all through our shit you know because I'm a fucking responsible you, movie goer. You said I know you, my it shit. Was just, it was just you and Memphis. No, it was me and Memphis. It was uh, 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 my brother-in-law and then oh, uh, yeah, uh, my father-in-law. Okay, I th- okay, it was just okay. I, I thought it was just yeah. like you and Memphis. No, no, there's four of us. Uh, it's Christmas Day, and the rest of them went to go see. Uh, I would say that you have chosen Wonka. wisely. Right? Yeah, yeah. Good. It was cool. Like, okay, some of us are gonna go see Iron Claw. Some of us are gonna go see Wonka. Great day. Awesome time. Good stuff. You had you had an you had a fucking uh, a Gary Busey sitting behind yeah. you. Yeah, no, it's sitting next to me. And, and I want to oh, sit, and no. again, I'm getting her, I'm, oh, I'm I'm pre-opening her snacks so that nobody has to hear her rifling around her in the movie. Because again, I know my shit. I know what the fuck to do in a movie theater. <laughs> and this motherfucker in my <laughs> career. You're so fucking pissed. <laughs> it's important. So funny. No, you like, yeah, movie, I've taught my kids this. Movie theater etiquette's fucking important. It, no, it is it, very important. It's very important. It's the difference between us and the ingrates of the world. So <laughs> I hear in my fucking yeah. career. Yeah. All right, this fucking slobby, slocky motherfucker sitting in his seat, already goddamn fucking oh, 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 stuffing his face with popcorn. Hot. I I had to ask, I said, hey, I'm sitting here. He moved his phone. And I sit down, and he didn't think I hear him. He didn't think I, I heard him. He goes, he goes, the whole fear's empty. I don't know why you're sitting here. And I turned around. And I, I said, my daughter's popcorn. And I turned around to him, and I got about this close to his face. And I said, sorry. And he goes, Oh, 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 you're, you're good. You're, you're fine. You're fine. You're, you're fine. You're fine. You're fine. And like, just completely back down on it. And then I was like, oh, okay. What I wanted to say was, Hey, dude, there's a whole four seats next to you. Move your fat fucking ass down. Unless he looked like Batista and you're like, like, sorry, sir. Would you like me to move my family and I? <laughs> <laughs> like, you want all four of us to fucking move? Just scoot the fuck down. No one's going to fucking. Yeah. Move. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I've, I've been in situations like I went and seen a, uh, I mean, it's been a long time, but I remember watching S. What was it, X Men: um, Days of Future Past? Yeah. And, and like, I went in by myself. I was depressed as fuck because I was going through divorce. I was like, I just want to watch something like that's cool. And I went in. Mm-hmm. And I, I went into the into the the handicap. Well, in the handicap. Well, I guess it was before they changed it back in the day on uh, in Regal, where they had the. It was like on the side seats where it was yeah. like it was designed, but that was the seat I got. I mean, I, there was it was it was kind of full, and there was a, a person that sat right fucking in front of me. But there was like a million fucking seats empty, and this was before assigned seating. Yeah, I got I got annoyed too, but I was like, I don't fucking care. I'll smell oh, your yeah. goddamn hairspray and I'll look around you. <laughs> I'm not gonna no. be an asshole to you because you sit in front of me and you're fucking right. you know overweight. I'll be no, like whatever. If, if uh, yeah, if there's no if dude, if there's no assigned seating, I get it. Like I told you, if if there was no assigned seating and we all like shuffled in right next to this dude, fine. But he was in the middle of an aisle completely by himself with four seats on his why left. Why did he move? Four why couldn't he just right. move? He could have moved. Right. Four seats on his left that were completely empty. Four yeah. seats on his right that we paid for that were our tickets. And by the way, once again, when we bought the tickets, that seat wasn't there or I would have picked different tickets. So we sit there. He says yeah. that. And I turn around and like he's like two inches from my face. And I, I wasn't even being combative. I just thought, surely he didn't fucking say that just now. So I turned around and I looked him in the eye and I went, sorry. And he went, oh, 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 oh yeah. you're fine. You're fine. Freak the fuck out. And then for the rest of the goddamn movie. When he could have just scooted down, I had to listen to this motherfucker breathe. And the entire goddamn running time of the Iron Claw, he was going. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I don't get that. And I, I was like, if, "Fuck me!" 
if you go see a movie you know? solo, you can move. I mean, if there's it, like yeah. like to his own like to his own observation. There's it's an empty theater. Why can't you just move then? You can move anywhere you want. He had a throat thing. He had a throat thing. And there was one movie. There was one point in the movie where he goes, oh, "That's funny," and looked at me, and I was like, "We have not." We have severed our fucking pre-friendship. Do not look at me and say I'm so glad next to my throat. You didn't hear that. My comments and observation when you and your family rolled in and I was sitting up there (laughs) in the back and I could just see big fucking heads. I'm like, what the fuck? There's a whole fucking theater. Uh, he <laughs> yeah, really dude, did. Yeah. So was that? Was he wearing the Edgar suit? He looked like the guy who was like from fucking Men in yeah. Black. And I was like, dude, just scoot the fuck. Anyway, that's my story. I'm gonna yeah. be. In well, the yeah, 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 you're right. You, there is a there is definitely a movie theater etiquette that you must learn and abide by by all by all stretches yeah. of the imagination. It it's must important. be abided by. But don't be an asshole, dude. Like if there's a family coming in and there's an empty fucking, th- just move. If it annoys yeah. you, if you're but because based on your own like. Uh, philosophy, then you could go any to any seat. It's going to be a lot easier for you to move your big ass to fucking any other seat than uh, you don't have yeah. to move the whole family. Total bullshit scenario, dude. And like, again, the last movie I went to see with, with MJ, we go and someone was in our seats, but I, I know that the movie start 25 minutes late because I have this shit timed. Again, Ooh. professional moviegoer right here. Like, I know what's going on. Someone was in our seat. I didn't stop the production and ask them to move. The whole theater is empty. I just sat behind them in a theater and a thing I didn't pick. Uh, I know how it fucking works. So yeah. like in this case, it was like, dude, like we, there's four of us. Either we move to the other side of you, which we're right next to you anyway, or we have to sit in the second fucking row because there's only six rows in this. You're sitting in the wrong fucking seat, cunt yeah. bag, fucking Gregor. So why don't you fucking move your fat fucking God, nose breathing he's ass? He's never going to come and back then everything's in the UFC. Fine. That fucking cut <laughs> the so annoying. Not come back. Uh, yeah, well, all right. No, I, I'm glad I'm I don't want to get through because I would fucking I get freaked out when my wife tries to pick shit, like pick fights and shit. She's like, like <laughs> we're like driving and shit, and she's like, fuck this motherfucker, and she gets all mad, like shut the yeah. fuck up. And now we're even trying to like start a fight. I was just le- legit, like, but no, I know, we were but right next to somebody, we were like people, yeah. this close, and I was like, sorry, and he goes, oh, 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 oh. dude, I, uh, you're I, fine, you're fine. Sorry, sorry. We had we like, the not like like she got mad at me because like three weeks ago like listen the reason why I only got mad about it was because today's world is crazy and somebody could have a fucking gun I've seen too yeah, many I tell my wife videos time, I've seen too many body cam videos like where the fucking guy pulls a gun in a road rage incident and shoots you in the fucking head like this guy cut us off <laughs> yeah. this guy cut us the fuck off we were going to the liquor store <laughs> of course that makes sense I was getting some bureau and we were going to the drive through because that's what you do when you're lazy and I was yeah. like all right and we and then uh the the, the this person was backing out of the parking lot and was going the wrong way. So April stopped because she was driving and let him go. And then this fucking bitch came around. She'd come around the other side of the building and cut in front of her. And then she was like, like her window was down. And she's like, what the fuck? Like yelling. And the other <laughs> woman's window down. And I was like, stupid fucking right now. <laughs> and then she was like, what the fuck? That's bullshit. I was sitting here letting that person go because they went the wrong way. And this bitch fucking cut in front of me i was like oh my god <laughs> like i fucking felt like sid justice you remember sid justice in the WWF? Yeah. like i felt like i don't even have traps but i felt like them growing because my blood pressure was rising <laughs> and i felt like they were creating a muscle on my i was like don't fucking talk anymore and then she was like and then we were pulling and and, and then i knew that bitch hurt us because she started she took her time to ask for what she wanted i mean you pull it to a drive through at a liquor store you know what the fuck you want Mm-hmm. And like, it's not like you're trying to pick out a fucking goddamn Baskin 31 ice cream treat. She, you know, she was just doing it on purpose <laughs> to make her wait. And then the, her window was down and April's window was down. Cause she was, and then she's like, God, fucking bitch, motherfucker. And I'm like, stop. <laughs> <laughs> I got to I'll be right. I'll be right back. We'll review okay, this movie. Right. That, that, this bitch. I didn't know what the, she could have had a goddamn gun. She could have had a fucking James Bond. Like sleeve concealed gun, and she just get out, and go, Pfft. and guess what? I would get the fucking shot, not her. I was just like, calm down. Like, yeah, she's. I was like, she's a bitch. Shh, stop. She's like, and, you know, she kept getting mad about it. Anyway, I don't like that. You know what I do is if if someone cuts me off or traffic or like pisses me off, I go, I go, you know, like if you ever in school, you like you do a quick little. Nobody saw shit. I just do a quick little flip off. I don't yell. I don't say anything. And if they saw it, I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. I was like pointing at you. You're number one. Anyway, but I, I get it. 
I it never, I've never had any, um, I don't, I mean, I've, I've had people talk shit or they've said some shit before at a movie theater when I've been there, but I was like, I don't care. Fuck you. you have small dick. But anyway, we'll just get on with it. But I'm just saying like that shit, like that shit scared me though. I watch like literally if you looked at my, my, the, the, like my subscription box on YouTube, I'm literally subscribed to like every goddamn body cam footage <laughs> that you can imagine. Cause I think that's just great entertainment. That's just my opinion. I just like watching that stuff. But there's so many cases where people like just can't let something go and they wind up losing their life or something that is so trivial and stupid, like that someone cut you off or, or someone said something mean and you have, you, 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 you feel the need. I mean, look, it's a dangerous world, y'all. It's a dangerous world. I fuck that shit. I'm just saying, I ain't, I'm not fucking with that. Like, like, and she's my wife. Now I got to defend her. You know what I mean? I have no fucking choice. Right. So if like, if that, if that chick had been like a fucking big ass goddamn dude and he'd like, I could, I, the scenario was already in my head because I couldn't see, I like, thankfully I was like, oh, it's a one. If it had been a guy, a big fucking bulky ass dude that looked like Dutch from Predator and I saw the door open <laughs> and he came out and like, you need to keep your bitch on a fucking leash. I'm like, you're absolutely right, sir. But now I have to defend my wife's honor because you called her a bitch and I'm going to go in the hospital, aren't I? So, yeah, you is. I'm like, all right, well, uh, honey, uh, make sure that our insurance is up to date. My face is going to be broken into a fucking thousand pieces. Here we go. And then I would, you know what I'm saying? I hate that shit, but it is what it is. It is what it be. But I mean, you know, Jay says better start training like John Wick there, Jay. Yeah, I know. But I'm, I'm not gonna be a. I don't want to. I don't want to do some gun. You know, some gun foo. I just don't like. Listen, man. Go about your day. Go about your life. You act like an asshole. I'll do you look one of those. Like, I'll even do one of these. <laughs> like not this. I'll just do one of these. <laughs> Ooh, sexy, but I don't like that shit. Because, you know, chicks don't understand sometimes. I mean, you know, guys, like, you know, yeah, I understand, like, you know, in the new world and stuff. And, like, girls and guys are supposed to be equal. That ain't true, though. For real, it's not. Because, listen, if your chick, if your lady, you know, your wife, your girlfriend, whatever, uh, even your boyfriend, if you're gay or whatever, like, you know, and, and they get insulted, you got to defend that shit, man. And it fucking sucks, dude. Because you don't, like, I was like, I can't fight for shit. I can't fight. Do I look like I could fight? <laughs> no, dude. I'm going to ask you your favorite Final Fantasy Matera. I'm not going to ask, like, I, 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 don't, I don't, I can't fight. So it is what it is. Uh, yeah, I hate that stuff, dude. I just let shit go. I don't like confrontation. I don't like dealing with that stuff, but I just let it go. I'm like, whatever. I don't care. But yeah. I don't have, I don't have kids. I mean, it's probably like, you know, it's probably like a hundred times worse if it, you know, if it, if your kids are involved in that situation. Uh, Robin Van Hoos had a stroke. I hope you're doing better. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck that is. Like you have a bunch of random like letters. Like, I feel like you just like were typing on your keyboard and your forehead fell on it because you passed out and you have an emoji in there, but thank you. Um, anyway. Uh, Harold said, "Jay kicks ass. Just look at that chin. I mean, he could take a punch. <laughs> I don't think I, I. Maybe I could take one or two punches, and then it's like lights out. But as far as like fighting ability, fuck no, dude. I'm like a street fighter on very easy, like no problems. Uh, bro is a bot. <laughs> Something. Uh, Michael says, can you read my super chat, Michael Parton? Uh, did you? Uh, oh, okay. I'm sorry, man. Uh, yeah, Michael." Uh, says, uh, this year's been fun because of you guys. You both are really the best friends to ever have in this community. I've always had your back, even though the ba even through the bad times. I love you guys so much. Here's the 20, 24 with y'all and, and more. Hey, man, Michael, thank you so much, dude. That's, uh, that really does mean a lot, Michael. Um, yeah, man, it's been a crazy, it's been a crazy fucking year for sure. A lot of ups and downs, a lot of crazy stuff going on. And I mean, we're happy to have you guys, uh, you know, in our corner, but yeah, um, but you guys are the best friends we've had too. You guys really are. Thank you guys for being here. And it's really cool to just unload and like talk shit. And like, I, it really is. I mean, we talked about it before. It's like going to a, like an Applebee's bar and just having a bunch of cool friends, like hanging out at the same bar, but like, Hey, 
you're a loser like me too. <laughs> like, I'm here by myself eating fucking uh, 25 cent wings like Mike did one time. <laughs> I did do that. It's, Those it's were good fun. wings. Uh, thanks, babe. Yeah, dude. Uh, we appreciate you guys so fucking much. And we're the same. And hopefully we'll have another one of these before the uh, before the new year, of course. But um, yeah. yeah, love you, Michael. Yeah. Love all you guys. This is the best. Our last piece of business to attend to tonight is the Claw, the Iron Claw Baseball Claw. stuff in the Claw. You. Yeah, man. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, dude, uh, what can you say? Fucking incredible. Absolutely incredible. Um, and we, we, you know, you you heard me and Mike gush and come over the TV show. Um, uh, what was it? Um, Dark Side of the Ring? No, no, no. Uh, that got canceled after. Uh, oh, heels, heels, heels. yeah, yeah. And, and, you, and you heard that day in, day out, you know, day out about how much we love that show. That is this show in a movie form 100%. that should have been more than just a two-hour film. I mean, the, the Von Ericks are so so fascinating and, and it's such a tragic story um it, because it takes place around again this is gonna be spoiler free just so you guys know i mean the, their lives are not spoiler free so if you want to you know people that grew up in the 70s and 80s that know about the von erics would <clears throat> already know what happens but i'm not going to spoil the movie for you guys but the movie takes place around kevin von eric who's played by zach efron and um wow dude Zach Efron is such a great actor. He is really, really underrated, dude. Amazing. Like, yes, absolutely underrated. And the way that he portrays Kevin Von Erich and the relationships with his brothers, Carrie, David, Mike, uh, and um, who's the uh, Carrie, David, Mike, Kevin, I'm not sure. Chris. There, yeah, I think that was there's five brothers. They didn't leave, they didn't put Chris in it, but um. It's so incredible. It's such a good, it's such a, it, it, these are those kind of movies I love, dude. Like I love the character development. I love the relationship building. I love that when it's able to set you in their lives for a moment, the father in this, I can't remember his name. He's a great actor as well. Ke uh, Holt McClaney. Fucking Holt awesome. McClaney. So good. Uh, he plays Fritz von Eric, the father, and he's not a bad dad. I mean, I think that people are going to take that from it and that he's a bad dad. He's not a bad dad. He's not a good dad. But I feel like he treats his son like like a football squad. Like he's like a, a head coach of a, of a high school football team. That's how he treats his sons. And he's not interested really in, in learning them and their their inner workings, but he's a good dad. He wants them to succeed, but he also plays the game of like a head coach of a football team where he's like kind of, well, you're my favorite right now, but that could change. The rankings always change. It's an asshole way to – you shouldn't raise your family like this, but – no. That's how people were raised back then. Definitely a flawed way, for sure. Yeah, I mean, I even have some experience. Like, I understand like the the the, the way that works, the mentality of that. But, dude, I can't say enough about Zac Efron. Um, like, obviously, he's handsome. He's so handsome in this. He he looks like AI generated. Like sometimes, <laughs> like he looks like AI generated. Yeah. But not just that, though, dude. Like the act, the, the way that he was able to um, inhabit this southern personality and this draw like you believed him you yeah. believed everything he was doing and uh do i i will say i think zach efron should be cyclops if they ever do it uh, uh i think he'd be a great cyclops but yeah dude it's a it's a genuinely heartbreaking story there's tragedy there is hope that it's small it's it's there in the movie mm -hmm. uh and i will say it's it's shot i i love these kind of the way they're shot these kind of movies there's just something about them man you know like grand torino um the wrestler, all that, uh, the like hills, all the, the the way those things are shot, it just it's so well like well done that it just it it, it pulls you into the movie. Yeah, and, like, yeah. I love to do it. Like two hours did not, and I would two hours did not do this justice. Not even close to it. I agree. There's so much. There's so much more, and there's so many more nuances. I think that when you go into this movie, and again, it's just the the short abridged version without getting any spoilers, is it's about the Von Erich family, who were a famous wrestling family. Who uh, there was this idea that there was this curse around the family yeah. because people kept dying and like and and whatever, uh, and the tragedy. brothers and all this stuff like that. And there was so much tragedy. And the movie shows you all those tragedies bit by bit. There's this happens, then this happens, then this happens. And again, they they 
they decided to keep even one of the tragedies out of the movie because they said if you try to put that tragedy in the movie it seems unrealistic because this family went through so fucking much and that's the truth of it they went through even it's one of those rare movies that is it based on a true story yes but the true story is actually even more heartbreaking than the movie but when you go into the movie you think everybody says oh this movie's gonna wreck you this movie's gonna be you're gonna cry it's gonna be heartbreaking and it is all those things but for me personally the first half of the movie is more of their rise and like what they're going through and how everything comes about. And that shit's great because you get to see the inner workings of this family from the dad to the brothers. Mm -hmm. You get to see how close they are together, the way that the brothers are friends, the way that they support each other uh, in, in a rare way that almost nobody does these days. The brothers were always there for each other. And part of the reason is because the parents in a way weren't, they were like, we need you to be great. They, they were supportive in the way that they were like, we need you to be great. And the whole idea of the movie, and they keep going back to it is as long as you're strong and you're tough and you're successful, then no one can hurt you. And this curse can't hurt you either. As mm. long as you're everything that, that you can possibly be. And that's just not the truth in life. You can be the strongest. You can be the toughest. You can work your ass off and eventually tragedy could possibly strike you. And I feel like that's the essence of the movie, but they show their lives but the genius thing the movie does is in the first half, it shows how close they all are. And then yeah. the second half is where the tragedy starts to strike and it happens again and again and again. And you don't and have, yeah, you, you don't have much time. You don't have much time to really get no. to know each one because it like you got to remember like these guys, man, Kevin Von Eric lost his, like they died so quick mm -hmm. one after the other, like one died in 84, the other one in 87, the other one in 92. I mean, it was one after the other. It was like a boom, 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 boom. Yeah. It's crazy. And, and it's crazy. The movie is very smart in the way that they unfold the tragedies because they will show you one really play out and then one will happen like that to you. Yeah. And it, it'll just be one visual aspect. One thing with the kitchen scene. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about when mm. he walks in the kitchen you're like, oh, my God, that was great. I love that scene, though. I love that. scene. Yeah, it's so smart the way they do it because they let one play out dramatically, but then one will hit you fast because there's so much happening. And what the 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 movie's told through the eyes of kevin zach efron's character and it was a beautiful way to do that because you might think you go into this movie and when these scenes happen they're going to be dramatically like crazy dramatics and they're going to really hit you all the way through and they don't the movie just plays out and they happen but again you're watching it through zach efron's character's eyes they happen so they almost happen in a matter of fact way yeah. But for me personally, the way the movie wraps up at the end, it's all emotional and it all is devastating for sure. But the movie hit me in a, in a way that no movies ever fucking hit me before ever e fucking ever through any other movie. South yeah. Paul, the saddest movies you can think of, whatever. And I won't say what the line of dialogue is, but if you've seen it, you know, when he's sitting there at the end of the movie and he's watching his kids and the line of dialogue fuck i can't even say it without almost getting choked up and that that's what this movie does to you when his kids come up and they say the lines to him that they say to him at the end of the movie it sucks because the, the last dial the last bits of dialogue in the movie land so hard it's like the entire weight of the entire movie and everything that happened comes crashing on you and yeah. i still haven't been able to shake it when i think about tragedy and when i think about your your kids and and your own life versus your family and everything that happened still like four days later, I will think of the last lines of this movie and I will get choked up just sitting on my couch because it's yeah. so fucking heavy, man. It's, it's so it, it, fucking heavy. The, the movie, it, the movie leaves you impacted. I mean, and yeah. that's what any, any good movie should do. It should leave you impacted and you should leave thinking about it afterwards. That's the sign of a good movie when you think about it afterwards. And that's why yeah. I know the movie was great. And that line was actually the character uh, through his, uh, Zach, Ever it's Kevin, Von Eric is who the character is. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's the only living brother left. And he's featured heavily, obviously, for reasons in Dark Side of the Ring, talking about his brothers. And that line is actually from him. That's a real line that he said, the real Kevin Von Eric, when he said, I used to be a brother and now I'm not a brother at all. Yeah. And that, I mean, you, you think about that, man. I used to be a brother. I had five brothers and now I'm not even a brother. And then his kids say, I'll be your brother. Yeah. And that, you know, but you know, that 
Like that's what I fucking unleashed, dude. Like I kept my shit together because we're there with family and I'm trying not to cry. That scene, the tears literally forced their way. I almost fucking ugly cried in front of everybody in the theater. What fucking ninja from communist China is cutting onions in this theater? (laughs) Uh, No, yeah, yeah. It was such a it was a great line and it was delivered beautifully by Zach Efron. Again, it was done Mm -hmm. uh, really well. And that last scene was so well done. It look it was a it was a it was a great shot. Um and the and the thing is they didn't sugarcoat like they didn't sugarcoat what I would call, um, I don't, I wouldn't call it. Well, I would call it the best I would call it with Fritz von Eric. The father is neglect. I mean, he is definitely responsible for, I, in my opinion, uh, Carrie von Eric's death along a hundred percent Carrie von Eric, because, mm-hmm. um, the, and that is true. It's all true because this is from Kevin von Eric. Kevin von Eric said in the, in the dark side of the ring, in the, any documentary that he watched that, uh, before Kerry, um, you know, what happened to Kerry, uh, he warned his father and his father did give because his father was like, you're a man. A man's got to be a man. And if you're going to be a man, be a man. Don't be a girl. Mm-hmm. Take off your dress, pussy. You puss. Mm-hmm. Puss and butts. And, uh, and you know, that that's how the father was, essentially. And so, yeah, he definitely was. He I think he loved his sons. And again, I didn't know the man. I didn't. But they did a great job of showcasing the the contrast I feel like he was struggling. Mm-hmm. Like he didn't know how to show love. He didn't know how to do that with his, because he raised his kids like troops. Like he raised mm-hmm. his kids like fucking like, you got to be the best. You got to be the best, bitch. And then if yeah. you're not the best, then you're a loser. And so he didn't know really how to comfort his sons when he needed to. I think they did a really good job of, of the juxtaposition of where he was. Cause that character is like, he is, he's a, you could tell moments that he cares and then he doesn't know how to express it. And then other times he's just a pure unfeeling prick. And, he, and, mm-hmm. and there's moments where he's like, I can't wait to get that NWA title and have it in the... So he's living through his sons, vicariously yeah. using them, or vicariously living through them and using them to get something that he never got, which is the championship belt from the NWA. And the only the, one of the biggest downsides for me, everything else is good. All the characters are great. The cast is perfect. The guy that played Ric Flair was fucking terrible. That guy was awful. He did not possess the pizzazz, the fucking swagger, any of that shit, I did not like that guy at all. I'm not saying he was like his body looked right, but that guy was terrible. He looked like an SNL parody of Ric Flair. Yeah. I would have gone with and, somebody. And allegedly, you know, what I what I read was the actor decided that in, instead of trying to, and maybe this is maybe this was the wrong choice for sure, but like he decided that instead of trying to do an impression of Ric Flair, he tried to channel the essence of Ric Flair and uh, make it his own thing. That's why and I again, didn't like, like it. That's, that's why I didn't like it. I was like, just play the fucking guy. Thing. Like. Yeah, yeah, you're playing yeah. a guy. It's like it's like Robert Pattinson playing Batman. No, do the fucking work. Put well, in the weight and look like fucking Batman, bitch. But Robert Pattinson like was that. great. Shut your goddamn mouth, okay? <laughs> Take it up with Nirvana. Uh, I will say here's the thing about here's the thing about the guy that played Ric Flair. Like the problem with him, and again, yeah, you're right. Uh, the fact that he was only trying to do the essence, that's the problem. Just play the fucking character. He's a real yeah. guy. You could have gone and spent time with him and learned his. You could have watched old tapes of Ric Flair. This guy did not have the swagger. He didn't have the style. He didn't have any, like, he looked like an SNL parody. I don't know how else to put it. And that was one of the biggest downfalls for me when I was watching. It was like, this guy comes out and he looks like a, a fucking joke. And he's like trying to be Ric Flair. And Ric Flair was like the, the biggest moment for the Von Eriks to, you know, to this title match. And it's like, it's like, God, I was waiting for it too. Cause I knew it happened because I watched the dark side of the ring and I knew about the history of it. And I'm like, all right. And then, and then he pops up on screen and it looks like a fucking salesman from, you know, goddamn Chrysler. And I'm like, <laughs> it sucks. Like that's not good. But otherwise I'm going to like, I give this movie an eight, five. Mm-hmm. And, and it's the reason why it's not higher is because and it's not the movie's fault. And this is where it's going to get strange. This movie should have been longer. This movie should have been a mini. This movie should have been eight or ten episodes on HBO Max, Netflix. This movie, or it could have just been four fucking hours and release it on um, streaming services. If you don't want to put a four-hour movie into the theaters, put a four-hour movie on Netflix. I'll watch that shit. This movie could have been maybe the greatest wrestling movie of all time. I swear to God, if they because they already had the for the most part, like ninety-nine percent of the actors were great for the roles, right? Mm. I just feel like it was just too short. There's too much. This this story, the Von Eric story, is so rich. There's so much more they could have played yeah. with, and they didn't. The whole thing and with it, Kerry Von Eric, Kerry Von Eric, by the way, if you guys don't know, is Texas Tornado from the WWF. Back in the day, there was a guy called Texas Tornado, and I remember watching him as a kid because the early '90s. Mm-hmm. I remember 
Ultimate Warrior and all that stuff. And I was like, that guy looks like an Ultimate Warrior ripoff. He just didn't have the face paint. I didn't know who the Von Erichs were. And that was fucking Kerry Von Erich. Yeah. And, and, then, and he then, had no fucking foot, dude. His He had no fucking foot. Yeah. <laughs> Holy it's crazy. Shit. Well, and uh, like they, they barely, they do run over that really quick. But at the end of the day, also, I mean, it's true that the movie still felt long. Like as much as it could have been longer, like you're right, like that story absorbed, absorbed in it. Yeah, maybe that's why the I movie like still felt long. Like it did. There at the Ric Flair match, I thought that was the end of the movie, and then there was no. like another half an hour long. Well, you After know what it that, is? So. I feel like I was so I was entertained for every minute of it. Maybe that's what it was. I, I was, didn't get bored. No, I, I didn't get too. bored. Of, I didn't get bored. That, that's yeah, what it no, was. I wasn't bored either. I I just think that that's a story. Was it's such a hard movie to tell, and that's why I think they did such a great job with it. It's such a hard story to tell because it's just tragedy after tragedy. And dude, there's lines. I'll in watch there. it again though. I'll watch it again. Oh, 100 percent. I can't. I cannot yeah. wait to watch it. it yeah. You know what it is though? It is a movie that you break out the fifth of whiskey, or you break out you a few to. drinks, you to, and you yeah. sit down. It's like it's like watching uh, Yellowstone or watching uh, <laughs> yeah, you, Mayor's Kingstown or, or, or Hills South Park Heels. It is a drinking movie. You you have you a couple of the presents and you sit kingdom. down and you just fucking cry. Yeah, all those things. It's that movie for sure. But what I loved about the movie is number one, the way that they portrayed the brothers' love for each other. Whether yep. it was picking their brother up from band, band, band practice, even though his parents didn't approve. I love for that. It. I love that angle. I wish see. I'm saying yeah. what I'm saying. Like we had so much more to yeah. explore. Right. So yeah. Before. Or, or having burgers with their brother or, or, um, the way that they would help sneak him out and do his own thing or the way that the brothers supported each other, even though they were in this fucking stratosphere of competition with each other, they always loved each other. They always supported each other. And when you go back and you think about the movie and you think about Zach Efron's character in particular and how he was kind of there for every single one of these tragic events and still couldn't help his brothers as much as he wanted to and never asked for the fucking glory. He never, he never, Never yeah. demanded the glory. He it. sat back. He took a backseat to his brothers over and over and over again. And it's 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 crazy how the backbone. Does, He's a good brother. That's what a good brother right. does. How the the guy who was the backbone to all this and the support for everybody else is the last one left standing through all this going on and the pain that he has to face. And and then at the end of the movie when he's alone and he's with his kids and it's like it's so fucking heartbreaking to sit and, and look at from that scope. Uh, and think about it's just it's a heartbreaking dude it, it, it kills you and your soul and that's why it's it's a movie that sticks with me days later like you can watch a movie and it can be sad and you could cry in the moment for sure yeah. there's a ton of those and they're great movies i can't remember a movie at all that days later like four days later i can think about one line from that movie and i'm like god damn it that's so fucking depressing and yeah they're, hurts, they're like, rare you deep they're down. rare Right. Um, such a good movie. I, well, I'm with you though. I give it an 8.5 out of 10 myself. Yeah, and I do. I, it really is a shame because I mean, there's they would never. You can't make a sequel to this. Um, mm -mm. So I mean, you know, you, all the dogs have gone on the horizon and chasing the bird. I, that's not a saying. I just made it up, but <laughs> uh, it just sounded good at the moment. But yeah, you can't go back and and re, you know do anything with this movie. But I mean, god damn, I I, I think it does that the Von Eric story deserves so much more not only exposure but uh, i mean again this, this wrestling family man they put their bodies as much on the line as a football player or a basketball player or whatever and and they got shit on because oh it's fake it's fake it's all that bullshit yeah. and I, I, I and then all this tragedy is going on behind the scene man and, but it was such a great story i love the uh there's a there's a scene in the in the movie where again efron it he should get like a Golden Globe or something. Uh, not a gold Globe. Or, uh, I, I, Academy, I, I, I'm for an Academy Oscar. Nod. I'm for an Oscar. Yeah. And, what or, do you yeah, with at least a fucking performance? Yeah, just a nod. You know what I mean? Like a like a nomination. If he doesn't win, fine. At the very just least. A nomination. Yeah. But um, there's a scene where he's like talking to his uh, future wife or whatever, and they're in like a fucking barbecue place, uh, as you do. And he's like, um, and she's like, what do you want out of life? He's like, I just want to be my brother's. You know, uh, whatever they mm -hmm. want to do, I just want to be, uh, you know, hey, maybe we can get a ranch and we can bring all our families in. They can live with us. And, all you know, what? I love that. dude. That you know, too. that's how, nice. no, that like, that's a, is a, you always want to keep your family close. You want to keep like those in your life close. It's like, mm -hmm. I will, we'll all just live together, man. We'll all like have a big old piece of property and we'll have like, you know, we're just going to live together forever. I love my brothers. Um, it was so well done, dude. And 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 yeah. to be fair, uh, Kevin Von Eric was like that. Like he really was like that for his brothers. And Zach Efron flawlessly captured, yeah, that energy. I, I'm, 
And I, I liked him better. Like again, and that's a, that's the difference between Zac Efron. Zac Efron was that guy versus the guy that was Ric Flair. And he was just trying to capture the essence, bro. Like just yeah. be the guy. Like be yeah. Ric Flair. Dude, like, you could tell Zac Efron gave everything to this role. And like he absolutely, dude, I would be so fucking stoked for him if he won an Oscar. It's time. I think it's officially time to be like Zac Efron is not a fucking heartthrob. Dude's an actor. Well, he's, he's a, a fucking he's great a good looking guy. I mean, both, but like he's also a great actor. Like, he, yeah, he I mean, yeah, this. yeah, he's definitely not like a Disney Club special. Like, that would have, right. I mean, everybody thought like when he was in, like, you know, uh, what was those shitty shows that, like on the Disney sh channel? Uh, uh, I don't or, know. Yeah, he yeah, was in that film. Oh, High School Musical or whatever the fuck it was called. Yeah, where he was doing that kind of garbage. Yeah, dude, Zach Efron is absolutely a, is a, is a magnetic actor, a great actor, and he's willing to do roles that are like not comfortable for him or yeah. uh, a part of the norm and this is this definitely fits the bill um playing a very very tragic character in a very very over the top tragic story where there's not much sunshine in the movie really at all um yeah but dude and I, jay, jay will agree with me if you guys if you if you watched iron claw and you enjoyed it and you want more of that feeling maybe with a little bit more of an uppity like funner feel but also bit. it does have the tragedy if you enjoyed Iron Claw and you want more of that, go watch fucking Heels because it's yeah, the it same fucking stratosphere, man. It's the same, same fucking exactly. stratosphere. It's, but it takes place in today's world, not yeah. in the 70s. But yeah. Just, so but many that, similarities, though. Yeah, dude, if Iron, Claw, if Iron Claw could have been an episode or a few episodes on or story arc on Heels. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like you should have given. <laughs> I swear to uh, Iron Claw was, they, they should have had two seasons. For yeah. their story, because there's so much more. And yeah, do Hills? Wow, dude, Stephen Amell. What? Like, I feel like it's the best role Stephen Amell has ever had in his life. Yeah. Ever had. And, and I, I loved I... Arrow. I loved Arrow. Like, obviously, he set the you know what gold standard. But I think it's the best role he's ever had. Uh, and I think mm -hmm. any actor that that was was in his was would be in his position would say the same thing. Like, I would love to have a role like that. Because yeah. that role is full, it's so juicy, dude. So much drama, so much intrigue, so much. It sucks, dude. But I, we're, I knew, I knew this would happen. We're gonna get back on heels because we're. Yeah. I, I'm, so I'm so fucking butthurt. I'm so butthurt. Yeah, if 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 if, if Iron Claw was a heels uh, extension movie, I wouldn't. I, I believe it in a heartbeat. I would believe it in a heartbeat. It's the same. If they shit. made a heels, the if they made a heels movie, movie, if they made a heels movie to tie up what happened, I'd be fine with it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it'd be just like that. So yeah, both of us give it an eight point five. Go see fucking Iron Claw. It's one of the best movies of the year. Um, wrapping up the super tits, Mister Club says one time I saw this A twenty four movie, The Green Knight, and this strange A twenty four addict was in my seat. He got up when I sat down. It was so warm, it smelled like shit. And then you drank it. God damn, Mister Clumps, you were desperate as fuck for. Some You're not supposed to lick the seat, Clumps. <laughs> All right, You're not supposed to lick it. All right. Lee the Machine Bauer says Loomis does Smith's Grove do field trips. Maybe take Michael to the movies. Maybe take him to see Barbie. Uh, maybe take him to the cemetery and give him arsenic. <laughs> That's a great movie for everybody. He gets to watch the last minutes of his life as he closes his eyes for the last time. <laughs> great movie. For the last time. Nerd or die. I like your I like your whole get up, buddy. He said, what's up, ball bags? Don't hey. worry about the salty taste in your mouth. I swear I didn't do anything to you when you were asleep, when you were sleeping. Uh, do you collect physical media? Mike does. I don't. Not anymore. I still do. Uh, I collect all the VHS. I can get my grubby little fucking hands on because I think that that's going to come back. And also, as I sit here today, I, 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 I stuck the tip in just a tip, just a little bit on the uh, the digital media thing. But as I see the world taking place the way it is with people canceling shit here and there, I think physical media is 110% the way the way to go. And I cannot wait to waste even more of my hard earned money buying physical media, because I think that is the smart route. And I'll be honest with you. I really do at this point, especially after seeing, uh, uh, leave the world behind. Um, it really reinvigorated my love for physical media. Well, it just reinvigorates important. my idea. You fucking Democrat motherfucking Shut up, sucking bitch. bitch. No, I actually, I haven't watched it. Yet. I do want to watch it though. A lot of people were saying like it was a warning, like that could, like that's probably gonna happen. Feels like one. Dude. And I know a lot of people are pissed off. It's like Kevin Bacon's barely in it. What the fuck are you even advertising him for? I don't know. <laughs> He's but, well, here's good. the thing. I, I, the, look, I, I'm a lot more into digital digital media collecting than I am physical. I don't collect physical media at all anymore. I used to. I used to be hardcore into it, but um, I mean, look, it's the way of the world, man. Like it's all gonna. 
it's so much cheaper for not only movie studios, but for video game studios to just release it digitally than have to create a box set or a Blu-ray, you know, collector's edition. There are like the collector's edition stuff will still exist, but it'll be rare yeah. because at the end of the day, uh, also it's kind of, it's kind of cool. At midnight, you can play the fucking game. You don't have to wait till 10 o'clock mm. in the morning to go to GameStop or wait at a midnight release with a bunch of fat fucking people that try to use Old Spice to cover up their smell, but they still smell like bologna sandwiches. There's perks. There are perks. That's what, you sure. know what? And everybody loves the smell of bologna sandwich, but not when it's coming yeah, off in way. That's fair. Uh, Andrew Ratcliffe says, I'm a basketball, basketball coach from Arkansas, and my team needs a halftime speech from Loomis to make a comeback. <clears throat> This is what I say to your goddamn team in Arkansas. Listen to me, you bunch of racist Razorbacks. You want to go out there? And you want them black kids to show that they're better? Oh no! Idiots! <laughs> oh, no. That's not what we're gonna do here. We're gonna play basketball. We have black people on our team. There you, you go. see that? <laughs> this is better. Calm down. Look at that asshole. <laughs> In the goddamn hat. You scared me. You with the bubble gum shit. Yeah, calm down. Okay, I'm not done with my speech yet. I just, you just like walked in on it. It does look like a bubble gum shirt. No, these assholes come over here and they say we can't get along because we're not segregated. We have black and white folk playing on our goddamn team. We're Razorbacks. They say, no, you suck. The only thing you suck is your mama's tit juice. You got to get out there and score the baskets. We're down by three points. Timmy, stop being a dickhead. Share the ball. Share it with the LeBron. LeBron, you share it over there with Kenobi. We're going to go out there and do it together. <laughs> I was, you know you know that scene? Uh, what was it? Uh, a fucking, uh, what's a, what was the movie where they made Rupp like a racist fuck? It was the movie where. Uh, oh, I, I remember. I, I can't remember the name of it, but I remember. Yeah, uh, the fucking guy. Uh, oh, shit. The blonde guy was the head coach. It was like uh, Washington. Yeah. Uh, Patrick what the Davis fuck was the name? White ass shit. <laughs> I don't remember his name. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The I just I imagine sure. Loomis being out in Arkansas and be like, "Yeah, we have black and white people on our team, and this <laughs> you're gonna let you're gonna let people say that. Oh yeah, you're a segregated bunch, <laughs> or you're you're desegregated, so you suck. I don't know. Yeah. I thought like Loomis Wilson. would be like he would be the, the Glory Road. Was it Glory Road? I don't know. Loomis yeah, yeah, it's like Glory Road. That was the one. That was the one. Glory Road, coach. Yeah. <laughs> Who says we can't go out there and play against the blacks and the whites? Because we have different <laughs> colors. It was Loomis in 1962, you guys. Calm down. It's fine. <laughs> I didn't say hey. it, was a- it was It was a fucking blast hanging out with you guys, as it always is. We will see you guys sooner, sooner than you think. We love you guys so fucking much. Thanks for hanging out with us tonight. Have a great fucking night because we demand it, you whores, you great dirty time, sluts. Guys. We had a really good time. Thank you guys for welcoming us back. We had a great wonderful magical time and we hope Woo. that we will see you when we'll see you i don't know i will have a new uh, well we have a patreon thing coming up on saturday not this saturday next saturday no no it's it's got to be next saturday what a son of a bitch it's got to be next saturday you your hands look weird dude you look like you've been rubbing my butthole <laughs> i've been <laughs> i've look, been jacking off the dirty, tobacco dude. dick it looks yeah dirty. they do they look yellowish it's weird it's <laughs> you got fucking you got liver disease dude yeah i got that <laughs> shut up don't talk about that. This is All right, guys. We'll see you. Love you guys. Good night. Oh, I got to click in. <laughs> I thought that was personal between me and me.